I need some inspiration. Let's go get it. One of the things you got to do is you got to celebrate your successes along the way. All those small victories, all those wins. And I'm out here to do that. Get my feet wet. Blessed to be where I'm at. You know, I used to live in my car and I used to come here and be in that parking lot over here. And I used to wish I was in the spot that I'm in to this day. And I'm not where I really want to be right now. I'm definitely blessed and fortunate to be where I am. But I would say about four years ago, I wish I was doing what I'm doing today. And that's a victory, man. What's going on, everybody? It is Coach Greg Adams back in here with another YouTube live stream. Shout out to the Coach Gang. And that's you. For being in here, being involved, and being active on this YouTube channel. And welcome to the internationally known Starbucks Wake Up Show. I'm embarrassed. Part of the Free Agent Lifestyle Podcast here on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel. You in here with the Bruce Wayne new, 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 new of this order. ish, the king of kings, the king of content, and the speaker of truth, yours truly, the notorious one, new, 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 new a.k.a. Mr. Cochellini, better known as the prognosticator, Coach Adamus, and you in the desert storm bunker with none other than EWF, that is every woman's fantasy, also known as the whole effing show, the chocolate of Confucius, the black Moses, the deliverer of this, the CEO Negro of Fixes Binds LLC, the unbinder, the undebatable, the undisputed best entertainment here on YouTube, the best morning show there is on the entire platform, none other than the guy that they call Senor No Trabajo, Gregorio Greybeard it is in the building, and the Mastodon Lover, and the Flatback Smother, none other than the brother with more nicknames than anyone in the game. They call me CGA, C God Allah, Mr. Third Leg Greg, and the 10 time demonetized champion of YouTube. Ay, ay, ay. It ain't even Tuesday, but we ready to go. We got a great show for you today. Are we losing faith in Western women is going to be the main event. We have 25 minutes of women begging, all right, begging for money. And as I told you in the movie American Pimp, uh, there was a great scene where uh, the pimp, Bishop Don Magic Juan was talking about all the things he provided to his 304s. And one of the things he said, hey, listen, I provide them. I take them on trips, vacation. I buy them clothes. I feed them. I provide them shelter. All they need to do is provide the money. I got money. That's all they got to do is provide the money. All right. And that's kind of how women work. All right. They got to do everything. They got fantastic ideas. All you have to do is provide the money. I got money. All right, and we're going to talk about that. We got other great segments here. We got Doom and Gloom CGA, which we're going to talk briefly about the movie that is 
blowing off doors. Pause. Leave the World Behind, a movie that we're going to talk about here. Was it a warning or was it just pure entertainment? We'll talk about that briefly. We're not going to do an entire breakdown on the show. We're going to talk about approaching failure. Ninja's cold approaching women and getting rejected. All right. And why they got rejected. 25 minutes of women begging, including women selling their panonis out here. When I start selling pussy, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, they doing that out here, man. And we also have our women replaceable. There's several women saying, these ladies have got it out of order out here. You replaceable out here. Anyway, we got that great show approaching here. And buckle your seatbelt. This show's going to go on and on and on and on. And it will be a great show. Hopefully, it will get you through your workday. But what I want you to do is hit that like button. Get 50% like ratio for this show. So we can um, get more people in here and get this message. All right. Also, to contribute to today's show, dollar sign the notorious CGA on the cash app, Venmo, Coach Greg Adams TV. PayPal is paypal.me backslash Coach Greg Adams. And that be pinned to the top of the live chat on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel. And you can super chat on the notorious new, 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 new world. CGA order. channel. Interesting poll that I got up is want to see where the listeners are, where they're coming from. Um, and that says right there, if you can't see it, some people said they can't see it on their screen, maybe on their phone. I'm not sure. It says, how long have you listened to what they consider red pill content? And even the guys that say they're not red pill, I'm not red pill no more. All right. Include them in there. I never was red pill. All right. Listen, they're in the algorithm of red pill. They're in the red pill. All right. And they just be like, I'm not in it. All right. And make every video title thumbnail right directly from red pill and MGTOW. I mean, listen. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that tells me who the content creator is. And I don't want to diss content creators early this morning. This was a long ass weekend and I had a good weekend. What's up, nigga? What's up for the weekend? All right, nigga? I ain't trying to diss. But Ninja, yo, all your video. I mean, listen, let me. Can I sit down and tell you something, Ninja? Before you tell me that, all of your videos look like MGTOW videos. I mean, just. <clears throat> and then by saying that you're not red pill, you have to preface it because you know they're red pill people, viewers coming into your stream coming onto your thumbnail clips. You know what I mean? They're, they're that you know who's watching you. So you got to be like, I'm not red pill no more. I'm delivered. All right, so let's just preface it as the people that are in the algorithm of the red pill. <laughs> right. Have you been watching them? All right. And it says right there, have you how how long have you been watching? All right, and it gives you four choices uh whether 2023 was your first year. All right. Um it's Kevin Samuels introduced me in 2021. There's a great uh, portion of people that were brought into this space um, via Kevin Samuels and his explosion pause in 2021. You have people that were watching between 2017 and 2020. And then were you watching before 2016? How long were, do we have people here that have been watching for that long? You know what I mean? Like, and I'm not, it's people here that that are OGs. They remember where this space started, originated, and came from, and who came in, who the Johnny Come Latelys are, who the newcomers are, and sometimes the newcomers are the people uh, with the most viewers. Oddly enough, because they were able to get around the algorithm before most people were shadow banned to Kingdom Come, um, and uh, those people are now being perceived and crowned as the originators of message. Uh, but people that have been around before 2017 and 2016 know uh, what's going on here. But oddly enough, if you take a look between 2017 and 2020 is leading um, over on the free agent lifestyle channel with, with a 25% of people that have voted so far coming in, in 2021. So that's interesting, but I, I, I love it. I love it. Um, um, I love it that people can, I can get an idea of when people came in and when they did it, you know, we have a, a, a portion of people, small percentage, but 7% of people are new first year. And I'm glad because a lot of people say this type of content saves people's lives, although people don't want to acknowledge that. Um, a lot of people who say that their lives have been saved have been people that have been largely ignored. Um, but they don't want that to be the case. They want you to keep hoping out here. And there are people that have been ignored for quite a long time or actually been trying to, you know, find a different path or have thought and believed these things, and these things only confirm their belief system when before they were weirdos out here. This guy's weird. You really think this, right? You never knew that there were people speaking up for you, and you're like, damn, all right, listen, there is another path and purpose out here. There is another direction for me. I don't have to go 
where everybody else wants me to go. And then when you don't go that way, it don't work out. They, well, well, you suck. You're a loser. You're lame. You're, you're awkward. You're boring. You're, you know, um, you're a hermit and all of these things. So this space does give men the confidence to believe that the belief system that they have can be reinforced by men who are living it out uh, because they don't have no answer for you. They really don't. Right. So that's a reality for a lot of men as well. Anyway, anyway, some people can't see the poll. All right. Well, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> All right. I don't know what's going on here. But anyway, we got a great show for you. Let me get to the earlier contributors to today's show and then get into the doom and gloom. We're going to, you know what? You know what's funny? I've been hearing a lot of content creators lately talking about doom and gloom. Now, that's interesting. <laughs> All right. All right. It's just, you know, I'm like on Saturday. All right. Doing nothing. All right. Figuring out to uh, what am I going to make for lunch? With YouTube in the background, I'd be like, let me hear this video. This looks interesting. And then people be like, I'm not doom and gloom. And I'm like, is that a, is that a diss? <laughs> right? I'll be like, straight jacket. As Kevin Samuel said, is that a sneak diss? Are they sneak dissing? But what are they doing here? Straight jacket. All right, because I haven't heard many people say doom and gloom specifically like that. Until I came up with the doom and gloom segment. Like, what are we doing here? Like, what? Wait a minute. Straight jacket. Like, <laughs> somebody needs a red pill history show. Okay, I think I could do that. All right, I might have to bring some people up for that. Like, they really going out of their way to be like, I'm not doom and gloom and doom and gloom. And I'm sitting there like, I'm sitting up there like, wait a minute. Hold up for a second. Wait a minute. Who are you? Have y'all been hearing that lately? I've been hearing that shit lately. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Hey, man, Jacob, let me put you on timeout. All right. Come on. I got you, man. I'm going to do it. This ninja, man. <laughs> All right. You get a timeout. I already heard you. Hey, man, snipe this ninja with the uh, all caps. I've been hearing this shit. <laughs> All right. Anyway, about doom and gloom. But anyway, let me get to the earlier contributors to the day show. I'm like, these ninjas be watching my show. Yeah, man. Anyway, what are we doing here? Albert Wesker says XXs are only coming around now because their rent is due. due, Oh, man. (laughs) All right. Anyway, shout out to, yeah, rent is due. Sucker for love ninja says, coach, I need some advice. Last week I hit that bottom and now this chick won't leave me alone. Give me the buzzer. Mm. He says, I gave that bitch the rock bottom and she rolls up like the undertaker. Oh, man. Yeah, brother, too. All right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, somebody said that interesting, man. Yeah, uh, that's what happens when you give that bitch that bottom. You hit that bottom. All right. People been talking about hitting that bottom, too. You hit that bottom for real, man. You can't get rid of her. And you ever put in work with a woman? You've been putting that back into it. You've been putting your knee in it. And guess what? She just get up and walk off into the bathroom. Anyway, anyway, (laughs) AC says, afternoon coach, why is that? Why is it that American women will go to doo 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 by, get sheeked on and dunked on by those men, but come back and demand respect from y'all respect. You best respect me. All right. Because, uh, basically, uh, there's one word that describes what's going on and that is abundance. All right. They have abundance. So over there, there's not abundance of sheets. When they come over here, there's an abundance. And we're going to show you this when uh, guys are trying to approach women and how men, women are treating uh, men when they approach them. All right, we're going to talk about that. They have abundance. So American women have a perceived abundance so they can treat men over here and tell us, you got to do what we want to do. And they got to do, man, it's, it's one of those things. It's a, one of those things. All right, uh, Jaime or Jamie Hoffman says, what day and time is the 12th? Simps of Cheesemas, and by the way, 12 Simps of Cheesemas will be on Christmas Eve. That is our Christmas Eve annual show presented by Monkey Simpanzee Productions. All right, Monkey Simpanzee Productions will probably present our fourth annual 12 Simps of Christmas, and uh, or we call it 12 Simps of Cheesemas, because if I title it 12 Simps of Christmas, uh, YouTube will ban the video, which they did two years in a row. The first two years, they banned the video because I'm perceiving a lot of people on Christmas Eve was clicking on my my video. 
Mm. All right. You know, because I had the Santa hat and I have the Santa beard and the thumbnail. And then, you know, they're getting into the Christmas spirit. They're like, let's put on some Christmas music for Christmas Eve. Oh, look, there's Nat King Cole in a Christmas hat. Click. All right. And they're listening to me talking about simps in the background and uh, getting throttled and, and clapping cheeks and. All right, kids. All right, the uh, kids are watching it on their iPad. What are you watching? You know, the mother's like, "What are you watching?" I'm watching Black Santa Claus talking about simps. All right, and they, uh, they they ran to the iPad, <laughs> turn that shit off. <laughs> all right, they reported my video. Click, click, click. I was like, "Yo, I was a high get band two years in a row for the twelve simps of Christmas." You know, but I presented on Christmas Eve. Kids all in the Christmas spirit, <laughs> right? They mother's like, who, who is this right? I'm watching Santa Claus talk about Russell Wilson and Prince Harry. <laughs> mm. All right. I'm like, oh, Lord, have mercy. They like ban this ninja. This is getting out of control. All right, man, listen. It's either Albert and the Chipmunks or CGA for Christmas for kids. All right. What is this right there? What? <laughs> All right. I need a family friendly, so I have to change the name. All right. So, uh, by the way, you can go to my community tab on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel and the Coach Greg Adams channel, and you can vote. You can put your uh, suggestion in. There's a lot of suggestions. I actually have the 12 plus Simps of Christmas. All right, so we got that going on here. Shout out to C.H. Slim. I read an article that stated that AI is self-replicating now. He says, not sure if that's true or not, but either way, that's NWO for sure. Yeah. New, 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 New world order. We know not what we do. We know not what we do. Shout out to uh, Steven says CGI just sent my ex-wife 150 bucks because her job hasn't paid her, or as we call it, a job hasn't paid her for two weeks. Um, as a substitute teacher, she was crying, and I told her to send an email to point to the wait to wait to the point of contacting to handle her pay. And he says right here, and let me tell you that she'll be reaching out to the Department of Labor. <laughs> Jesus. I can't believe she doesn't know this. It's like these women need guidance. They do. Also, I gave my kids Christmas money, found out she's been using my daughter's money for their from their account to put gas in her car and buy household goods. I pay child support, and I give my kids an allowance, and it makes me not want to put, put what? Damn, ninja. He says put money in their account. Because my ex-wife is using the child support and allowance I send my kids to supplement her lifestyle. I just dropped over 1K this weekend on my daughter's birthday and taking them out to eat is just frustrating because she gets 4800 a month tax-free with her veteran's pension and child support and she's still struggling. It's like I'm married constantly giving her money. God dang. Anyway, shot. Out. I got money. Ay, ay, ay. Huh. <laughs> you see what these ex ex ninjas be uh dealing with out here. Uh as we say, uh ex-wives are in eternal debt. All right, ex-wives are in eternal debt. Yes, they need guidance. By the way, if you start a job, yeah, yeah, the ex is a loser. All right. Um, by the way, if you if your ex get if you get a job. You know, the first two weeks, if you get paid bi-weekly, you might not get paid till week three. All right, ninjas don't know that. It could be, it could be that when you start, you might not get your first pay period check for the first, after three weeks. Now, it might be loaded, front-loaded with three weeks of pay, which is going to mess you up, or it might be front-loaded with only one week, of, I mean, back-loaded with only one week of pay after three weeks. Like, you can't really determine what your uh, monthly income is on a new job until maybe a month or maybe two or three pay periods. Then it'll start balancing out. Okay, so people don't know that. Now, I actually work for state universities, which uh, that, but state universities get paid per uh, month. They get one paycheck per month. And it could be possible that you might not get a paycheck the first month, right? You might not get a paycheck until month two. All right, it could be possible. It, it could be possible depending on where you start. So you guys got to know that going in and you really don't know what your pay is until you get further into the work period, month two, month three. And then you can really establish what is your actual income per month. Yeah, it's a, this is why this is why people tell you don't quit a job. Don't quit a job before you get another job. 
So you're going to need some income so that if you do get, quit a job or you do transition to another job, you have that income from the other job before you get the new job so that when you're working the new job, those three weeks or maybe that first month, your income is covered. Oh, man. Anyway, <laughs> it's, it's what it is, man. So watch out for that. You can be in a bind real quick out there. You can get yourself in a bind. All right. Yeah, you can get yourself in the bind. Anyway, man, let me let me I'm going to jump back. Shout out to Steven. Thank you for sharing that. And that is a co-sponsorship. But I'm going to get. I'm, I'm going to get into the show because we already got 1700 people in here. I appreciate y'all in here for the best entertainment on YouTube. Yeah. All right. Best entertainment on YouTube. Let's get into doom and gloom. CG doom and gloom. CGA, let's go. Doom and Gloom CGA, all right? Do, the, all the YouTubers are watching me. This Doom and Gloom segment, CGA's Doom and Gloom. You might as well say my name when you say I'm not Doom and Gloom. All right, but we'll do it live, too, because I, I got to actually click and share the, the right screen or else I'll share my feet picture collection on accident. And I got a lot of YouTube female feet on my uh, collection, by the way. They send me feet pictures, all right, when they take my content. But that's neither here nor there. Doom and Gloom CGA will do it right here, brought to you by the new, 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 new world order. All right, here we go right here. First story up for bids, apparently... A U.S. Hold on. Let me give it the proper music. Pause. U.S. staffer, Senate staffer, films prawn video in the United States Senate hearing room getting his back blown out. Man, this is unbelievable. Now you already know why the U.S. government, these politicians tend to be always on the side of the rainbow oh my goodness this is crazy apparently this is the staffer here that was caught getting his back blown out and he had his back all hunched looking like a whole puma out there he had his shit all stretched out like a mountain lion out here this is absolutely new, incredible new, new, new and he looks like a reject of the demolition out here new, this new, is crazy new, Ninja, he looked like he tagging in with axe smash and crush what in the hell? New, 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 new hey, yo, chill, son. Hey, yo. All right, so let's talk about this right here. You can't, man, you cannot believe what's going on out here. You big dummy. All right, U.S. Senate staffer films prom video in the United States Senate hearing room, getting his back blown out. Apparently, the whole room smelled like booty crumbs. All right, what in the hell? Apparently, they won't. <laughs> He's not the only U.S. politician out here selling and making prawn but that's what the story goes right here and of course he was fired all right and he loses his job after having sex there the video surface of his name is aiden and he was allegedly getting his back blown out in the judicial hearing room and this is the judicial hearing room you've seen it many many times on television boy the world is going send it all right man mm -mm -mm. and it says right here the explicit footage was published by the Daily Caller, which I don't want to see it, showing two men, and they were apparently packing fudge in what appears to be Heart 216, the Judiciary Room, aiding a legislative aide for Senator Ben Cardin of Maryland, was widely named on social media as one of the men in the footage. All right, Capitol Police say they were unaware, or they were aware of the matter, and they were looking into it. Oddly enough, the room is where the 9-11 Commission hearings, the James Comey, federal former FBI director, gave his testimony about Donald Trump. Very significant room right there. And guess what? Ninja getting his back blown out in the room out there. This is a disgrace. This is an absolute, oh, the humanity. absolute disgrace. All right. But it is a sign of the times. <laughs> it is a sign of the time. Ish. I mean, this country is crazy all right the next episode right here gen x has the largest wealth gap of any generation gen x shout out to all the gen xers in the building i'm representing gen x all right and it means the american dream of retirement is going to be a nightmare for them all yeah man it's going to be a nightmare for gen x out there man no retirement 
And uh, this is not a surprise for us. This is kind of how things have been coming. You know, a lot of people aren't Gen X. A lot of people aren't Gen X, so you don't know. Gen X retiring? I don't think so. All right, the majority of Gen X ain't ever going to retire. I mean, boomers are having trouble retiring, but the wealth gap in uh, between each people is going to be difficult. And not to say that the Gen Z and the failure to launch individuals are not impacting that. In fact, I've shared several stories of Gen Xers and boomers having trouble with their retirement funds being leaked out by the failure to launch Gen Z. So there's a lot going on here. Um, I've often told you to prepare yourself. And the reason why I report these things is to get you guys to react, to think a little bit differently about money and jobs and things like this. Some of us need three and four and five jobs at this particular point to be able to reach the American dream. But the American dream is being recrafted into another type of dream. It is. And don't wake me because I'm dreaming. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. So be prepared for that. All right, what else do we got on Doom and Gloom CGA? It looks like Germany. New, 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 new world order. Germany looking, and they're considering bringing back military service. If you guys don't know, many countries do have what they call military service or conscription. Conscription is historical, meaning that many people have demanded or made sure uh, that military service was uh, produced or performed by all citizens of of, of an age, all right, say, for instance, uh, all men between 18 and 21 uh, have to perform military service in order to be able to consider themselves uh, eligible to be a citizen in uh, their country. In fact, Israel, um, Israeli women actually have to have conscription, meaning military service, before they go on into their adult life, right? And so Germany got rid of it in 2011, 2011, and the defense minister They're looking at all of the options after admitting that scrapping conscription in 2011 had been a mistake in hindsight. New, 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 new world order. And uh, if you know anything about the U.S. military, they've been telling you that uh, they have been having difficulty recruiting. Uh, They have been, you know, I actually know somebody, a young lady that was recruited into the military, dropped out allegedly because because of a sexual harassment issue. However, they she said that they lied to her about the recruitment process, and once they got in there, they did the bait and switch. You have the Reading Rainbow Alive. You actually have female staff sergeants and and so forth and recruits twerking on video in their uniform. It's an absolute disgrace. You have the Reading Rainbow being um, in there. You have the military in America kicking people out because they didn't get the pokey poke poke. All right, you have an absolute disgrace of militaries around the world, and you have Gen Z. They're not really um, allegiance. They're not pledging their allegiance to their country. The The country's allegiance is gone so they they're looking at it as people aren't volunteering for this but people do have to arm up in these days and times because new 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 world order <laughs> because you never know when shit hits the fan you never know when uh shit get the pop and you never know when that other shoe drops and germany is like hmm perhaps we may bring it back and once they bring it back you best believe they're gonna be women women Women, get in there, man. Get in there, man. Gone are the days where women can be like, but I'm a woman. I'm just a girl. All right, same thing in the United States. There could be a situation in the United States that they might say, hey, you want to be a citizen here? You got to serve the few and the proud. All right, definitely better better serve. So get your shit ready to go. Speaking of serving. New, 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 new world order. All right, um, here it is. Mark Zuckerberg allegedly, reportedly building in a Hawaii compound with plans for an escape hatch, blind doors, and an underground bunker. All right, Mark Zuckerberg going full CGA with his Desert Storm bunker or his Paradise bunker. Well, this is not a surprise. Everybody knows, man. Listen, man, if you're wealthy, you best believe you best be building a bunker, especially if you're a billionaire. I'm only a thousandaire, and I want to build me a Desert Storm bunker like this, but probably not going to happen in Nevada because it's desert. But anyway, concrete bunker right there, several floors. That's awesome right there. That's a wonderful place to be there. And that's a wonderful place to commit crimes as well. Nobody will know. You can hide them down there. I don't think anybody will go. You can hide a lot of bodies down there. It is what it is. New, 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 new world. All right. Anyway, Mark Zuckerberg building the Desert Storm bunker. All right. Speaking of bunkers, did you see the movie that is kind of rocking the nation right now? Even the normies are like, what's going on here? 
Apparently, the Obamas were involved as executive producers in a movie on Netflix called Leave the World Behind, and it got all the conspiracy theorists, the apocalyptic, the biblical people, all right, the people, the religious. This is form of a religious awakening, if you will. It's got everybody's senses heightened if they were managed to get through this movie. And people thought that there were subliminal messages sent in this movie, which there were. All right, there were ill subliminals in this movie. And there was a lot of messages here. And the fact that the Obamas were behind the movie, in fact, the book was written in 2020 or published in 2020, and it was on Obama's, Barack Obama's list of books to read in 2021. He so believed in the book that he got behind it as an executive producer. And then people were saying, hey, since he was behind it, was this in fact, a leak of information that he possibly knew about. Yes, I'm new, 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 new world order. All right, this movie was interesting. So, um, if you get a chance to watch it, you can see that it follows the doom and gloom path. Ring the bell. I need to turn that one up. It does follow the path for preaching a lot of doom and gloom in there, and uh, Julia Roberts was in it. And these did these, these people did a good job here. But it, this this movie is no different than any of the future predictive movies that we know about. Demolition Man. Uh, the Matrix, uh, what, whatever, with the Back to the Future two, <laughs> Back to the Future two. Uh, there's a bunch of movies here that uh, be considered here. As uh, 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 the Contagion was another one that was uh, a movie that five, ten years down the line. Oh boy! All right, but this movie can actually uh, hold some secrets to things that maybe he does know about, maybe things that we knew about, maybe early predictive things, and maybe some things they missed. Back to the Future missed on a couple things. Back to the Future Part 2 missed on a couple things. Demolition Man did not follow all the way, although some things are becoming true, right? So uh, the contagion was not all the way, but it was some of the way. So these are some of the things here that you will see here. But I think the fact that Barack Obama was involved in the movie, uh, that might give people claws or pause to believe that he might know something. New, 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 new world order. All right, interesting thing. All right, and to close it out, uh, we did have uh, this guy right here, Robert Right. Robert Wright. Uh Uh-oh. I'm not going to say what race, what people. We know I can't say that. Interesting video. A warning from 1994. Shit, I was born. I graduated from high school in nine Trey. But Robert Wright, speaking of the Department of Labor, Stephen talked about the Department of Labor just recently, oddly enough. All right. The Department of Labor secretary for Bill Clinton. And he actually worked under Gerald Ford and Jimmy Carter. All right, the Department of Labor secretary in 1994 gave us a somewhat interesting representative of what the middle class would be dealing with in the future. New, 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 new world Let's order. listen to a couple of minutes of this and then we'll go on. But this, tell me if this is not very culture Damas. We are on the way to becoming a two-tiered society composed of a few winners and a larger group of Americans left behind, whose anger and whose disillusionment is easily manipulated. The old middle class has become an anxious class, worried not only about sustaining their incomes, but also about keeping their jobs and their health insurance. Boy, they had to put the ominous music in there. I understand. I'm a film producer. I understand. On a recent national poll, 55% of American adults said they no longer believe that you can build a better life for yourself and your family by working hard and playing by the rules. In the years after World War II. Let me, let me stop right here. New, 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 new world um, interesting enough, uh, that one actually is a good point. Uh, that's, that's actually a good point. I want you to hear this one. The moral integrity of a society. Yeah. Replace it can poison. Wait, did I skip ahead too much? Sense of possibility. That wonderful sense of possibility grew strong. The biggest middle class in world history on the foundation of that bargain. We turned our hard work into homes and cars and health care and pensions. And the middle class grew and prospered and enriched further as the barriers to race and class and gender slowly began to fall, just began to fall. Poverty reached an historic low. And the sense of possibility, that wonderful sense of possibility, grew strong. But then something happened. What? Around 15 years ago. New world order. 
15 years ago, this American dream began to fade. Uh-oh. And as it faded, middle-class families tried every means they had of holding on. Two jobs. Spouses went to work. Yep. When did- Spouses went to work. Feminism. Um, I did skip the part where he's talking about the sense of morality has eroded. That's kind of where we are, even to the sense of, of, of content creators, YouTube, even red pillars, right? The sense of morality is fading. Um, only fans, Twitch, you're seeing Twitch, uh, Twitch streamers being nude uh, the amount of porn that is on Instagram, despite the fact that they want to blame men for clicking on it. All right. There, it doesn't beat defeat the fact that there's porn on Instagram. All right. Uh, pornography. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, sugar babies. All right. But he said they've tried everything and let's continue. Did you find that great increase in women in the workforce in the late 1970s and late 1980s? Feminism. Both parents worked longer hours. Yep. Or they took multiple jobs. Wow. So both. Boy, this is interesting. This is 1994. He said, uh, yeah, both parents are taking jobs. The women are outside the home. Uh, The kids are being raised alone. This is Department of Labor. I remember this guy. He's actually four foot 11. He's a small guy. I won't call him a midget. He's a he's four foot 11. I don't know what that is considered for male height, but he's a small guy. All right. Not that that matters, but people might remember that of him. They decided to have fewer kids. Middle class. Actually, the number of kids in an average middle class family has actually declined. Middle class families, notwithstanding these coping mechanisms, middle class families have not been able to regain their footing. They push these coping mechanisms about as far as they can go. Oh. And they still feel that they are losing the American dream. Wow. By the way, this is doom and gloom 1994 version. He said they, they pushed all the coping me- mechanisms as far as they could. They tried to make two jobs. They tried to stay married. They tried to raise their kids. They tried to throw them in daycare. This is the middle class that they're talking about. They try to have less children. He's going to talk about that. And if people call me doom and gloom, I can just come from this generation right here. My friends, we are on the way to becoming a two-tiered society composed of a few winners and a larger group of Americans left behind whose anger and whose disillusionment is easily manipulated. Uh Uh-oh. Once unbottled, mass resentment can poison the very fabric of society, the moral integrity of a society. There it is, the moral integrity of a society. But I don't know if you guys know, people are talking about this. He's a socialist, by the way. I'm just I'm just letting you know. So his proposition is probably going to be more socialism. All right. So that's that. That's that. But you have to understand that's his solution. Doesn't mean he's wrong. All right. He's definitely right about it. But his call to action is probably going to be socialism if you don't know um he was the secretary of labor under bill clinton he actually worked for gerald ford and i believe jimmy carter uh two of the three of them i don't think he was with the bushes at all the bush family i don't know if he worked in that capacity but he had been in the political system for a long time i think he's a socialist so just so you know i think probably where he's going with this is that the answer is to have and i think he has a book called inequality for all so you guys got to know that about him what his probably directive is is going to be some sort of socialism and that's where i disagree that's why i disagree fuck the rest of the people Mm. all right but he ain't wrong he ain't wrong and everybody's uh feeling the everybody's feeling the burn everybody's feeling the burn by the way a lot of people you young people don't know the importance of the new 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 world yeah he's a smart guy he's a very intelligent guy a lot of us grew up with the new, 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 new world. Order. And unfortunately, some of you have grown up with the new, 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 new world. Order. All right. And take a look here. This is the NWO that I had as a teenager going. Well, mostly as a mid 20s in my mid 20s, I had the new, 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 new world. Order. All right. But you guys are getting the new, 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 <laughs> new, new, new world order. man It's sad. The NWO, I wanted, And that's the NWO I got. Unfortunately, 25 years later. Y'all got a whole different one. (laughs) Man, it sucks to be you youngins, man. We had the good NWO. Y'all got the bad NWO. Indeed. Shout out to y'all right here, man. I'm going to tell you. The announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. Indeed, man. Hey, man, it sucks for y'all. It sucks for y'all. And that's Doom and Gloom CGA for today.
All right, man. Let me get to these rest of these super chats and stuff like that. We got Straggle and Sniggle coming up. And then Cold Approach Failures. They're recording Cold Approach Failures, man, which I've been telling you about. Cold Approaching, man, is kind of getting going the way of the dinosaur because they out here, you know, showing y'all failing out here. This is a disgrace. Shout out to Tori. He says, my first red pill came from Tom Likas. Shout out to Tom Likas. Although he's a guy that says he's not red pill, right? But he was an originator of some of the common talking points and uh, that we talk about. And he was an introduction for a lot of people. Thank you for sharing that. And we need to do a RP history for show. I don't know. I'm going to piss somebody off because there's allegiances and stuff like that. Shout out to Chris Jericho. CGA, I wanted to give you props on always having a good show. I understand it's a grind, but you make it look easy. Your attitude and views on hard work and dedication show in your product. He says many blessings to you and yours. And he says, I'm not sure why successful men keep falling into the same trap repeatedly. I hope Ant-Man, um, he says, I hope Ant-Man has been watching your videos because if not, he has 18 years and nine months to learn the hard way. He's shaking my head. What happened to him? Did he get got? All right, that's sad. Is that the basketball player or the real Ant-Man? I'm not sure. Shout out to Macaroni Tony. He's, oh, by the way, by the way, thank you, brother, man. Yes, this is hard. I, it's harder than it looks doing what I do, just so you know. All right, I'll be fatigued as hell after this. All right, but uh, talking for three, four, five hours, and then three hours again, two hours, it's not easy. I literally don't talk the rest of the day. <laughs> All right, anyway, Macaroni Tony, he says, you know, I love my animal references. You had me crying with the hermit crab without its shell. Shout out to you, the hermit crab without its shell. No government name SD. I just saw a 40-year-old lawyer post that she would not move to a neighborhood that has American flags on the outside of the home. New, 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 new I guess order. she's triggered. You called this too, CGA. Oh, I man, I'm going to tell you. Um, I actually know some people that believe this, and I said, I said, if, and I, people want to know well, where I called it, and listen, I, when I say I called it, I'm just talking about I called it. I'm not saying I'm the first one in this on YouTube or say that I called it. But what I said, his reference is, I said, if you flew an American flag up a flagpole right now in any space and you had 3,000 people in that space and you flew that flag up, I would say, I said, half of the people would be offended. Half of the, Amer half of the people in that audience would be offended if you flew that flag up. Now, I'm not saying if you should be offended or not. I'm just talking about the times that we're in. Because... I would say probably, uh, you know, when I was in high school, that wasn't the case. You would say maybe 5%, 2% would be offended. Okay, there would be some ninjas in a Malcolm X hat with an African medallion on talking about some shit, right? You might have had some people sit out, but that has changed to the point now 50% would be offended. By the way, that same 50% will love to see that rainbow flag jump up there, and they would want the rainbow flag to jump up uh, instead of the American flag. So I call that. <laughs> so that's that. As a matter of fact, I know a woman who does that in a very rich suburban neighborhood, a gated community, very prime, prime community. And uh, well, I can't. I'm not going to say what race, what people we know. I can't say that. Um, she actually has a, a rainbow flag and a black life in a very exclusive community. And she puts those up and uh, she watches everybody get offended over that. But she actually gets, a, well, she, I wouldn't say she's offended of the, of the American flag, but in the place of the American flag, she has the rainbow flag up. So there's an example. There's an example. By the way, this is designed propaganda um, to get people to um, not have the allegiance to the government. And listen, I'm not telling you to have allegiance to the system of American idolizing flags and whatnot. There's a conversation to be had about that. But I'm just telling you, as a change of the guard, as a change of the time, this is what the sentiment is. And don't be surprised. <laughs> this is the sentiment of a growing group of the population. It is. All right. Now, if you live in middle America, this is not the case. But if you live on the left coast or the right coast, this is the, this is the truth. Shout out to no government name for uh, acknowledging that. I called it. <laughs> All right. We do have some pay pizzles in the building. And Francine says, turn down that government job today. Not worth my time. I work for cash, not peanuts, blue chip mindset. Wow. She said, turn down. You turned down the yobs? Sister said, F all that. 
She said, F the dumb shit. Hey, man, shout out to you, man, for having the ability to turn down the job. All right, hopefully you have another job lined up because rent due this month, rent due still at the end of the month. Your rent's due, motherfucker. All right, turn down the job. All right, shout out to you. Mm. Camster email says they told the truth of who we are in the movie 1619 megahertz radio scene in the white lion ship run aground. He says they know Deuteronomy, he says they know Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse 68 is us. Shout out to you and all of the people here telling me uh, biblically the things that we are in. He says, who got off that ship in 16 and 19? He says, take me out with the Kanye. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, man, you get me I'm in not going to say what race, what people. We know I can't say that. Man, we don't know much about history at all, do we? We don't. We don't. We're very ignorant people. And when I say we, I mean you. And that's you. All right, but uh, yeah, uh, history is definitely a subject matter we so, we lack at. And much of the history is his story and lies, um, but uh, we really don't know. Even uh, the history of the, 19th, the 20th century, in fact, the 20th century, we don't know shit when it comes to that. But anyway, we only know what we were told. Shout out to Kaylin says, what's up, coach? I know you and the others in the coach gang were down on my Rams, but we in the playoff picture right now. And we're going to make it too. He says, hey, he says, enjoy what's left of your Raiders this season. That sounds like a little bit of hate. That sounds like some hate. <laughs> All right. Anyway, damn. All right. Shout out to the Rams. I know I was dissing them early in the season and so forth and so on. Some people are watching their, their Philadelphia. They're watching their Super Bowl dream slip right through their hands. Shout out to Jay Cool says, I blame boomers for teaching us Gen X men to simp for women. From there, millennials and Gen Y had it all downhill since, of, since that is what some of the Gen X people taught them. Yeah, man, that's interesting. Uh, you know, we need to do another show on who to blame for this catastrophe. I know everybody wants to blame the boomers and, and whatnot. Should we blame them again? Shout out to the Workday Show. Took a trip to Whistler a couple of weeks ago. It ended up bungee jumping. It was life-changing for me, but my sister said to remember, you're still black. I wanted to rev an exer. I don't give a <laughs> what? fuck what you think, bitch. Wow. Cut that bitch off. Next caller. I'm wondering, what, what does it mean that you're still black? Because you went to Whistler, where all the white people are, or rich people? Not, not white. It's just not white people there, although there's a lot of white people up there. There's a lot of white people up in the mountain areas. You know, white people in America, in, in the Western, Northern, North America, they love going to the mountains and shit. They love going to the cold. Like, they miss their days when I was out there in the Caucasus Mountains. They be out there. You ever see them? They be on buses. They be in they Subaru with they uh, rack. You know, they rack. They be in they uh, little Subaru. They be going up there with they Subaru with all they skis on a rack going up to the mountain. Soon as they get out there, they be happy as hell. Ain't nobody around. Paul Mooney said they be yodeling. Yodel, 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 yodel. Like, hey, whoo. They be up there crazy. They be having they coffee. They be having they little fur around they little hoods. Yodel, 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 yodel. yodel like, hey, whoo. Yodel, 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 yodel. Like, yodel, like, hey, whoo. They be going up there. <laughs> They be crazy. They be like, damn, we finally home. They just be growing their beers. They white folks be growing their beers. Yo, the late hee hoo. They know ninjas ain't around there. They know ninjas. They said ain't no ninjas around. Yo, the yo, the yo, the yo, the late hee hoo. They be up there going crazy. They be loving it. Ain't no ninjas around here. Ain't going to be no ninjas. And then maybe one ninjas be out there. They be like, all right, don't bother him. He looks like a family guy. They're just nobody sagging their pants. Yo, the yo, the yo, the lay. They be just happy as hell. Right up in the Caucasus Mountains. They be like, yeah, relax. They don't be stressed out, nothing. They be got their ski pants on and their boots with their little overall. They be like, ninja, we about to go down. We about to take a couple of. <laughs> we about to do a couple of ski runs out here. They be standing around, chilling, having fun. Yo, the yo, the lay. They be just <laughs> Ricola. They be happy as hell. They like, we home. We home. They tired of out here. 
They tired of be sitting up there living in these desert conditions. They be like in the mountains. Yoda, yoda, like, hee hoo. Ain't no ninjas. <laughs> All right, anyway. Ain't no ninjas. Them flatbacks be putting their hair in them little uh, um, Aryan pigtails. They be putting their hair in them Aryan pigtail braids with their little hat on. Yoda, like, hee hoo. They be out there in the white heaven. They be in white heaven out there. <laughs> Doors unlocked. Yep, it's crazy. They like, we in the caucus. We back at where we came from. <laughs> All right, anyway. <laughs> All right, tell me I'm lying. I know there's some white folks offended, but I ain't, I ain't lying. They should be out there showing teeth. Niggas always got to show their teeth. <laughs> All right, anyway. They like, nobody, anything goes out there, too. They be having orgies. They be mate swapping wives. Anything goes. They do all kind of shit out there. They do all they Viking shit out there. They turn into Viking. They do all they Viking stuff. They be playing to the, uh, they be praying to uh, Odin. <laughs> they be praying to Odin. They be doing a Viking mythology and shit. All right. Yeah, man. You know, hey, man. And then Nick, ninjas come around. They be looking like, is he one of us? Does he know? Has he prayed to the nanny goat? They be busting out their coca doing lines. <laughs> All right, anyway, lines of coca. All right, white folks is mad right now. Niggas always gotta show they Swapping wives. All right, anyway. <laughs> All right, let me stop. All right, let's get back to the show. <laughs> All right, listen. All right, they be doing their Viking rituals and shit. Let me stop. All right, uh, let's get back to the show. All right, I do have to, I do have to, I do have to do the show. Straggle and Sniggle Theater, let's go. Hey, ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast sticky, come get high with me, that's a deal, right? Ride. All right, Straggle and Sniggle Theater, let's get it going right here because we have to. Straggle and Sniggle Theater, what do we got first? What do we got first? Oh, um, <laughs> what is going on here? I can, It's not showing me. I guess this is a video of... Where's the video? Oh, here it is right here. Okay, it's loading up. It's a little slow. It's a 30-second video. Okay, let me play the video. Apparently, oops, I did it again. Do you guys want to play it? Two Truths and a Lie? Yeah. For uh, TikTok? Yeah. Go first. Okay. okay. Um, I'm blonde. Okay. Um, <laughs> I used to play competitive basketball. <laughs> okay, obviously not. And um, <laughs> Victoria's been sleeping with my boyfriend. Uh, uh-oh. <laughs> Victoria. Wait a minute. Who are Oh, man. Victoria said. What that mean? Damn, with them thin ass lips. Oh, my goodness, man. Victoria, you skeezer. Oh, the humanity. All right, let's see what happens here. Uh oh. Are you kidding? What? <laughs> You've been sleeping with my boyfriend. I know. Can you turn the phone off? No. No. Nope. Are you fucking it? kidding me? No. Cop. Turn the phone off. No. This isn't funny. Uh, Madison, turn the phone off. Madison, not Madison. <laughs> All right, damn. Kaylee and Madison. Uh, who are you, Victoria? Hi, my name is Kaylee. I'm a blonde. I have no tips. I make boys fall in love with me. They always know it fits. I like being single. No, I've never been cuffed. These boys want a relationship, but I'm just trying to fuck. All right, damn, um, uh, Victoria has a secret. Yes, Victoria has a secret, and she does not want it revealed to the audience here. Victoria, uh, talk about it here. Do you guys want to play Two Truths and a Lie? Yeah. Uh, that woman told three lies. Well, I guess she did tell one truth. All right, the blonde, is a f that's a lie. All right, but anyway, she must have played basketball. Uh, for TikTok? Yeah. Go first. Okay. okay. Um, I'm blonde. Okay. Um, <laughs> I used to play competitive basketball. <laughs> okay, obviously not. And um, Victoria's been sleeping with my boyfriend. Uh, uh oh, damn. Are you kidding? <laughs> what? You've been sleeping with my boyfriend. Whoops. I know. Can you turn the phone off? No. Matt, are you been fucking sleeping? kidding me? No. Dang it, Victoria skeezer out there, man. Victoria for these streets. In these streets. All right, but they all for these streets with they, you know, classic basic bitch wear. They all got them black leggings on, all right? And Victoria, you skeezer right behind your friend's Madison's back. All right, slobbing down her boyfriend. That's a disgrace. All right, that's a disgrace. These hoes ain't loyal. In these streets. 
No. Turn the phone off. No. This isn't funny. Madison, turn the phone off. Damn, Madison. You guys want to? <laughs> all right, Madison. And by the way, all three of these girls look somewhat similar. All right. If Madison didn't have black, uh, fake blonde hair, they all would be the same broad, just to let you know. So, um, you know, I don't know what it is about, you know, these white girls all look the same. All right. They say that about black women, but really, man, they, like, like they're, they ain't much different, even in personality. All right. Even in personality, in ability, they kind of all the same. They're like robots. All right. There you go right here. Like, look at the difference between the girl in the middle and the other one. Ninja, I mean, he, the other dude probably didn't even know he was piping down Victoria. He was like, all right, you just saying like, there's not much different. Here you go. All right. Like. Like, really, do you blame the boyfriend? They not much different than the other. They look like triplets at this point, all right? It is what it is. But obviously, these ninjas ain't loyal. In these streets. Stock factory issue for show. All right, but the carousel still thrives out here. <laughs> Spit Sisters. Spit Sisters is right. All right, I'm telling you, man, our society is polygynous or polygynist, polygamist polygynous I, I always tell you our society's polygynous people are like no 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 look spit sisters you have three women one man sharing two and the middle one girl was like this <laughs> look at the middle girl the middle girl looking at the other girl like wait a minute you too <laughs> all right look at that the middle girl was like and that's you wait a minute uh-oh the middle girl calling up the dude like, uh, you're boning both of my friends. This is ridiculous. All right. Anyway, let's get to the next one here. Uh, let's go to Natasha. There's a couple of Natashkas making uh, their debut here on the Straggle and Snickle Theater here. Uh, is this your type of Natasha? Nice drink. Oh, oh, oh my goodness, man. I'm going to tell you, man. Listen, I'm telling you, man. They go up to the mountains and the caves and they get to that snow. They be at home. They be like, I'm at home. As I say, colder than the Russian winter. Or as I say, colder than the Russian Natasha. They like it cold, boy. You ain't never met nobody colder than a Russian Natasha. All right, Natasha eating ice. Is she in the ice? Lord have mercy. This is an absolute. Look at that, ninja. These mail order brides going crazy out here. These mail order brides going nuts out here. You think she cold? You think it's cold out there? She colder than the Russian winter, boy. Mm. All right. Where's Michael Jackson when you need him? How does it feel? How does it feel? All right. Talk about he's a stranger in Moscow. I'm a stranger in Moscow. Did you? Hey, man, you can't beat these girls. These girls from the caucuses mound ain't playing, brothers. <laughs> All right. You like them cold. Just like the middle of the winter. All right. We got. Let's go to the. Let's go to San Antonio. Let's go to San Antonio and see what these young women are talking about here. Remember when they used to say, and you, you guys, you young guys don't know this. There was a time where it was said that men only think about one thing. Right? Who remembers those times? Everybody remembers that, right? The young guys, you don't understand this. Men only think about one thing. Now, we're finding out with the use of the internet that women think about one thing. Like, it's constantly on their mind. So, we used to say a dirty joke and women would act offended. Oh, you guys are disgusting. You only think about one thing, right? And then we would be stuck. We're like, you think about more things than that. But now we're finding out it is the women think about one thing. They're always thinking about their anatomy. They think about it 24 and 7. Now we think about getting it. They're always thinking about it. Case in point, this young woman right here, um, she's a San Antonio gordita. It ain't even Tuesday, but we gonna ring the gordita. All right, it says right here. Let's see what she's talking about here. So me and my sister are trying to find the shortest line in this fucking HGB. Hell nah. Like, who do I gotta show my motherfucking titties to to get to the front of the line? Oh. Let me know. Cause I'll make the sacrifice for my sister. She won't do it. Oh, man. Oh my God. She's so cute, though. Oh. So me and my sister are trying to find the shortest line 
in this fucking HGB. Hell nah. Like, who do I gotta show my motherfucking titties to to get to the front of the line? Oh, that's just a disgrace here. What? Oh, the humanity. All right, so she said, brothers, man, these beef, what is going? When I start selling pussy, I don't want to hear it. All right. And so, when I start oh. selling pussy, I don't want to hear nobody say shit. <laughs> All right. So everything is about their anatomy. Remember, you guys only think about one thing. I'm not, mind you, I'm out here getting puff Cheetos. I'm out here trying to get in line to get my turkey bacon and my, you know what I mean? I'm trying to get my 18, uh, 18 carta eggs. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm just chilling. And she wants to flash me to skip the line. Like, who's thinking about it? I wasn't even thinking about it, ma'am. Now, when you showed up with them big-ass areolas, I might have thought about smashing. But now she want to talk about, and that's a young girl. That's somebody's daughter. That's an underage 21-year-old, mind you, on the Internet, wanting to flash titties at someone to skip the line. This is crazy. <laughs> like, what's going on here? Like, come on, ma'am. We're all supposed to wait in the line. You can't just skip line for showing titties. Although, if you do pull them out, let me know. I want to see them old saggy waggies. All right, I want to see them saggy waggies. I want to see them things. All right, she got some belly deli too. Don't get it twisted. She showed you an angle that uh, you can't see that belly deli. And she a skeezer, by the way. And she's been skeezing since 13. This is definitely a long-term skeezer. This woman been seeing some things in her life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. That girl's an underage 21 year old, somebody's daughter, and has seen a lot of peen since she was 13. Yes, yeah, she's seen a lot of peen since she was 13. Sad to say, but it's a reality. Don't at me. Don't at me. You already know it. It's not a lie. I cannot tell a lie. All right, uh, let's go into Straggle and Sniggle Theater here. What do we got here? Oh, uh, we have, oh, uh, we got another Natasha. Boy, Natasha's and Babushka's and Anastasia's are going crazy on the internet. The internet is worldwide. So let's hear what this Anastasia has to talk about. She no longer has to be a mail order bride. She can have four businesses and she's a businesswoman. Here we go. I try so hard to not be a man hater, but I feel like their life goal is to challenge me. Imagine this, 5 a.m. Miami, Art Basel. I'm in the elevator of this luxury hotel where I pay almost 4K per night. I always have my makeup done professionally. I wear the dress because I'm going to record the content for my social media accounts before I have to work on four of my businesses and have a bunch of different calls. And it was this 50, 60 years old guy in the elevator with me. For 10 seconds straight, he stares at me, looking up and down and kind of trying to understand and calculate something. And then he fucking casually says, should we continue the party in my room now? So his logic was like this. Okay, there is a young woman in this luxury hotel that costs shit ton of money during Art Basel. She has makeup and dress on. So in his misogynistic mind, I was not a business owner who was Starts in her day super early so she can afford to be in places like this. No. To him, I was a hooker who was just finishing her night because in his mind, the only way for someone like me to be in this kind of hotels is being with someone there. What's funny is that though I'm twice younger than he is, we are now on the same level of income and lifestyle. So when I'm his age, I will be easily buying him if I wanted to. Unfortunately, I don't. <laughs> Oh. Man, it's getting hard out here, y'all. It's getting hard. Look at this big old wide mouth bass. Big old big mouth, large mouth bass ass. All right. I mean, listen, man. You better seen than not heard. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, and even then, this is a stretch. All right. If you like the Eastern European standard, this is flatbacks and pancakes out here. Not to diss her. But interesting, she used the word hooker saying people perceived her as a mail order bride slash hooker. But there was a comment here left, and take a look at the world we live in, y'all. The word hooker is disrespectful to the sex work community. Why don't you refer to those that partake in sex work as sex workers? Strong women empower other women. They do not cast shade on another due to the nature of their job. All right, good Lord, man. Your rent's due, motherfucker. We live in chaos here. I'm going to tell you, brothers, it ain't coming back. 2018 is not coming back. 1993 is not coming back. But she talked too much. She confused being a business owner for being her, want to be heard. 
And um, what are her businesses? I'm just curious. She has four businesses. All right. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, she's rather annoying. I'm going to tell you, she's very annoying. Just because you have businesses, don't need, and you need to talk. All right, here we go. Mm. All right, respect the sex workers. Respect them. All right, what are we doing here? We got Straggle and Sniggle Theater here. Oh, man. Is this more begging? How many more videos of this can I? Okay, I'm going to skip this one and move that one around. Let me see here. Okay, uh, let's see here. Yeah, we got a lot going on here on Straggle and Sniggle Theater. Let me see. Uh, where's the begging videos? Uh, I'm going to move them down here. All right, so what do we got next? Who Who's next? Okay, so we have a, oh, okay, here we go. We got a sister, you've been on, on my mind. It says right here, you're, you're so gorgeous. Please share exactly. Please share what exactly you get done so I can take notes on the future. Now, here we go right here. Take a look at this. Anytime you see these eyebrows up like this, you know something's up. That is not the natural arc of an eyebrow. I grew up in the 90s. I seen real eyebrows. All right, this is the, actually, do you guys know? You guys know there's an eyebrow chart that actually can show you the higher the arc, the bigger the bitch, but that's not neither here nor there. All right, a lot of people don't know that. Women can actually design their arc to realize how bitchy they are. In fact, you don't see it, but inherently, women with lower eyebrows, you trust them more. Women with higher eyebrows are either old or um, they're trying to portray themselves as a bitch, right? You ever see them? They'd be like looking like Ursula. They'd be looking like Ursula. By the way, she's going to tell you that her love does cost a thing here. Let's get to the video. How much work has this sister had done? I have Botox in my forehead area and filler in my cheeks, under eyes, and chin area. When I turned 40, I wanted to live my best life. I wanted to look as best as possible. And I wanted to take care of the really dark circles and dark crevasses under my eyes that really aged me and made me look tired and worn out. And I wanted to fix the fact that I had no chin. So I didn't want to look puffy. I find when people get too much filler, they obviously look older and worse. So I just really wanted a natural look to even out my eye area, lighten up that area under my eyes as well, and just look more awake and more fresh. I have about 23, 24 units of Botox in my forehead. Some Botox right here to get rid of the 11s. I love the glow that Botox gives you as well. He also concentrates a little Botox at the arch of the brow to give you, me a little bit of a brow lift. There, there's the brow lift. That's what it's called, a brow lift. So uh, I'm going to show you the chart here. I'll pull it up after the video here. I have... And so, um, uh, guys, man, look, I always tell you that women are expensive. And the older they get, the more expensive... They get. Let me see if I can show you the eyebrow chart uh, for women. Uh, actually, I presented this in another stream, so it might be. Um, I didn't. I didn't plan on presenting it uh, for women attitude. Let me see if I can find it here. But I presented this real quick. Uh, let's see where is it at. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, eyebrow shape is your personality. Uh, let's see. Here it is, right here. Uh, personality trait. Personality test. Your eyebrow shape can reveal your secret personality trait. Okay, wide set eyebrows. You see, they give you different types of uh, joint eyebrows, personality trait, if you will. Uh, where's the conversation here? And I didn't have time to look it up here. I didn't. I wasn't presenting today. But um, eyebrow and hairstyle. You guys don't know this. I've actually done this. I might need to revisit this. Hairstyle, the way a woman wears her hair can be uh, an example of her personality. So, for instance, if a woman has her hair down, that's supposed to be a submissive type personality, a, a personality of a woman that's maybe perceived as weaker. If her hair is up, that's a more confident woman, right? Her hair is up, it's more fuller, high ponytail, that's supposed to be a confident woman. A low ponytail, low braids is supposed to be kind of a submissive woman. It's kind of like dog ears. You see a dog ear, dog ears up is aggressive. Dog ears down is submissive, playful. So, um, know that about eyebrows is real. Eyebrows. Um, everything is subliminal. In fact, that for us, a lot of what we learn about uh, a lot of what we learn about a person can be can be transmuted non-verbally. Non-verbal communication. This is one thing people miss out on when people are prejudged. So what we wear, our attire, male or female, this is male or female, our attire tells us about a person. A lot of us tell want to tell people what about us the way we wear. 
uh, the, what we wear. Like if our hat is cocked to one side or the other, if our hat is backwards, if our hat is facing forward, if it's low, if it's low over your earlobes and low down over your eyebrow, if it's high up and pointed up, if you're wearing certain clothes, right? If you're a black guy wearing North Face, they're going to call you a sellout. If you're a black guy wearing a starter jacket, they're going to think you're cool, right? So uh, a lot of what we wear and the way we present ourselves non-verbally communicates a message. So this is indicative. This is also true of women where she said she wanted the eyebrow lift. Why? Um, but around this area here of the eye li- eyelids for women tends to fall low like this over their eyes. In fact, the eyes are the window to the soul and also can tell you what a woman's age is. Women who don't get Botox, they tend to have this area of their eye fall over their eyes like this, which makes their eyebrows fall low. It makes them look older. All right, you'll see this all the time, especially in white women. But yes, in Asian women, their eyebrows, their eyelids will fall over their eyes right there. Okay, so then they'll get this up, over accentuated, and get an eyebrow lift. And ninjas will be like, she looks good for her age. Mm. <laughs> You'll be like, she looks good for her age. But black don't have to crack to reveal how old you are. So she's defeated this process, admittedly, to not look older and tired. When your eyebrows, eyelids fall over your eyes, you look older and tired. You look sad, actually. You look sad, actually. So um, there it is right there. Uh, and then uh, just think about this. I'm going to play this again. Just think about this. How, um, how much money does she spend on these procedures to fool us and try to trick us? All right. How much money does she spend? Yeah, jowls and shit like this. Botox in my forehead area and filler in my cheeks, under eyes, and chin area. When I turned 40, I wanted to live my best life. I wanted to look as best as possible. And I wanted to take care of the really dark circles and dark crevasses under my eyes that really aged me and made me look tired and worn out. And I wanted to fix the fact that I had no chin. So I didn't want to look puffy. I find when people get too much filler, they obviously look older. There we go. Too much filler will make you look older. So now there's a balance. All right. Too much filler, right? So too much filler would make her lit, her cheeks look like she's doing way too much uh, continuing. And worse. So I just really wanted a natural look to even out my eye area, lighten right up that area under my eyes as well, yeah. and just look more awake. More awake and natural, I suppose. <laughs> natural, yeah. Oh, she also has eyeshadow under her uh, eyelid, eyelid, her eyebrow as well. And more fresh. I have about... 23, 24 units of Botox in my forehead. So Botox units. right here to get rid of the 11. 24 units. I don't know what that is. I've never had Botox. That seems like a lot. I don't know. That seems like a lot of money. Uh, but that is what it is. Somebody says, what does hat to the back perceive? It's a rebellious rebellion. Um, some women, younger women, think guys that wear their hat to the back are cool. It's a Chad look. It's a Tyrone look, right? So people will wear their hat to the back. It's kind of like a, uh, it, listen. It's simple. I'm simplifying it. Ninja, do not go off in the goddamn comment sections about this. It's simple. Men with the hat to the forward is they're more in line or in line with how the hat's supposed to be worn. Hat to the back is a little bit more rebellious, a little bit more edgy. Then you will find young women actually prefer men with hat to the backs. In fact, you will find that men on thumbnails on YouTube, um, if they wear a hat, it's most likely backwards. All right. So I'm going to tell you. I've actually noticed these things. Men that on YouTube that wear hats, most likely it's backwards. All right. So watch out and pay attention to that type of thing here. Even conservative hosts, it don't matter who the guy is. It, the hat's almost always going to be backwards. All right. So um, anyway, and you can see the eyes more when it's backwards. When it's forward, you can, the eyes are a little bit more covered. So it probably doesn't help the thumbnail. Anyway. Um, yeah. It is a fetish for women. They, you actually, I play videos where women say, um, if, the guy has his hat to the back. He'll, she'll more likely talk to the guy. She'll more likely talk to the guy, right? I'm, I mean, I can't make this up. I kind of understand nature a little bit. It's a nonverbal communication, nonverbal. So um, let me see here. And by the way, hat to the left or the right can't get you shot in the Midwest. Okay. Uh, what do you call it about? Uh, hat to the left or the right can get you shot in the Midwest. Sometimes maybe in the Northeast. So anyway, <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway, so watch out wearing your hat cocked to one side. You can't get your life snatched from your, 
from your body. Last couple straggle and sniggles here. Let me see here. Let's see here. This woman says, I cheat. I think I played this video before. I've cheated so many times. All right, here we go. We cheated a lot of times. So, you know. I'm glad you admitted that. So you're a, a cheater. cheater. I am a cheater. Because people act like they fucking never did nothing in their life. Oh, no, I'm going to tell the truth. I cheat. You do cheat. Yeah, Why I do you cheat? You better get married. Because to me. <laughs> Somebody like, nigga, I love her. Ask me again. Why? What are the circumstances that make you feel like I'm about to cheat? When I feel like he gets bored. When I you feel like you're bored or you feel like he's bored? I'm bored. No, yeah. I'm human. Like, if I'm not happy, I know somebody's going to say, well, if you're not happy, why you, why you stay? It's complicated. Happy. Sometimes. Yeah. It's complicated. It's complicated. Sometimes I need a nigga to keep paying my bill. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Look at this ninja. This ninja is like, man, hey, man. Oh, the humanity. Hey, man, I feel you, brother, man. He just hasn't reached. This brother, shout out to him. And I, I mean no disrespect to my brother here. He's just living the hope strategy. He just is sitting. Oh, he's losing faith in humanity. He's losing faith in American women. He's sitting here like, man, when am I going to find my wifey? This <laughs> oh, poor guy right there. He just. Oh, look at this look. This is the look of men who watch my show and listen. <laughs> yeah, him sad. They listen to my show and they go back out there. I'm going to prove coach wrong. Not my girl. There's girls out here that aren't like these skeezers that CGA talking about. And he'll live and live and live. And he's getting woken up, right? Because it ain't me. Is that Jalen Brown? It looks like him, but I don't think that's him. He's a smart brother. All right, but guys are losing faith. They're holding out hope. But hope is being dashed. <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and play it again with the, here it is right here. It's complicated. I cheated a lot of times. So, you know. I'm glad you admitted that. So you're a, a cheater. cheater. I am a cheater. Because people act like they fucking never did nothing in their life. Oh, no, I'm going to tell the truth. I cheat. You do cheat. Yeah. Why oh, do you cheat? Jesus, you better get married. Because to me... <laughs> Somebody like, nigga, I love her. Ask me again. Why? What are the circumstances that make you feel like, I'm about to cheat? Yeah, what? When I feel like he gets bored. 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 I'm not happy. Bored. <laughs> All right, guys, you guys got to keep women active. You can't let them be like, I just want to be a stay-at-home wife. She's going to cheat on you, fam. She needs to be active. Put, put babies in her. Knock her up. Barefoot and pregnant. All right, when she bored, it's a wrap. All right, keep her ass confused and busy. All right, do not keep a woman bored. All right, and by the way, do not go out here tap dancing and entertain her. And just keep her busy with work. All right, keep her busy with God and the Lord. When you I feel like you're bored or you feel like he's bored? I'm bored. No, yeah. I'm human. Like, if I'm not happy, I'm... Yeah, I'm not happy. I'm all right, I want to be happy. All right, there's no such thing. All right, let's continue. All right, hold on for a second. No, somebody's going to say, well, if you're not happy, why you, why you stay? It's complicated. Sometimes yeah. it's complicated. It's not complicated. He paying the rent. That's why. Your rent's due, motherfucker. All right, he paying the rent. That's why you stay. All right, it's pretty simple, and you actually using the marital clock. It ain't complicated. Just go ahead and tell the truth. It's complicated. Sometimes I need a nigga to keep paying my bill complicated oh man look at him man poor guy right there look at him man sorry sorry guy sorry guy it's sad out there but ring the bell on it ring the bell on some of these ninjas man they gonna find out they gonna find out <laughs> right anyway they gonna find out all right let's continue here we do uh is this uh this the next segment yes this is the next segment so that's dragon and sniggle for the day okay hey with me if you ride with me you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast sticky come get high with me that's a deal right don't hey don't blame me out here guys i'm only trying to help you i'm not trying to hurt you 2500 so that means there's over 6000 people in here you two be lying on my numbers shout out to hassan campbell <laughs> right you two be lying on my numbers 2500 people actively concurrently listening so hit the like button. I really appreciate you because it's the best stage of here on YouTube. Dr. Thunder says, for all have simped, Lord forgive me. And we all have simped. All right, shout out to the guys that never have simped, but they be simping. All right, but they be like, I ain't never simped. Okay. All right, that's how you learn out here, Ninja. That's how you learn. All right, let me check up over here. We have, um, did I get the Workday podcast? I did. He says, Leaf says, CGA coach, I used to follow a bunch of PUAs. Someone put, the comment MGTOW, out of sheer curiosity, I looked it up on YouTube. Up came Stardust in Sandman. My life was changed forever. I do believe this space 
is invitation and invite only. Interesting. It is, and it's an understanding because, uh, yeah, in the past, and just as a means to, to, to tell you, in the past, um, some of the men's advice that was offered to them was in the form of what they call pickup artistry, which was the preceding voice of the red pill for a period of time. Um, it died out, and I think MGTOW killed it, just to be honest with you, and that's why you will find that PUAs are highly against the MGTOW because it is a, it is a, the MGTOWs are the redhead stepchild of the red, red pill, the freckle face. So what happened was the PUA offered advice on how to be better with women. In essence, it was just get another woman, right? So it was, and the MRAs was another segment of two, but these ninjas was too cowardice to stand and hold the line. This is why MGTOWs will generally say, hold the line. The MRA didn't hold the line. All right, they folded up like a cheap suit when they were called misogynist. So the advice offered for a long time was get a woman, get another woman, or this is how you get women, and that will be your solution. A lot of people don't know this or understand this, but I've been around since 2015, 2016. So I've seen some of these transitions in this space. But what happened was these men end up buying courses. A lot of, a lot of peak pickup artistry was about selling courses and making money and, in essence, grifting. Then what happened was there was a group of men that tried pickup artistry, and it didn't work. Now, whether it didn't work because it was their fault or what the PUA was selling was not real, the, the guys that did it, it didn't work for ended up segmenting off to MGTOW, all right, because they tried it, they spent money, they tried, to, they tried the banaka, they tried to go to the club and pick up girls. Most men failed, so they segmented off to another group. Then they were highly against the pickup artistries. And by the way, pickup artists were exposed to selling mythology. Much of what they sold was false and fake. Much of what they sold was false. So a lot of guys don't understand that. They're just coming on here, no, 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 just use the mouthpiece. Just use your mouth, just approach. But people don't understand. That was popular for 10 years ago. People had already done it, and people had already seen it was fiction. Much of what we see today of people selling that, they don't prove it, right? They never, rarely ever prove it in the form of infields. So... The guys that made their money and got their bag and ran. Gotta get my bag and run. <laughs> they already showed that these things were somewhat scripted. They were organized. They were fake. They were PUAs, pickup artists that would get on stage and hold conventions. And they would have a girl dressed in a, a tight bodysuit and high heel pumps. And they would be like, they would, run their, they would run their game on the girl. And the girl would react. I mean, ninjas. Men done seen all of that shit. So guys today that come from a generation of people who didn't realize that this already came and went, they're trying to now convince guys to do this again. And there's already a group of guys that are like, oh, this shit again. So when you're met with, oh, this shit again, these pickup guys, mouthpiece guys, these run game guys, they already know that it's false, right? They already know that that's fake science. Now, one more thing to add to this, just as a sense of providing context. This is what I do. I provide context. I'm not just going to say it doesn't work. It doesn't. It does work. To provide context, there's now men that transition from PUA to doing MGTOW oriented content under the guise of red pill and pickup artistry. Now, people that have been around have seen this. So there are people who were just pushing pickup. Then they transition when pickup died. When it died and they can no longer could sell courses and then they called men, red pill and MGTOWs, they bullied them and you were losers and lames and incels. What happened was they had to join the party. So what they did was they moved their content over just a little bit, their thumbnails, they moved their content over just a little bit so it doesn't look, a, look like pickup artistry. They just oriented it quite differently, just a little bit. Then they claim... In the middle of it, they're not Red Pill or MGTOW, but they attract that audience. And then they try to sell you something. Then they'll try to be like, well, it's about game and it's about numbers. So you'll see the pickup artistry still alive, but they just tweaked it a little bit. There's guys out here that know this. They call it out. So when you see that there's some sort of, well, why you don't like this person? Why you don't like that person? You'll see that that's what they try to do. Instead of saying, I'm a pickup artist, right? 
They're not going to say that. They just tweak it. Yeah, there's a bunch of people you're naming. So they just tweak it. Right? And then they just then try to sell you, well, this is how you get a woman type shit. So you're seeing it over and over again. Um, guys, I've been around this space way too long where it's kind of replicating itself. And we'll come to a time where, where men will try to come up and be like, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, it's about game type shit. Anyway, but they're, it's, a dying, it's a dying breed. It will pop back up maybe in five to ten years. It might be popular again, but it's dead. It's dead. Ninjas ain't falling for it like that. It will get a lot of views. People will look at it, but people have already understood that, that they're just trying to sell them something. Anyway, anyway, yeah, that PUA's transition into self-development and, and self-help and shit like that, but they're really just... They just switched it up, and their thumbnails will be more big towel, more red pill. All right, they'll claim to be allegiance to red pill. They'll come in debate. They'll come on your platform. Indeed. But, yeah, a lot of people already know it's old news. He said they call it male improvement. Yeah, that's kind of what it is. So, um, anyway, just so you guys know, uh, I'm, not, I'm no fool out here. I've been around this space way too long for you to try to switch it up on me. All right, I know what's going on. Yeah, gold digger pranks. And so they'll get it. They'll get you emotionally attached. Gold digger pranks. And they'll get you emotionally attached. And be like, these hoes, these hoes. And then at the end of the video, if you want 10 secrets, you see what I mean? Nope. (laughs) Anyway, it's a line straddling. Anyway, what are we doing here? Larry C. Says, just wanted to thank you for a fire money mindset last night. Please take me out to the, with the, oh, okay. Shout out to you. Thanks for joining me on Money Mindset. And the Money Mindset is brought to you by patreon.com backslash host Greg Adams. Money Mindset level on Sunday nights. Where is it at? Where is it at? There it is. What you did to my car? What the piss did to my car? I can't stand it, though. I can't stand it, this. <laughs> Oh, it's barbecue in there. Damn. All right, man. It's cold out here. Shout out to our brother. Rayon says, Greenies coach, I just wanted to say most of my knowledge about female nature came from listening to Patrice O'Neill. Shout out to Patrice O'Neill. Rest in peace to him. And shout out to Brayon for acknowledging one of the people. Again, another guy that is not Red Pill. He's not MGTOW. But a lot of the uh, recognition about female nature you know, a lot of people got introduced through Patrice O'Neill. And Patrice O'Neill wasn't a t- Tyrone, a Chad, or a Pookie. Much of what m- men learn from women, oftentimes the fact that you weren't a Chad and Tyrone, you can be, be more in tune to what women are because you have to find out. If you're a Chad and Tyrone, you typically don't have to find out. And she doesn't have to reveal her true intentions or self. Thus, you'll miss lessons. In fact, AMS. There's another guy called Bulldog Mindset. These two men were not Chad and Tyrone's, and they learned a lot about female nature, meaning that I think AMS at one point was overweight. Then he got in shape, right? Same thing, Bulldog Mindset. He was overweight. He got in shape. Then thus, because you are not the prime select man, you will learn hard lessons from women. Thus, you will be more in tune about about what women really are. If you are just a Chad and Tyrone, you might miss the lesson meaning that you might not get these things because the woman doesn't either show you or you don't have to go through certain things. Thus, you miss a lot of lessons. Tend to, tend to. This is, remember, I'm being very general here. Um, what do we got here? Bryce says, Coach, my next week is my 38th birthday. I will be headed to New Hampshire to do some skiing to celebrate. And yes, I am Caucasian, traveling by myself for three-day trip like a free agent should shout out to you out there. And I hope you find you a little bit something out there and enjoy your ski trip out in New Hampshire, New Hampshire. The actual, okay, hold on for a second. Let me see here. I'm skipping a couple people here. Um, no government name says if women get bored in relationships, that is just dead and done. If you have to jump through hoops and hurdles to keep her in line, then let her go. If she wants to go, men get bored as well. And this is the truth. So, you know, I, I, I'm one to believe that, you know, all relationships are not worth being saved, right? But a lot of us go through a lot of things to save the relationship only to real, realize that it was over a long time ago. And this is a tough thing for men to adopt, right? Because people do, t- well, just work it out and, you know, reignite the spark or, you know, cure the boredom or entertain her or take her on a trip. 
Um, I'm one to believe that the relationship is over at that point. You're going to probably participate in some sort of usury. That's one way. Or have an arranged relationship where none of this fair, fantasy and fairy tale is a part of the relationship. Um, you know, this does take out a little bit of the emotional part of relationships, which is very important. Y'all ninjas think I got a black heart, <laughs> right? But I'm pragmatic. I'm logical. I do believe in emotion. Although it's not the overriding factor. It's not the overriding factor. I don't use emotion to trump logic. Like if it doesn't make, if it doesn't make dollars, it don't make sense. All right. If it doesn't add up, start subtracting. This is one phrase that I brought to this space and I'm still not getting credit for. If it doesn't add up, start subtracting. All right. So stuff is not adding up. You're starting to go through things. It's not adding up. And what people do when it's not adding up is you'll add more. You'll add more. Like, say, for instance, your girl starts acting funny. What you'll do is uh, you, you can't get a hold of her after 7.30 p.m. on a weekday. After 7.30 p.m., she disappears. But right around 9.30, 10, 10.30, 11, oh, hey, honey, uh, I just want to say good night. But she didn't respond to your text from 7.30 p.m. to 11 p.m. Conventional wisdom, that means if you don't live with her, conventional wisdom will tell you that something's going on. This is, this is um, not good behavior for a person that you're committed to. You should listen to this and start subtracting, meaning subtract what could possibly happen as options. Don't give them less, don't give them more options. Well, maybe she's studying. Maybe she's with family members. Maybe she's not responding because she's talking to her friends at dinner. She might tell you, when I'm with my friends, I don't respond to my phone. I don't look at my phone when I'm having conversations with friends, right? And so what you'll do is add more outs. You'll add more coats. You'll add more things to maybe go, hmm, ladies, you do this too. Hmm, M maybe it's that. Maybe it's that they're at a work function tonight. Maybe, maybe they're watching the game. You see what I mean? And so we'll add. You'll add to the options to get this so you can relieve your stress or you can say your gut, gut calm down. Don't be uh, controlling and insecure. Calm down. So you'll add. What you need to do is when things don't add up, start subtracting. Start subtracting what could possibly be happening and get down the brass tacks. All right, then confront. Then if she started acting funny, subtract that bitch. Mm. Yeah, subtract. If things don't add up, start, start subtracting. And that will el eliminate this emotional reaction to you try to preserve something that's been dead long time ago. See, I got the I got the answers for you. Yeah, my phone died. My phone died. Yeah, the old, you know, my my phone dies between 7:30 and 11. I just couldn't get to it and I got to a charger and it finally charged up and <laughs> Yeah. It this is all nonsense. This is all nonsense and how many times are you going to hear this? You're you're being treated like a fool if you accept this two or three times. If you accept this two or three times, you're being treated like a fool. I mean, they're, they're making you out to be a, a jackass at that particular point. You think I'm a jackass? I mean, come on. But you will go for this. You will see it. Oh, well, maybe it's true. You know, I don't, maybe. The actual King Smith says, when you said, oh, look, there's Nat King Cole in a Christmas hat earlier in today's stream. It took me out. Appreciate the edutainment. Thank you for the support, at actual King Smith. I appreciate that. We're almost ready to get back to the show. All right, and I think I'm getting down to the end here. MC Hamster, I'm sorry, Ninja Snuggle says, Coach, I desperately need a job right now. But should I go with the first person to call or should I wait for other people to call me? I would say you need to take a job now, <laughs> right? You need to take a job. So there, you're not in the, you don't have leverage to negotiate. See, when you have leverage, you can negotiate. When you don't have leverage, you got to take the first offer, all right? So, and then get the second offer. Take the second offer down the line. MC Hamster says, the meaning of leave the world behind is go outside, touch grass, and get to know your neighbors. There's a lot of hidden, hidden means out there. Get to know your neighbors before they turn on you and you have to quit draw McGraw on their ass. The narrow train crawler says, my older lady friend got a hysterectomy a few weeks ago or months ago. She wanted me to bless that box. I think I hit that bottom because she keeps texting me. I made a mistake. Uh-oh. <laughs> Jesus. All right, y'all out here. Y'all out here 
hitting them bottoms out here. All right. You know, you create your own problems when you hit that bottom. Yikes. Be careful out there. Spider says, been dealing with this cougar for six years. She had a heart condition. Now asked me if I had money for her medicine last time I tried to hit. She acted like she didn't want to. I wasted money on her. She's in a bind. I'm in a bind, Nate. Oh, man. Yep, older women in a bind is not too good. So y'all mess. I, man, this, this goes to show you, when I tell you protect your meat, when I tell you all men pay, women have, we're going to talk about this later. Women have an innate ability to able to uh, perceive men as a, as a way out of certain their, some of their situations, meaning we're their safety net. He said, y'all never learn. We have to understand that that's why a woman engages with us. This is why a woman looks at you and say, okay, he has clean shoes. He takes care of himself. Or the guy that doesn't have clean shoes. Okay, I'll just let him hit it. All right, for fun. I'll have fun. But a lot of us think that I don't care. The, I don't care if she's fat, oblong, cockeyed, knock knee, buck tooth, beautiful, ugly, mid, stop factory issue, Christian, Muslim, Jewish. Wait a minute. Can I say that? I'm not going to say what race, what people. We know I can't say that. A lot of us think that if I go for a mid woman, a woman that is not highly selected on the marketplace, that they have true intentions. They're not going to play games. I'm here to tell you that this is not true. Guys, all women look at you as a means to an end. What can I gain from this individual? They can all get Johnson when they want to get Johnson. They can all get better looking ninjas than you. Not for a period of time. They can all fall in love with anybody. In fact, a woman that has fallen in love with many is almost a useless human being to me. She's a hope strategist. She's a hopeless romantic. So just because you can fall in love quick doesn't prove that you love men and you love me for me. That's actually a red flag. You're love bombing, and eventually you're trying to get what you want. But but he banged the cougar, and she still, he still got to pay. <laughs> he banged the cougar thinking that this was free punani, and guess what? She still came back with her paw out. She still came back with her paw out. <laughs> anyway, man. <laughs> you guys got to understand that you're you going to pay money, energy, attention, or time. In fact, the strategy that women use, and I'm going to say it again and again, to get you to pay the most, which inherently will get you to use the other letters, the money, energy, attention is when a woman says this. Have you ever heard this? This is a trap. I don't care about a man's money. You go, really? Hmm, your ears perk up. Now, I'm not no gold digger. I don't care how much money he makes. I don't care about a man's money. I don't care about what he, I don't, I don't care about him in the future. What matters to most to me is time. I want a man's time. I want a man's time. See, I'm a genuine woman. I just think that a man's time is the most valuable to me. That, to me, is the dumbest mating strategy that wins over men because men perceive that as a valuable woman. You perceive that, oh, she's different than the most. But dumbass, you're going to spend more money, energy, and attention on the woman that makes you spend time. Right? You're going to spend time, which is a resource. It's not only a resource, it's the most valuable of the resources. And you're going to find that that is a leech. She's a parasite. That's going to run your pockets fast. But it's a slow drip. What it is is a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. $20 here, $30 there. All right, movie trip here. Oh, I'll pay for that as a four there. A gift. Uh, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, all right, birthday, a gift here, a trip there. Oh, she knocked up, pregnant there. All that attention you paying to her. All that cuddling on the couch on a Saturday, Sunday. That is called spending, re that's a resource. That is a resource. That's the most expensive resource you have. Not only that, you're going to pay more attention to her because she's spending more time. You're going to pay more attention to her because you're spending more time. You're going to pay 
more attention to her because you're spending more time. Then when the money comes up, it's a slow drip. And then all of a sudden she's around for eight months. If you combine the amount of little slow drips here, a $10 here, can I borrow $20 there? I'll pay for breakfast here. The amount of dates that you, the amount of money that you spent over that eight month period will be, um, it, it will be a slow leak, a slow leaky faucet. Then the money's going to come in. I don't pay. I don't trick. I mean, guys, come on. Come on, man. Pay attention. Pay. But I, I get it because most men perceive a woman that targets their wallets head on is a dangerous woman. But I'm going to tell you, free women cost the most. Free women cost the most. Type that in. This is another CGA-ism that I don't get credit for. But yes, I came up with it. Free women cost the most. Type it. Free women cost the most. I came up with this, another CGA-ism that I've donated. It's, it's you guys don't see it because you think a woman that, and listen, a woman that targets your wallet isn't any better. I'm, I'm not saying she's better. She's just more direct. You know what the price is. You're like, okay. Then you can turn it down. You can be like, nah, you a gold digger or whatever you want to come up with. Free women cost the most. A woman that says my love costs a thing, that woman's going to run you dry, <laughs> right? Mm. She's going to drain you over a, a, over a five, 10 year period. Free women cost the most. You're going to figure this out. <laughs> okay, come on, man. Uh, you got to think about it pragmatically pragmatically oh free women will get knocked up pregnant on you now what how much is that going to cost you you're going to find out you thought all that peace leave was free <laughs> all right or a woman that you put work to work for you how much is she going to cost oh she's going to help me build i'm gonna put her to work how much is that going to cost it's going to cost that ain't free ninja <laughs> all right anyway anyway all right you either pay on the front end or the back end back end is going to be uh, you're writing a blank check if it's on the back end. You're writing a blank check if it's on the back end. Guys, you got to think of it like this. I'm not telling you what, sh what you should do. You just think of it like this so we can get down to brass tacks. Women are not free. Women are not free, bro. I mean, Jordan Peterson to tell you this, they're not free. In fact, I've had many women. I'm like, I've had, I have daughters. You think my daughter's free? She costs a lot of money, bro. Kids cost a lot of money. Ex-wives cost a lot of money. Wives cost money. Girlfriends cost money. And money, energy, attention, and time. <laughs> All right, come on, man. Anyway, let me get back to the show. What are we doing here? Approaching failure. Well, my cold approach ninjas. Approaching failure. So what is this right here? Cold approach? Okay. Um, here it is. Here's a meme right here. Going on to the next segment. Um, this is kind of what's indicative of, I wish I put up a poll on this one, but I may not have time. Maybe I'll have time maybe on the break. Um, this is kind of what's going on in the world today. Do you guys believe that, you know, social media and dating apps and a lot of people in their DMs and meeting people in person and going out having fun? M women do meet men. Not that they take everybody's number. But um, this is a problem for men who have less access. So this is a guy. Uh, this is an example of a woman who's proudly saying to the world, hey, I got options. Okay, I got options. You need to pay attention to me. This is a form of payment here. And she, there's other forms of payment here. But she says, when number one takes four hours to respond, but number seven takes three seconds. Mm. So she jumped from number one, which is the one, the one she really wants, versus the one she'll settle for in her rotation, in the amount of good morning texts in the amount of men that are pining for her, in the amount of men in her friend zone, in her beta male orbit, or whatnot. She's saying, hey, I'm still good out here. Now, this is perceived options, but of course, she's young and having fun. And yes, women do have a lot of men in their orbit, their friend zone, and uh, you know, uh, potential lovers and mates and thirsty ninjas and simps and all of these things. Even married women have them. Work husbands, go down the line. Ex-lovers. Chads, Tyrones, men that they really want versus men that they settle for. This is a reality. Any woman that argues with this, you're, you're arguing in bad faith. Now, it doesn't mean you got to listen to these offers. But when you're young, having fun on the carousel, yeah. <laughs> this is something that you would put out. 
when number one takes four hours. So yeah, I'm I'm the guy that would typically take four hours. But I also know there's men that say good morning and are competing for uh, the girl that I take four hours or maybe a day to get back to. Now, this is a watch for me. I really don't care. I really don't care. Neither does number one here. But what if you're number five, six, and seven? What if you're number seven and you don't realize that she's already like, hey, I got number one through six. There's a lot of guys don't, that don't understand their number seven. They don't understand their number five because she'll say, I'm loyal, I'm faithful, I some, I'm celibate. And when I hear a woman say that, I say, well, if you're a celibate, I'll buy a bit. Yeah, I'll buy a bit. I'm good. I got money. All right, but a lot of guys don't know that they're, hey, baby, I got, and then you're constantly feeding her ego as a means to say, hey, I'll stay out here in the wheelhouse. I'll stay as a replacement. I'll stay in this friend zone. I'll stay in as, as an option. And you might believe that, hey, she'll eventually settle for me. Or maybe I'm good. My girl texts me right, right away. Well, this is, an, this is an answer to that right here. This is an answer. This could be an answer to this. Where you think by keeping her attention or paying attention is going to keep you in the better driver's seat. But not actually. Sometimes women do understand that the man that, that's number one has many options. Doesn't mean she'll eliminate him. As a matter of fact, Dr. Thunder talked about this this morning. Where a woman says, and she's an older woman, of course. She says, hey, listen, don't go for the guy you like. Don't go for your type. Go for the guy that sticks around kind of thing like this. And she's coaching women to say, hey, your type is not your type. All right. Just because you have a type doesn't mean he's uh, you're his type. So eventually go with the guy that sticks around. So she keeps the Chad Tyrone. She gets the guy that she really likes. She gives the guy that is her type prime p- position and she'll keep texting him. And he'll come over and rearrange her guts. He'll bounce off. And he'll treat her respectfully. He doesn't diss her. All right. He'll give her that serum right to the throat. And he'll treat her and say, you're a good girl. I appreciate you for being here. But, you know, I got to do what I got to do. And she'll say, okay. All right. She'll say, okay, daddy. All right. Okay, daddy. All right. It is what it is. But you at number seven. You at number four. Let's just say she's your one out of four. You're at number four thinking, oh, she responds right away, and she's mine. Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, good morning, Texas ninjas. Yeah, it is what it is. Guys, women have to do this because this protects them with the safety net. They have to do this. This is something that I don't look down upon. Remember, all of these things I'm describing, I don't look down upon as behavior. What I do is warn men of this behavior so that you can find your way to see where you are with a woman. You have to. You have to. It's only right. All right. Coochie games. Coochie games don't work with a man who has options. I'm going to have to bring that clip back. All right. What about this one right here? We got another one. Check out this sister right here. All right. Oh, she got a lot of forehead and bang gangs. Not the bang gangs. Oh, 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 not the bang gangs. All right. This is a nice looking sister right here. She got the bang gangs. Not the bang gangs. That wig on there. Good boy. That wig install is decent all right ladies sisters tell them about that wig install right there (laughs) sisters look at this wig install isn't this good sheesh she got the bangangs whoa whoa okay let me stop let me get in here and see what she's saying here when a guy you don't like tries to have like that big D energy and shoot his shot at you, it kind of feels like you're being harassed. Like this guy DM me and was like, Friday, we're going to the movies at 8 p.m. And I was like, oh, OK, enjoy. I hope you like the movie. And he goes, no, he's like, you're going to come with me. And I was like, that's not how you ex me out on a date. But let it have been a guy that I liked. I would have been like, oh, yes, honey. Are you sending a car to come get me? I love a man to take charge. <laughs> oh, ninja, man. OK, I was just tripping, right? I was tripping when I said this, huh? Oh, see? All right, so we got a cold approach in the DM. This guy tried to use a strategic game of, hey, I'm going out to the movies, and so are you type game. Yeah, this, that was crafty. I had to give it to him. Let me give him a round of applause. That was interesting. Oh, I've had that work before. I've had that work. And oddly enough, it worked for the man that she liked. But she says for the guy she do- doesn't like, it's harassment. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's harassment. So guys are doing this. You're actually, I always tell you, man, if you don't know where you are in your place in a woman's life, 
you can be considered harassing. The things that you do can be considered creepy. But she'll keep you around. She'll keep you around. She won't turn you over to the police because she might need to have some rent. To- Your rent's due, motherfucker. All right, she might need some rent. She might be able to sell you some puss, all right, at the end of the day if she gets in a bind. So she will keep your ass around, but she'll consider you creep and disgusting. This is why you must know where you are because what worked for the goose <laughs> did not work for the gander, okay? Or not, that was a wrong comparison. What worked for the handsome guy, what worked for the guy that she really liked instead of the guy that's in the zone, is it, it was the same tactic, but it got a different result. Same tactic. So a guy will tell you, just do this, just do that. But I always say, depends on who you are. Why would you send a guy out to do that? A, a guy in a wheelchair, the wheelchair ninja, right? Why would you send them out to work that tactic when you're missing the fact that you have pre-qualification markers met, 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 all right? You know you're number one or number two. You have uh, things that the other guy doesn't have. You have, uh, you're, you're charismatic. You have great command of the English language. You present yourself well. You're handsome. You smell good. You got your hair lined up, okay? You might be tall, 5'11", 6'6", 6'1", 6'2", 6'4". Okay, you might have good skin. You might have uh, things that exemplify wealth. You might be muscular. You're in good shape. And another guy is completely the opposite, but you will tell him to do the exact same thing. This woman just busted the fallacy that cold approach works for every guy. She just busted it because she said, This guy tried this, but I would do it for this guy if he tried the same thing. Mm. Looks, status. You see what I mean? We got to have command of this. We got to have an understanding. Just saying things. A a lot of guys will preach these things, but then I say, look at you versus look at who you just, you just sold this guy something that's clearly not going to work for him. You, on the other hand, I can see why it works. You see, we got to acknowledge this. Well, I actually had a good friend of mine say this. Well, hey, listen, life ain't fair that I'm six foot three. And this is no diss to him, and I'm not going to say his name. But I've heard him say this. Well, life ain't fair that I'm six three. Well, (laughs) let's just get it right. Let's just get it right. So you're saying these things work, but you're also saying you have favor, that you have a thing that actually makes it easier for you to get that foot in the door for this woman to say, oh, well, he does it, it's okay. CGA does it, no bueno. You see what I mean? Uh, let me continue here. Let me go ahead and play her one more time just so you can hear what she said here. She's saying a guy tried a tactic. She thought it was creepy and harassing, but if another guy did it that she pre-selected, it would be okay. Listen. When a guy you don't like tries to have like that big D energy and shoot his shot at you, it kind of feels like you're being harassed. I got to ask this woman, why is she communicating with a guy she doesn't like? Now, this, let's go back, gentlemen. Why is she communicating with a guy she doesn't like? You have to ask yourself this. Well, the reality is women communicate with guys they don't like. Mm. Mm. Let me say it again for people in here. Women communicate with guys they don't like. This is a hard lesson for men. She will, but brief old law says the woman determines the communication between the male and the female, meaning that if she doesn't see any value out of you, she will not communicate. If she sees a value, she will communicate. She will, she will listen to you. Meaning a value could be attention. A value could be access to resources. A value could be, uh, you might be able to fix her furniture from Ikea uh, it could be that you deliver good pipe. You might be able to pay a bill. There's, there's value. Even today, women can have uh, uh, five or six type of men around that deliver something significantly different, right? A friendship guy, a money guy, a date guy, an exciting guy, a husband type guy. In the past, she had to get rid of all these males. Today, she can keep these men around. So in essence, this woman just acknowledged that she keeps a guy around that she really doesn't like. She lets him communicate enough to be able to set up a date. Think about this. Think about this. Um, this is, uh, and then she says here, and this is not a joke. She says. Like this guy DM me and was like, Friday, we're going to the movies at 8 p.m. And I was like, oh, okay, enjoy. I hope you like the movie. And he goes, no, he's like, you're going to come with me. And I was like, that's not how you ask me out on a date. But 
let me stop right there. That's not how you ask me out on a date. So again, he has a chance to ask her for a date. If he does it the way she wants that guy to do it. Then she says, following up. Let it have been a guy that I liked. I would have been like, oh, yes, honey. Are you sending a car to come get me? I love a man to take charge. <laughs> uh, yeah, see, man, and they're acknowledging it. Guys, this is something that you don't want to get mad at. Don't get mad at these things. All right, we're exposing. We're allowing them to expose this truth. Um, another poll that I'm going to put up. Another poll that I'm going to put up because a lot of us see these things on Instagram and shit like this. And I use these, but trust me, I've heard this in the real life. I just can't bring these women online to tell you guys, right? They're not going to do this type of thing. But they use their Instagram and TikTok like a diary to reveal things that they might not reveal to people in the general public. Thus, it makes the conversation as, well, women in the real world, off the when they're not on the internet, the women in the real world are the true women. Yeah. The women on the internet, that's, that's not real women. We do hear these conversations in this space. But I'm going to tell you, you're slightly missing a critical thing. You're missing something critical here. Now, do all women, are all women like this? I'm going to say yes. <laughs> all right, but let me tell you. The internet allows them to tell a truth to a greater audience and get support. Thus, even with backlash, it's positive attention. And they can get a support group of women or people who think like her in the comment section. In the real world, they have to hide this quality. I know this because I've been around a lot of women either through work. I have relatives. I have sisters. I've worked with women extensively for almost two decades. When the judgment is available to them where they don't have a greater amount of women that will co-sign this shit, they, they have to hide it. So if she's at a nightclub, uh, let's just say she's in church, are you going to hear this? No. She can face negative consequences in judgment. She can be ostracized. She can be called names by a group of men. She can be called names by a group of women. So she's not going, she's going to least likely say these things in public, thus giving us the indicator that these are different women when they're in public. Well, in the real world, women are... The reality is she can't say these things because she faces harsher consequences in her social circle. So she'll keep these things to herself, but you'll see her on Instagram talking like this. And you're like, what? Sally? Sally? If she was at a Beyonce concert and she said this and everybody was going to say, girl, uh uh-huh, and they start slapping fives, then she would say it in the Beyonce concert. She has less to lose because hive mindset. She has a group of people she knows are going to support this bullshit. If she's in the beauty salon and she says this, she's fair game. No ninjas around or maybe one or two ninjas is around and 10 women co-signing. So she'll say it. You don't see her because she knows she knows she has something to lose. So she's quiet <laughs> right, right here. You see what I mean? Reputation is big deal for women. Thus, On social media, they can represent themselves, even if it's true or false, in a way that doesn't harm them like it would in the real world. What you call the real world, which is the matrix, right? But it's the real world. And you're like, these women online and offline are different. I'm going to tell you, you guys don't, you guys compartmentalize women in a way that is dangerous. It's a dangerous thing. And it's a dangerous way to say These are the good women. These are the bad women. It's very dangerous. It's not only dangerous to you, it's dangerous to the rest of the men because you're trying to say, well, these women are different from these. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Do not pie chart these women. Do not gather them and try to say these are different. These are the bad ones. You're going to find out that good girls are bad girls that haven't been caught yet. Many good girls are bad girls who have never been caught. Many bad girls are some of the most truthful and honest girls because they tell you the truth and we give them the harshest criticism. We call them hoes and skeezers just because they open their mouths. Sometimes it's the best thing she ever did. They live in a spectrum. They're plotted on dots. In fact, one woman is one way to one man and another man, she's completely a different person. Same woman, same time frame, same moment in time, 
this woman's wifey, this woman's a skeezer. Same moment, same time. So with that being said, all of them are capable of this just because you don't see it in public gives you the indicator of they're not like that in real world. Yes, they are. They just have to hide it. <laughs> they just have to not be able to say it because they know they'll lose you as a friend. They'll lose you as a mate. They'll lose you as a supporter. They'll lose you as a husband. They can't be running around saying this shit. They can't say it to you in your face. <laughs> so they got to hide it. But I hear guys on the internet, on here, talking about, well, go outside and touch grass and deal with women in the real world. They're different. I'm like, you're a moron. I mean, mm. you're a fool. You're a complete fool if you believe that. What they are are protecting their reputation more in public because they have more to lose in public. They got men that they can touch that can change their lives. They ain't going to reveal who they really are and what they want to do. They'll wait till they get the TikTok for that shit. <laughs> All right, and how often are you going to see their TikToks? Not that often. You ain't about to watch her TikToks. All right, so you might miss who she really wants to be. As a matter of fact, let me give you another example because I'm cooking. What do women do, tend to do, what do women tend to do on Halloween? Shout out to all the ladies here. The ladies are like, shut up. What do women tend to do on Halloween? And even traditional women hide who they really are. I don't trust traditional women either. They're, they're, they've changed who they are by putting on traditional garb. Just because they got a dress on, again, they're using nonverbal language to communicate who they really are. Doesn't mean she ain't no hoe, all right, or never been one. But let, let, what do women on Halloween do? They dress like their alter ego, their alter ego. Uh, Beyonce had an album uh, talking about her alter ego was Sasha Fierce. Okay, their alter ego is a playful ego. And um, in the movie Mean Girls, they said Halloween is the one day where women could dress like whores but not be judged as one. More or less, I'm paraphrasing. So it's an excuse to dress like their alter ego. I wish to dress like this, but I really wouldn't do it on the other 364 days. That is an indicator of maybe most of what she's doing is acting and then this is who she really is because she has the ability to do it. That, to me, is the representative of what we allow modern women to do today. Is have uh, the Instagram is their alter ego. It's kind of like who they would want to be. It's who they are when they're talking to themselves in the room and hyping themselves up. All right. Then they go out, have a couple of drinks. Drinks, alcohol will change their ego. It will lower their inhibitions. It will, be, it will be more likely to be an indicator of who she is under the influence. And then they record themselves. You're seeing her real self. In fact, I'm going to tell you, as a mental health expert, white women suffer th from this greatly. White women suffer th from this greatly because in their world, the Caucasian group in America, they have to play a very, very dangerous game of blue pill. OK, they cannot be on the fringe. They will risk losing out on very much family inheritances, land inheritances. They will be losing out on their entire family. So white people in America are the matrix. They have to play a dangerous game of, you know, uh, uh, play office, play job, play good career. And thus they cannot be out of the norm. So a white woman typically has to hide who she is to a greater extent. Or she plunges down the, the hierarchy and she loses available men, the high tier men. So they got to act. They're under the influence of acting the, the most of their life. And then all they need is a couple of drinks. What do they do? I had a couple of drinks. I blacked out. And all of a sudden, that's their excuse for acting like who they really are. They do a couple of lines of coca. They go out and party. Woohoo! They start stripping, dancing on the table. And that's who they really are. <laughs> That's who they are. Now, when they come back out, they're all holier than thou and holding the moral high ground and judging people and shit. All right. But they know what it really is. <laughs> they be acting them most of the time. And what happens is they suffer from mental health issues greatly because they can never be who they are. And they admire black women because black women can be who they are. They can talk they shit and pop their neck. And they can snap their finger and suck their teeth. And white women be like, boy, I admire their courage. <laughs> yeah. 
Black women can be out here thotting and twerking and white women be like, I wish I could really be like that. And they can't. They would lose way too much. Black women lose nothing by do, doing this. Well, they lose a lot, but that's neither here nor there. So they're suffering from not being who they can be. They cannot be that. So they have to act 80, 90, 20, 900, wait, 80, 90, 95% of the time. And then when they get to let their hair down, they get to be who they really are and then have an excuse for it. Oh, I was this and I was drinking and I was this and be a victim. Right. But this is where we're at. This is where we're at. This is human nature. I'm helping the mental health therapists out here make you a little bit more money. All right. Anyway. Yeah, it's repression. It's called repression. They can't be whores and skeezers. They're going to lose a lot. So they repress these ideas. They repress these feelings. They might repress the activities. They might hide it. They might hide it. So then they could be that when they take two drinks. Guys, you can actually give white woman uh, two glasses of water in a shot glass and her real character will come out. And she ain't even touched no alcohol. I've seen it. As a man that has grown up in the suburbs in my formative years, I've seen shit like this. You give her a beer can of near beer or, uh, uh, or some beer that ain't actually beer, and she'll drink it, and it's just beer tasting. It's, uh, what do you call it? It's Old Duels. You give her Old Duels. I think that's fake beer. You give her two, two cans of Old Duels, and she be out here acting crazy. And, <laughs> and she ain't got no alcohol in her system. But because she thinks she has it in there, she has an excuse to act crazy. It's a fact. It's a fact. Her true personality will tip on out the door, and she ain't got no alcohol in there. I've seen shit like this. <laughs> right? You'd be like, wow. I've seen a whole, but yep, Cougar, same thing. It is wild, but that's what we're dealing with. So again, yeah, two, two Zimas, two wine coolers, and she over her, she flipping over the table. All right, she dancing on the table with her flat back pancakes and swinging her hair. She doing her hips in the figure eight. She gone, and you ain't gave her nothing. <laughs> tell me I ain't lying tell me I ain't lying I'm telling you what the, what the truth is man I've seen too much out here <laughs> see too much two ginger ale she gone with a little bit here come two fireballs she douses them boom she doing the figure eight on the table <laughs> alright and then now she blaming everything and her actions on alcohol gotta watch out for them this is how you protect yourself uh, here's a cold approach here that uh, I call I call this a dangerous approach because in the cold approach element, you do have this element and the element is being recorded. Now, of course, this woman has big glasses on and tattoos and we'll look past that for the moment. Okay. Now, this is a guy that is cold approaching her, but she doesn't like him. Remember, men are sending other men out to do this and claiming it's a numbers game, but it's a boost to the ego. It also is an opportunity to embarrass a guy. So she's going to record a guy who she perceives as weak approaching her and disrespecting her, meaning she feels disrespected that he opened her mouth to her, not that he was disrespectful. So now she has to embarrass him for this. This is a big fear for men, especially with women who have access to smartphones. You will be recorded. Let's continue. I'm single. Oh, yeah. you, just, you just walk down the sidewalk and talk to strange people all the time? You just you just talk to strangers all the time, just sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I I said I saw it for them, but I wanted something in my eyes. You have to behave. You have to be. You have to say you compliment, and then you just keep walking. That's all. You have to be polite. Okay. Okay. So I got your compliment. Thank you. All right. Have a Thank nice you. day. Sorry for that. No, you're okay. Yeah, I don't know. You see your body? Wow. You're okay. You're okay. Who don't want to stay with you? <laughs> Everybody. You get to have a Well, thank Sorry. you. It's okay. Thank uh, you. Okay. Have okay. a nice day. Okay. Bye. Oh, I'm single. Okay, uh, yeah, man, this is kind of what I warn about with this approach thing, all right? Because number one, you gave her what she wanted, a look, a glance, attention, compliment, numbers game, right? And I'm saying what you did was committed hopeflation. So now you've risen her ability to be perceive who she is. She already rejecting you before you even opened your mouth, trust me. 
before you even open her mouth. As a matter of fact, there's some men that don't even have to open their mouth and she's already ready to uh, accept him. All right. And then he could talk his way out of it by talking too much. But here's another example of, yeah, man, you guys uh, with this, she said, I already got for him. She gave him a suggestion. Just give me what I want. Leave the rest. Meaning that you gave me the compliment. I thank you. Move along. Now, this is contradictory information from a lot of women that you hear say, no, I want guys to approach me. The problem is it's the type of guy. That's what she's leaving out. But she can't tell you. She can't tell you only these type of guys because we'll humiliate her. Oh, you only want these type of guys. You're shallow. So she has to invite men to talk to her, but she doesn't have to accept all men. She always has the ability to reject. Now, the rejection comes in this form of humiliation, right, where she's going to record him and post him. And yes, was he doing too much? More than likely. I'm not, I'm not saying he was, not, he was in his right mind. Plus, we didn't get to see him. But this is where the crux is. It's the problem. This is the problem going on here with these women here, right? These women that are telling you, all right, what works for one guy doesn't work for the other. Um, yes, if you want to do this, I'm single, but give me the attention and keep it moving. Um, but if the right guy comes along, okay, why didn't he ask for the number? Why don't men approach? Why do, well, because of this. Again, the reason why she cannot tell us the truth is because if she said, you got to be X, Y, and Z for me to consider you, she eliminates 90% of people, um, and she's all, then people will shame her, obviously, but she will eliminate most of her suitors. She will also eliminate potential men that could be one through seven. Okay, so, hey, this guy can be potentially something here. All right, he's not a pure bum. So he could be one through seven here. He could be part of this, a part of this friendship. But this is the problem with it here. Yeah, it's a problem with it. Now, some people will say, well, don't worry about all that. Okay, that's a nice cope. Mm. Who's spamming? Who's spamming? Um, I don't know who's spamming. I can't see. All right, let me see if I can find. Is there a troll? Somebody said there's somebody spamming in the chat. I, I don't see it. But um, let me see here. I don't see it. But yeah, I, I'm of the opinion that you got to be very selective. Uh, you muted, muted him? Okay, thank you. You got to be very selective of how you do this as opposed to random. In fact, let me give you something here as a bit of advice. If you've ever trained for firearms, if you've ever trained for firearms, they will tell you that the firearms that are near semi-automatic to automatic are less accurate, are less accurate than firearms that are built for uh, precise accuracy, which are almost not sem uh, semi-automatic or fully automatic, okay? So firearms that make sure that you say, hey, I need to aim with precision. Maybe a, you know what I mean? You pour the gun power down. You have a musket. You put the bullet in with a magnet, right? You put the bullet in with a magnet. You're like, I got one bullet. You're more likely to be accurate than a fully automatic firearm that's going to go which they call spray and pray. A bolt action firearm is going to be more accurate because you're going to take time to line shit up, all right? And you only got one to three shots as opposed to a fully automatic one where you're going to spray and pray. What guys are teaching men is the spray and pray method. You're teaching men to spray and pray, which is less accurate, which does put you in line for things like this. But because you, are, you don't care about even your reputation, at least the woman, you use spray and pray, and you'll deal with you being recorded. You'll deal with you being humiliated. You'll deal with massive rejection and claim it to be a success. You'll deal with this shit when you're using the spray and pray. But data shows us spray and pray is less accurate, and even the guys that line up and that are using precise methods that aim and shoot have more likely to hit the target consistently than spray and pray. But anyway... Mm. But anyway, <laughs> all right, people don't understand it, but let these, uh, let these ill-informed ninjas keep teaching y'all ninjas to go out there and deal with these type of women. All right, we got one more here. Um, this comes from a man. We're not going to listen to his portion of the video. It comes from a guy um, on Instagram, and uh, people are saying he's the new replacement for Kevin Samuels. All right, ring the bell on that shit. Just... All right, but uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, we're going to listen to her portion of the video where he says, uh, she says, men are lucky 
if she responds to your text messages. Men are lucky if she responds to your text messages. Remember, when you see her in public, she's less likely to have this conversation with you. Okay. So you see her in public. You see her at the restaurant. You see her at school. You'll see her and you'll be like, coach, man, these, these girls don't talk like the girls on the internet. And I just told you, they don't have the need to. But when they get in the car, it's always the car with these women. They will start talking like they want to talk. All right, to their audience. <laughs> here we go right here. Let's see what she says. Somebody says she is pretty. Um, a lot of men will think so, yes. All right, here we go. They do not know how lucky they are when a girl actually likes them. Like, do you know how many unanswered texts I have in my phone from men who I take literal days, if not weeks, to respond to? All right, here we go. Do you know that the fact I'm responding to you the same business day is a privilege? Wow. Wow. All right. Guys will argue me. Coach, these girls in the real world are different. These girls of the real world are different. This is an example of she ain't going to tell you this in the real world. Why would she tell this to a people, a group of people at her college class? Why would she say this to a group of people that are at a party? She wouldn't, but doesn't mean she's not thinking it. Remember, we just went through this. I mean, one after the other. This is an example here, right here. She just acknowledged that there are men she gets messages from, men in the orbit that she does not respond to for several business days. She just said that, if I'm not mistaken. That means they got her number or a means to communicate with her, text, and so forth. But you're in there. You got the number. You got the social media. You got the means to communicate with her. Yeah, she's just putting you off. But those guys cannot compare to the men who she really wants, number one and two, that she takes as the men that she's reject that 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 are rejecting her, the men that she really wants, her type, the men that she's not settling for, these men should know better. <laughs> okay. Mm. These men should know better. It's a privilege to talk to me. There are many, 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 many men that want to smell this punani, that want to see these areolas. Let's go back. So the areola girl, let me see if I can find her. Here she is right here. There's many, many men that want to see these titties. Okay, that's what she's saying. Oh, I'm cute. Watch this. Listen. I'm so cute, though. I'm so cute, though. There's many, many men. There's many men in this line in this grocery store that wants to see these titties. Listen. So me and my sister are trying to find the shortest line in this fucking HGB. Hell nah. Like, who do I got to show my motherfucking titties to? To get to the front of the line. Who? Who? Everybody want to see these titties. Who? But just who do I got to show them to to get to the front of the line? All right? So in her world, again, this doesn't have to be true. In her world, there's many men that want to see these titties. Come on. Let me see these pepperonis. I love pepperonis. You know, she got some nice areolas, too. I know they nice. I want to see them. Let me see them. I want to see them. I got money. All right. Anyway, I love I love a pepperoni. <laughs> All right. But this is a future gordita. All right. But uh, in, in her world, let's listen again. Let's listen again just so you can hear it, gentlemen. Do you not know how lucky they are when a girl actually likes them. Like, do you know how many unanswered texts I have in my phone from men who I take literal days, if not weeks, to respond to? Do you know that the fact I'm responding to you the same business day is a privilege? Wow. I don't think they do. I don't think I don't think they do. I don't think they do. But the funny thing is, she's a part of somebody's rotation. We all are. <laughs> She's a part of somebody else's rotation, a.k.a. the men that she will respond to. She's a part of somebody's rotation. Yeah. <laughs> what a world we live in, guys. But again, this is kind of like the approach thing that we have to understand. Anyway, that is that segment right now. But do me a favor. Hit the like button. 2,900 people watching me on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel. So that means there's 8,000 people watching me for sure. YouTube's hiding the number. All right. But. I'm going to take care of a little bit of business, and then I'm going to get back to the show. I don't want to fall too far behind. Coming up next, 25 minutes of women begging. All right, uh, we're going to do the money, energy, attention, and time analogy. So uh, watch out for this. It's 
All they need is the money. All they need is the money. The main event, Fro, says peace and prosperity to all. Shout out to you, brothers, man. Thank you for being here and being so encouraged to hit that like button to support this message being spread across the internet. You in here with the King of Kings. The King of Kings, yes, indeed. The best entertainment on YouTube. Let me check the chats over here. All right, what's going on? All right, the other channel is tripping. Where are we going here? Shout out to... Did I get Spider? Yes, I did. Francisco. Shout out to Francisco. Where you been, brother? Shout out to Francisco with the co-sponsorship. I'm rich, he says, been ninja watching for a while. Things have been finally going well after 10 years of being given the boot. Gents, coach ain't never lied. He says, coach, you are the man to keep preaching to these cats. Much love. Hit me with the. Okay, daddy. Shout out to you. Thank you, Francisco. I don't know, man, what I don't know, man, what says I'm not promoting club life, but you learn things. He says, when I'm smiling and enjoying myself, I attract women. They hate not being the source of your joy and pain. <laughs> Shout out to you. There's something to be said about that. Uh, when you do have leverage and options, you will find that women do like guys that, you know, um, that are smiling. Right. It's something about that. They do. They do. You, they they um, are more attracted to this. So a lot of guys be mean mugging and shit like this, but you know, certain guys, they want to see you out here having fun and being loose with your life and being spontaneous. These are attractive qualities to women. In fact, you know, women love spontaneous men, but spontaneous men is not a good thing for you because you have to be very diligent and very specific and you have to be, you have to have goals and aspirations. They also like men with goals and aspirations. So, um, but spontaneous nature is going to attract them. Like you're frivolous with your time. You'll waste. You'll make plans. You'll you'll change your plans at the drop of, of a dime. Women do this a lot, right? They like this because it's an advantage to them. Hey, you know what? Let me drop work. Let me drop what I'm doing. Let me drop my goals. Let me drop my direction and let's go let's take a weekend trip. All right. I had one, uh, uh, a woman, she was a an older woman, which older women tend to have, a, sometimes they have access to resources, after they've been divorced and they saved their child support and shit and they started a business. This woman was very uh, influ- affluent. And um, because I have a job that's flexible, she perceives that I can drop what I'm doing or take my work elsewhere. In her world, that's possible. Now, I can take this somewhere else. Like, I can move to another country and do the show. I can move to another time. I can make a plan. But typically, I still plan these things out. In her world, she was like, hey, you know what? I'm already going. I'm going to the Bahamas for a friend's wedding. All right, why don't you come along since you can take your work with you? In her mind, I have the ability to do that. It's probably not the best plan for me. So she's like, and I'm like, when is it? She's like, in two weeks. And I'm like, nah, (laughs) because I haven't planned for something like that. That would be very spontaneous for me. I would have to move things around and plan for it mentally, be able to see how many t- how much I can actually work away from home. Because I can broadcast from anywhere doesn't mean it's going to be efficient and effective, right? Doesn't mean there's not going to be distractions. So I'm planning for things around in my life. But in her world, that's possible. And if it's not going to be done for her, she will lose interest. She will think that she's not important. And then she'll be like, what's, what's, what's wrong? Maybe it's me. You see what I mean? These are examples of spontaneous activity that women do. But I'm going to tell you, women do spontaneous things and then pay for it on the back end, right? Mm. Example, they'll go for the trip, spontaneous trip, and come back and then need to pay their rent. They'll be short on rent the next month. Your rent's due, motherfucker. They'll be short on rent the month they went on a trip, (laughs) right? And this is the spontaneous world they live in. They'll spontaneously spend their money and come back at the sell pussy to get the rest of the rent money. That's what they do. Now, they they have a life where they can afford to do that. I don't have it. Like, I don't have somebody I could go and slang Johnson to to make some money up if I'm short $500. Like, we don't have that. So we don't have this need to be spontaneous. I got to be like, well, I still, and it doesn't matter how much money you make. 
because even if you make money, doesn't you don't know how the money goes out. Like I might save X amount of money for uh, tax reasons, for business savings, to invest in something, to pay off a mortgage of a house that I own that doesn't have a renter. So there's a lot of things that men have to plan around where women don't. They frivolously do these things. And then later on, 10 years down the line, they trying to make up for it. Mm. Uh, that's how they work. You know what I mean? So they like guys that are willing to throw their lives away. But then guys will think, oh, I didn't realize I was leaking like this. And this was costing me. So this is why guys are less spontaneous, <laughs> right? Because we got real shit. Ninja, we got child support expectations to meet. We got real bills out here. We can't get evicted. <laughs> All right, shout out to Kayla. The same woman that told you to be frivolous is the same woman that later on, uh, not frivolous, the same woman that said be spontaneous and live life a little also needs help paying rent at the end of the month. Mm. Like, make it make sense. Your rent's due, motherfucker. Make it make sense. It is what it is. I need a little bit of help. Oh, I'm a little bit short. Oh, man, I'm struggling out here. They stressing out when they return to work. It's a wild life. But you're, they always look for a person to answer this call right here. I'll, I'll ask my guy. I'll ask my sugar daddy. I'll ask my daddy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's crazy. It's real for us. Kayla says emotions are needed when it comes to having a genuine care for the person, but they're not needed when you want to hit that bottom. They're not, no. But they already got the drinks. They drank up all the drink. They flew on the plane. They had the fun. They let their hair down. They took pictures on the pool. They posted that shit on Instagram. So they got the value back in attention. They got the value back in status. Oh, girl, this girl going everywhere. But they don't tell and show that they had to sell a little punani to make that trip work. They didn't have to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> right. They didn't have to ask for their boyfriend and ask for their daddy for the rest of the rent money. They don't. They don't post that part. They don't post that part. They don't post the part where they made a minimum payment to the credit card that they ran up. They don't post that part. They don't post that part. They don't post that part when they, when they do post the, uh, the, the economics and the interest on groceries. They post that part. How do, how do they expect us to feed a family of four? They post that part. Same woman was going on trips spontaneously. <laughs> All right, shout out to Lon. Am I tripping here? Am I tripping? Yeah, no, I'm not tripping. Get him, daddy. I'm telling you the truth, Roof. I'm telling you the truth. Here we go right here. Yeah, they don't post the part when they drop in that neck. They don't post the part when they got to go see Percy Earl. I got money. They don't post the part when they go to go see Percy Earl. They don't post the part when they done racked up 30, 60, 90 days of a non-payment on their credit card. They don't post that part. I got money. All right, anyway. All right, anyway, uh, anyway, man. Hey, am I telling the truth here? I know I am. Shout out to Lance. Did I get Lance? He says, it's my birthday today, coach. Shout out to you. <laughs> he says, and having leverage and options is a priceless gift. You are a national treasure, sir, and I appreciate all that you do. Unfortunately, leverage and options is a position that men don't want to get to. Unless you think you're going to be used. Guys, we're, we're all engaging in usury. Happy birthday to Lance, by the way. Happy B-Day to Lance. Shout out to R.N. Olu. Shout out to you. He says, I haven't donated in a minute. You are the truth and prevent me from being a normie despite all social and societal efforts to the contrary. Keep speaking the message. Men need to hear peace and blessings out here. And if you're new to my show and you think this show is a disgrace, these red pill men... You're losing the battle. All right, you're losing the battle here. We do have a supportive group of men that have been empowered to make the right decisions. But yes, we're all engaged in usury. We're all engaged in usury. And as a matter of fact, our, transi our transactional relationships are about usury. I don't mind usury. As long as we're on page and on par with what we're doing. Are we using each other? Yes, we're using each other. We agree to use each other. But the most deceitful thing is when you think you're in love and you think you're having an emotional connection only to find out you're engaged in usury. Right? That's sad, right? That, that makes you feel bad. That makes you feel like you're stewy. You'll be crying in bed. You ever feel that? You ever get that? 
damn, I'm being used out here. I thought I was in love. Trevor Nader says, Coach, thank you for what you do. If I didn't listen to you almost daily, I would have gone into my simp biology. He says, uh, within me a long time ago, always protect yourself. Martin says, I started consuming RP back in 2014 after watching a six-minute documentary on the Federal Reserve and the history of money, gold and silver. That is the true RP. That is the true RP. Daenerys Tranquillo, Coach Cooking, went out on a couple of dates. She came across as a ladylike, looked her up on her fake book, saw all of her inner thoughts. He says, straight strag. He says, ghosted her, but she still texts me. She still texts me. I call it texting. All right, so yeah, um, you know, women do not share. Again, we always tell you they have to kind of lie to you. We call it a source of manipulation, but we're manipulating them as well, engaging in usury. Uh, but um, she has to act differently to be able to get you in. She can't tell you what she really thinks. Shout out to Loner Stoner. He says, isn't there more to relationship than sex? Isn't there more to relationships than sex? Yeah, absolutely. There's more to relationships than sex, but there's no relationships without sex. So what way do you want it? What way do you want it? In fact, the agreement in monogamous relationships is exclusive sexual partner. So without that caveat, you cannot have a relationship unless it is agreed upon that there will be no sex, which is you're playing with fire. I mean, you're playing Russian roulette at that point. I mean, there's not many relationships that exist between male and females that both parties are very are agreeable that there's no possibility of sex. In fact, you will find that the best friendships between men and women are either have had sex already, they can be friends and they don't want to cross that path or they can be available to each other. They've already had sex and they're like, okay, that shit was off the table. We ain't really into each other. He ain't pursuing, she ain't pursuing. But pursuant to a friendship relationship between men and women that has no sex on the table, you will find that that man, when if he really truly understands that there's no sex going to be possible, he'll least likely stick around. What benefit does he get? So ask the question differently. Is there a possibility of a relationship without sex? That's the real question. Don't try to come to me and say, well, is sex is relationships about sex? Is there more to relationships than sex? What you're trying to do is trying to make that part. But ask the question differently. Is there a, can a relationship be possible without sex? Ask yourself that. Now, here's the last part of it. Here's the last part of it. For men, a man that asked that question, isn't there more to relationships than sex? That's obvious. There's way more than that. But there's no relationship. But let's just say there's one partner that believe he has a sexually exclusive partner, and she asked that. Well, we could have a relationship without the sex, or sex is not that important. Is it okay for him to go get sex from another woman? Is it okay for him to have sex with another woman in the context of the monogamous relationship he exists in? Then I'm going to ask you to ask your question again. Isn't there more to relationships than sex? You're going to find that that person who says that, who believes that they can have a relationship without sex, then the person says, okay, I'm going to go get sex from another woman. She's going to, you're going to find out that that's an important part of her relationship. She's going to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't get sex from another person. And if you do so, I'm going to break up or punish you by divorcing you. Is sex important? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Even if she says it's not that important. Or why is it important? Okay, I'm going to go get sex from another woman. It becomes important overnight. Like at that moment, it becomes really important. Wait a minute. Hold up. I don't agree to that. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Shout out to Kalen Ferguson. He brought that point to our platform. Now we argue that point. She's going to immediately buck as to with the importance of the sex in the relationship. Ask the question again. Isn't there more... The, 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 he says, isn't there more to a relationship than sex? There's no relationship without the sex. <laughs> it's done. You can fool yourself. You can make these other things important, but the minute you withdraw sex from it, there's really no relationship. You have a, you have a, I don't know, you're supporting the woman? I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, without that. Now, can you coexist after a period of time, like say, for instance, you're together for 12 years. Yes. 
You can be together still out of obligation, out of support, out of loyalty. And thus, you're going to find out one or more of those people are having sex with someone else. Or he's jerking off every night before he goes to sleep. Or she touching herself. I touch myself. Like they, that ship is sailed and they stay together out of another reason. They might acknowledge that everybody has another sexual partner and they just look the other way. All right, so that exists. But <laughs> uh, anyway, what do we got? And last one, shout out to the Sukhoi. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Sukhoi Gaming Channel. That is a co-sponsorship. He says, yo, coach, your book, The Free Agent Lifestyle, got delivered last Friday. I finished it same day. was a great read and aligns perfectly with how I want to live my life at age 27. Free agent lifestyle for life. 100%. Thank you, man, for enjoying the book. Thank you for realizing, again, one of the benefits of the space where whether people agree with it or not, it gives men an option. It gives men an option to not be able to play the matrix game that people want to play, which is to me a game of control, right? But of course I believe there's benefits. I'm, I'm not anti-marriage. Um, I'm anti-marital law. I'm anti-divorce. I'm anti what happens after men get divorced. I'm anti that before a true stable society to be able to build and thrive. You need two parent households, communities and such. And that's not an option for every man. In fact, if it, not, if it is not an option to you, they will ridicule you in every way, just similar to how women are ridiculed when they want to be whores. It's the same thing. So when men choose to not have this path and we now have the freedom to choose otherwise, then as a result, men can have an option, something to look forward to. Instead of being considered a failure for not being monogamous, for not marrying, for not having a girlfriend, Right. It gives you an option and thus men can find happiness in this, either if they pursue this forever or they pursue this for a period of time. It gives men options and. There's nothing like options for men. All right. Are we ready for this 25 minutes of women begging? I'm rich, man. All right. Wait a minute. 25 minutes of women begging. Who thinks it'll just be 25 minutes? All right. All right. What are we doing here? And that's you. All right. Um, this is going to be interesting here. We have. I looked at it as I have an ATM between my legs and I just I'm just using it. Oh. All I got to do is put my card in. Flip them in. And that's it. And put the pin number. And wow. Boom. Money just comes right up. Damn. All right. So uh, here we go right here. 25 minutes of women begging here for some stuff right here. Your third leg was just phenomenal. Oh, wow. What did you say, ma'am? Your third leg was just phenomenal. Damn, Mrs. Third Leg Greg. All right, okay, Mr. Third Leg Greg in the building. Okay, this is a comedy sketch, also, also called a skit by Adam W. This is a guy who makes skits about relationships. Those are probably his most popular skits, and we call them normie skits. This is normie humor. Normie humor tends to be, oh, shucks, knee slapper, all right, stuff that, it's mostly surrounded by things that people don't want to talk about. So they got to make a joke out of it. Right. And so instead of confronting it head on, it's a passive aggressive attempt to actually show that there's usury in relationships and stuff like this. So people laugh at it. It might have some pain for the man. He get kicked in the ball or something like that. Right. Or he perceives that the woman is, you know, the woman will yell at him to wash the dishes and then he'll fly in the kitchen and the pans will go. So this is passive aggressive attempt to talk about, knowledge and relationships and to have everybody express it in the comment section oh well it's just a joke it's just a skit but it actually attacks a real truth in relationships right as opposed to kevin samuels hitting it straight on all right this is a skit is a passive aggressive way to deal with an issue in a relationship and this issue is money energy attention and time this is a situation that i talked about last week or so where i said uh, men that are in relationships you actually spend a lot more money to get less. In fact, go through a weekend where you have $1,500 on Friday. By the time Sunday night comes, you have $300. Okay? So, in essence, you're paying for the relationship to keep going. All right, this skit is going to 
uh, highlight that. Let me play the skit. Hey, babe, can I have mind to do my nails? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, also my hair. Oh, oh also my lashes. Ran by your credit and you are approved for a 15% interest rate loan. Here you go. So I'm going to need a face <laughs> All right. And so uh, there you go right there. Shout out to Adam W. Not, I'm not criticizing his skit. His, I like his skit. I like his skit. But see, it's a normie. It's a normie way to approach the idea that you're paying for women, right? I don't pay. But if you've ever been in a relationship, especially a cohabitation and it's certainly a marriage, that's how it is. All right. That's how it is. I mean, these things will come up. Um, but guys will still say, I don't pay, but I tell you free women cost the most. All right. She doesn't sell pussy directly. She sells it indirectly to him. All right. That's what it is. All right. So that's what people can constitute a relationship and everybody's in the comment section. There's 275,000 likes, which means that it's, this has been seen well over a million times. All right. Probably in the neighborhood of 5 million views. All right. Or 2.5 million views for certain based on the uh, likes. And of course the comments, ha 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 ha. Legend has it, he's still giving her money. All right, right here, yeah, okay. What's real is that they don't give a F if it ruins us, and that's the truth. Um, and there's some people here that took it, like here, women with the coffee or teacup. It's time to sell your body parts. So, again, this is what people see. Normie humor attacking an issue that is real, that is real for a lot of men, but then passing, oh, it's just, it's not really like that. It's just, it's just comedy. It's just a joke. But that's real. If you've ever been married, you've been in this situation where you're looking at your bank account like, God ah, dang. And she's like, why aren't you spontaneous? Why don't you do this? And now you have a group of women that are saying, nah, you got to pay me directly for this activity. I got hair. Wait, where, let me get Zoe. Zoe says. Hair, makeup, esthetician, facials, vagina waxing, everything. That is all independence. Um, if you fail in this endeavor, you will find out your relationship is done. If you don't keep this up, the relationship is over. In fact, you will be divorced if you're in a marriage. You'll be divorced for everything you gave. Everything you gave will be a gift, and then she'll divorce you for the alimony and child support and the house and shit like this. So this is a reality. This is a reality. They see that, that, that that's kind of what your job is. And again, I don't mind if this is the arrangement. If this is the arrangement, then I can prepare for this. But a lot of guys think that they have a loving woman and all you have is a dependopotamus. You think you have a relationship, but you got a dependopotamus. In fact, she's a depreciating asset if you want to get down to red pill talking points. As the shit goes on, she depreciates over time and you're paying more for less. You're paying more for less and she still will negotiate sex with you. You might not even be interested in sex with her by the time you feel out that you're out here being a, a supporter of a dependopotamus. And she's in, the, she's in usury right here. But, of course, people, oh, it's just a skit. It's a joke. And, by the way, I would fold this little spinner up, uh, and, but I would have to take out her hair extensions before, so and that's a little bit too much hair. But uh, you find out that everything around you, yeah. Um, and then, of course, you don't keep this up, you lose the girl. If you don't keep this up, you lose this girl. Everybody knows this. There's very few ride or dies out here. All right. Uh, 25 minutes of women begging here. I have it on the clock. Here's a woman here. Let's go ahead and show you right here. I'll be honest, y'all. I don't want a job. I don't even want a job. Oh, MG. Oh, please, somebody. I don't want a job. I don't want to work. Just give me the money. Oh, MG. But can I be honest, y'all? I don't want a job. I don't even want a job. Oh, MG. Oh, please, somebody. I don't want a job. I don't want to work. Oh, man, Jesus. Why do I have to work? I am sexy. I am sexy. Of course. It's a skit. This is not true. She just joking. This is sarcasm. Mm. Now, I feel the same way. I don't want a job either. <laughs> All right. Actually, I don't got no job. 
All right. I don't got no job, but I don't want a job either. All right. I'm sitting here like this myself, ladies. Why do I have to work? I am sexy. I am sexy. All right. But of course, this is not just a skit. This is not just sarcasm or humor. This is the way of Gen Z. They try to figure out a way to get through this and still get what they want out here like Zoe. Hair, makeup, esthetician, facials, vagina waxing, everything. That is all independent. Yeah, man, but of course, this kind of feminism backfiring. Gen Z women aren't falling for this. They sitting up here. Gen Z women are like, man, what in the world? Who, who fought for these rights? All right, who fought for these rights out here? We had it easy out here, man, all this hard-ass work. All right, you know already Gen Z's quiet quitting and millennials, young millennials, zennials, they're sitting up here like, what the hell are we doing? This is women's rights? Hell no. All right, I want a soft life. I want a soft life. All right, we got it right here. Here, more women begging. Uh, this is a woman here. Apparently, I'm not sure. Again, this could be skits, but we just use it here. Apparently, this is a guy who um, he doesn't pay for Punani. He's a Chad, or we call him a Tyrone. He's muscular. Guys, just because you're Chad and Tyrone doesn't mean you're winning out here. All right, so uh, we have to acknowledge this. And uh, let's play the video and see what's going on. This is from COVID, obviously, because they have masks, masks on. I'm not, I just said I'm not paying for it. I just spent $300. Right. You can pay yeah, for it. Yeah, bitch, because okay. you actually retarded. Because okay. okay. you actually retarded. Okay. You pay, pay for, for it. it. I'm not paying for shit, bitch. You are paying for it. Come on, we out there. No, we're not. Pay Let's go. We're not. Let's go. You're really not about to do nothing. So, and then you got people reporting. Oh, like, shit. pay for the shit. I'm not paying for nothing. I just, I just spent $300. I don't give a fuck. You fuck me every night. Oh, well, I don't give a fuck. I don't, we don't have to fuck. Okay, there's a... Here, okay, there's well, I don't give a fuck. Come on. Oh, well, pay for the shit. Like, you got me in line. Yeah, I'm not going to pay for it. Okay, you are going to pay for it. Dumbass bitch. Oh man! Oh man! Hey, I, hey! My goodness! I mean, <laughs> again, twenty-five minutes of women begging. I don't know what they were buying. I could not see it, but as you can see, she ended up saying, "I'm selling you pussy," right? Who didn't hear that? Who didn't hear that? Somebody said it's prostitution for real. Who didn't hear that? She said, hey, I'm effing you every day. And I, this is a guy that probably thinks he's big and muscular. I'll be hitting it. I'll be blowing her back out. She only attached to mine. I'm hitting that bottom. She's mine. All of this stuff. She ended up saying, again, how they look at the transaction of relationships is that the sex is transactional. He thought he had a girl. And he said, I paid $300 earlier today. I'm not paying for this. This is, to me, not a skit because he went and then tried to turk her ass and give it a truck. Brothers, she said, I'm screwing you every day. Therefore, this is your duty. You're supposed to do this. Now, she has a horrible attitude, but of course, she's a straggle. She's a straggle. But there she had. She had what you perceive as the ultimate male based on just, just, being, just being general here. He's tall muscular he built like an office alignment and he definitely was doing some office some aligners where he got he got that neck and she probably wetter than the niagara falls she probably loved that shit all right but he called her all kind of stuff when he realized what the relationship was she was engaging in usury she was remember when i said this remember when i said this a lot of guys don't know this all right when you find out again when you remove the source whatever the source is in this case, this guy, his source is the resource, which would be financial. If he removes this source, the relationship is over. If he acknowledges that this is what the relationship is about, she could potentially leave just on that. What? You consider me a what? I'm not like that. I'm not like those whores. Okay? I'm not like a prostitute. But indeed, this is a, this is a usury relationship. Let's go back. Let's go back. I got to actually frame the other one because I don't want to show the alleged violence that happened or that ensued here, whether he beat her up. But they definitely are throwing fisticuffs in here, and the security had to be here, and he's definitely enraged, and he's Hulk smashing. Not disrespectful. Okay. All right. And so in, in this, he found out after spending $300 here, 
They're in Marshalls or Ross. She wanted him to spend another 58 bucks. He said, I'm putting it into it. Guess what happened? You have to because I'm selling you this punani. All right, that's what she said. Am I lying? I looked at it as I have an ATM between my legs and I just, I'm just using it. All I got to do is <laughs> put my card in and that's it. And put the pin number and boom, money just comes right out. When you find out that that's what she's there for, and by the way, you've continued this relationship, she feels the need that she can beg or you're obligated to. Again, I don't mind this. Yes. I don't mind this if this is the agreement, by the way. If this is the agreement, I don't mind it. But some people will could say say that the this agreement constitutes direct prostitution. Right? They'll say that. But you don't realize that's what you've been engaging in yourself. You've been engaging. If you're married, you're that's what you're engaging in. But it's legal. It's a legal form of prostitution. It's legal. All right. All right, let's continue here. This is a woman, 25 minutes of women begging here. When you are bro okay, uh, I think I played this video here. I'm only just gonna play a little bit of it. Hey, I'm really upset because literally this man just brought me on a date, and he's not paying for anything. Sir, we gonna have to go to police, sir. Oh my God, they about to go to police on me right now. You was supposed to be paying for this, and you're mad because I'm not what? You're not sucking OD. What do you mean? This is a date, sir. No, for, I'm not paying for nothing sir, if you ain't sucking OD. Okay, I can give you my ID and I can come back tomorrow and pay for everything. I don't know what this nigga. I'm sorry. No, we have a policy here. Okay, he brought me on a thing. Yeah. Okay. Put your hand down. I put your, uh, put your hand man. down. Man. Put your hand down. Well, listen. Put your hand down. I you quit talking to me. No. Quit talking to me because. Man, boy, this woman is bad. Guys, there's people out here. Um, I hate to say it. Uh, we do need finishing school for women. Uh, whoever's training and raising these modern women out here and men and men, whoever's raising these people, you guys need to go to finishing school. We do need to bring back what people are supposed to do in terms of etiquette and protocol. And not only that, decorum in our society. All right. And there's a group of people that are still engaging in this. So that it's to prevent this type of meltdown and the expectations out here. Well, you're a man and you're supposed to. This is called uh, people still do cotillion. All right, Cotillion is training people how to conduct themselves in a public setting, maybe mostly in dance. And a lot of young kids are still doing Cotillion. Some women are still doing finishing school. What you're finding is that we need to teach people, specifically young adults, how to engage in behavior and not in and anticipate these things. Broke bitch dating. Oh, I don't have my wallet. I'll come back tomorrow. She lying. She ain't coming back tomorrow for nothing. She's disrespectful. Now she's revealed that she was engaging in usury. She's calling him the N-word. And then she's actually being attacking the person that she's trying to get to help her. Put your hand down and stuff like this, right? So, you know, we don't have people raising young men and women to be what we need them to be in society. We have these people saying, I can engage in thottery and whorism and slut, uh, slut making. And then all of a sudden, people are looking for love and they're engaging in usury at the end. Well, I settled for my friend and I, I, I didn't marry my type. And, uh, you know, I fell in love after all. Happily ever after. Shit like this. Okay. But the manners are actually a disgrace. This is a disgrace. And her behavior is absolutely a disgrace as well. And she's a low life. You can tell she's a low life. She's wearing the symbols of prostitution on her eyeballs or her eyelids. So this is what people are engaging in out here. But of course, she's in the position of begging and she didn't bring her own wallet. Why didn't you bring your wallet? Okay, now you want to run out of the restaurant um, and not pay. But of course, I always tell you uh, dating is prostitution. Dating stems from prostitution. And that's what you're seeing out here. Why, why take a woman for the men? He's dead ass wrong for not paying in my position. Because again, paying is power, meaning that you can avoid this bullshit uh, wherever restaurant they're in, in this skit, you can pay your way out of this. Meaning you don't have to pay her, but the minute this bitch start acting up, you can pay your way out of this problem and walk out, right? So some guys think paying is weakness, but paying is power. Because the minute she reveals who she is, all right, which is a low life, which you should have known this before you engaged in this. She's a low life, but I can pay my way out of this in hearing her mouth. Yeah, it might have cost me 50 to 60 bucks, but you probably should have known you was wasting your time and money anyway. But you want to prove something to yourself by getting free puss. Uh, you're a moron. You're a jackass as much as she's a jackass. 
Ninja, just pay the money. Here, 50, 60, 70 bucks. I don't have to hear from this woman ever again. That's power. But because you a broke ninja, you think paying is weakness. Man, okay, she finessed you. Pay your way. I don't have to hear from this woman again. But by the way, she a finesser anyway. Look at this straggle. You knew what it was. You knew you deal with straggles anyway. So you tried to go get some cheap date and some cheap punani. And now you ended up with a strag, untrained, filthy straggle. That's what you ended up with. Mm-hmm. Now just go pay the $80 and walk off and leave her ass there. It's 80 bucks. But of course, you don't have your priorities straight. So this 80 bucks is life or limb. Or right, I don't want to give her power at the 80 bucks. Give her the goddamn money. You don't even have to give it to her. Here, restaurant, can, can take this filthy bitch somewhere else. That's what you can say. That would be my attitude. Not saying she's a B word. That would be my attitude. All right, all right, whatever, whatever. Take this filthy bra. <laughs> right? And walk off. Just dip. Just pay your bill. Pay your tab. All right, let her pay her tab. I ain't got nothing to do with this. I pay my money. I'm out of here. But you're dealing with fat, low-class individuals calling it a preference, and then you get in these binds. All right, but that's neither here nor there. Let's go to here. 25 minutes of women begging. All right, here we go right here. This is probably going to be, oh, it's an advert. God dang it. All right, hold on for a second. I got to turn the volume down. That's what happens when I share a world star video. All right, but anyway, stop sending me world star videos. Okay, here we go right here. All right, here we go right here. We got a blue cat, blue cast, blue class gentleman here it says right here he don't want to pay money he don't want to pay he don't want to pay they're at walmart all right so that's already a clear sign of about this about to go left okay are you gonna pay for these groceries a week i don't have enough money i don't have no pretty bad i have to feed my one-year-old and you telling me so you can date me but you can't pay for this stuff that's what you're telling me is that what you're telling me See, that's how these guys do, baby. They take you out on dates and don't want to pay for your stuff. And then he know I got a one-year-old b- a baby. You don't even want to buy my baby clothes. <laughs> that's how guys do nowadays. They just date you. <laughs> all right. I don't see what the problem is here. This is interesting. First of all, why are you with a woman you're dating at Walmart? Um, and then the other girl was agreeing, yep. And that young girl, unfortunately... She's an untrained individual. She's too young to think like this. All right. She's too young to think like this and for these women to be in these positions out here. All right. So um, he's being humiliated publicly, which is a tactic that an untrained straggle will use. A beggar, a panhandler, use this opportunity to embarrass, record him, and, and all of these things. All right. This is what low class individuals do, but you ninjas will call these women oppressors because they're thick. All right, you will stay with your race of women because you don't want to go to higher class individuals, not saying that they're higher class because of race. Uh, And you will continue to breed with these women. Obviously, she has a one-year-old. That wasn't a red flag. Mm. Nah, but you wanted some free punani. And look at what you get, humiliation. All right, so this is what you get. $472. Okay, are you going to be paying today? How are you paying? Yeah, yeah, this how it is. Guys be wearing the hottest shoes. Thank you. Two and three hundred dollar worth of shoes and don't even want to pay for the stuff. I hate to pay for it, yeah, because I've been dating this guy for, for for about maybe two to three days. And baby, this this how they do. Now this this has to be a skit. I think he's like, first of all, again, this kind of let's just say this is a skit because he's like, man, I ain't got no time for this stuff. Uh, because she's saying he don't she she's been dating him for two or three days. I don't know how you go to Walmart shopping after two to three days, but hey, some ninjas will use this time to not pay money, right? This is a guy, let's just say, this is a guy that says I got sex for free, meaning that I didn't have to pay with money, right? But you're paying with time, you're going shopping with her, but you will claim that you're not paying. This is paying, and now you're paying with humiliation right here. Um, and uh, let's continue here. I don't get, I don't get this one. But I just went ahead. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm probably gonna break up with him though, baby, because I ain't got time. Look at him. He can spend two, three hundred dollars on some Nikes, but he ain't want to hit me pay for my baby stuff. So, you know what? I don't have time. I'm just going to go ahead and cut him off. As soon as we get out here, I ain't going to cut no show at Walmart. Yeah. Matter of fact, you don't even have to push the basket. I can push the basket. I don't need you to push the basket no more. 
That's right. Put them hands in them pockets. <laughs> Jesus. Because God don't like it. You couldn't pay for my baby stuff at his school, and he only one years old. Oh, my. You need to find your way back home. I hope you got a cigarette. Find your way home. Yeah, I'm going to leave him here. I'm going to leave him here. I'm going to leave him right here, baby. Again. Let me just go ahead and go. Because I see how these see you. Let me just go ahead and go. Leave you right here at the store. Uh, yeah, well, she's going to be getting piped down. He's going to hit that again. This is just nothing but uh, straggle flirtation here. But, of course, ninjas are down bad. Humiliation is a big part of this. Um, there are women that will engage in humiliation because they know you're getting access to her for free and she's not getting nothing back. All right, you're a utility. So she has to make up a reason as to why she's dealing with you, which is I get to humiliate you. All right, and so this is what happens when you have to argue with the woman and make a point is because you're giving her leverage. You don't have the leverage. All right, a guy with leverage would not put himself in this situation here. Uh, but there are some down bad guys that, don't mind being humiliated, whether it's legit or a skit. Okay, uh, what else do we have here? Do we have two more in here? Two more, uh, two more women begging here. This will be a hardcore one. Um, let me see here. This will be a. This is going to be a tough one here. Let me see if this actually flies. Let's go ahead and play the video. New thing that kids are doing to make money, right? Basically, on their car, they get like paint markers and they write girls trip. They put their Venmo and they're at like buy us a drink, bachelorette party. There's this guy that does it. So he writes all this like girls trip stuff and he'll drive around. No and he way. said he makes more money doing this shit than working like a full time job. Whoa. Because you are just sending money to People the Venmo. People do it and they drive through rich neighborhoods. Whoa. Like areas. They're like, wow. leave their, like car parked at like a downtown area. That's genius. Does he put like on a wig and like a sad so like <laughs> that's you know. what i wonder like his windows must be tinted or something uh, and then other people do like just married venomous and what are they driving doesn't matter just huh. any car yeah there's a trend right now like people go on bachelorettes and they'll write the venmo and be like buy us a drink whatever now people are taking advantage of it and they're gonna ruin it for like people that were like wholesome about it and they were getting a little bit of like money for their trip now nobody's gonna Crazy. send anything <laughs> because this person ruined it but it is Brilliant. There's people that quit their jobs because they said they're yeah. making more. There's this new thing that kids are doing to make money, right? Basically, on their car, they get like paint markers and they write girls. All right, let me stop it right here and give you a anecdotal story. Um, I've seen this happen and I have been targeted for this such activity. And uh, one day I'm going to tell you this is probably maybe about two, three months ago. I was driving in Las Vegas on a certain freeway. People were traveling, right? from Southern California across through Las Vegas and maybe to Utah. So people are coming in. Now I drive this freeway every now and then to get places. Um, I was recently targeted of this uh, going to Bass Pro Shop. And this isn't the first time I've seen this done quite a bit where a woman will say, just turned 18, just turned 21. I'm having a party. It's my birthday. Bachelor just married. Bachelorette party. And they'll put their Venmo. Now, I was on the freeway and I got off an exit. I was headed to Bass Pro Shop, all right, to go get me some uh, guns and ammunition, firearms. Now, as I'm, as I'm in a turning lane, one of these little cars, just like this was just like this. All right. On the side in the back, they had all of this marker and there was a woman in the back waving at me like this. She was waving at me. Hi, like this. She's waving at me now next to it on her window was scribbled like this. Okay. Now, they ended up going to the Bass Pro Shop parking, and then eventually I went to go get some pickup, take up, take out, and they were there. Now, the woman was ugly. I ended up seeing them in the Bass Pro Shop. There were two men and two women. The two women were in the back. They were waving at people. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, wow. Now, when they do this, I've seen other people do this as well, where they'll stop and wave at people in traffic, wave at men, and hopefully, oh, here, oh, it's your 18th birthday, it's your 21st birthday, and people will send them money. Yes, that's what they're trying to do. Now, I automatically knew because women don't wave at me. Sometimes if I'm in my Porsche, they'll wave at me. <laughs> they'll stop me and they'll say how fine I am. That's happened plenty of times. It's interesting. This actually makes it so, you know, uh, when I was driving a BMW or a Honda Civic, Ford Explorer, no woman ever said that I was fine. All right, but when I'm driving around in Newport Beach in Las Vegas in the Porsche, women are rolling down their windows. It doesn't happen often, but it happens enough for me to go, man, women ain't shit. All right, I don't jump for joy when this happens. I think this is the disgraceful behavior. All right, but I've seen it. It's happened.
just as this has happened. This is a tactic and a ploy to prey on men. And now they're saying men are doing this. Now they're saying men are doing this. Here's my teaching point. Gentlemen, do not send any money. I don't care if it's a broad waving at you. I don't care who it is. Do not send money. Let me tell you, the two women that were doing this in this car had two men in the front driver's seat. That money is going to go to those guys. I ended up seeing them at another restaurant locally that was in walking distance from the Bass Pro Shop. They were going to eat off of the money that you sent them. So please, guys, please. Protect yourself from this type of thing. All right, please protect yourself. I'm doing this as a way for you to understand. Some men are doing this. Some women are using this to beg, and they are saying people are making that amount of money. Somebody said, I'm guilty. Never do this. That, guys, only if you're going to get your whistle wet do I, do I say, go ahead. All right, if you're getting nothing, even just dating to me is a disgrace today. For women that are just, oh, aren't you going to pay? And, and they intend to give you nothing. I think this is disgraceful. This is disgraceful. But I, yeah, somebody says, I have a QR code. Somebody said, I'm guilty. Please do not do this. This is a disgrace. All right, these people are scamming you. And they're tr- paying their way. Last couple. Let me see here. How many more do I got here? On Has it been 25 minutes? All right, I got some more here. I got a lot of more. Hold on for a second. Is this just that? Okay, boy, I got so many here. It's going to be 40 minutes of women begging. All right, here we go right here. Rice gum. Who remembers rice gum? I featured rice gum on my channel maybe two years ago uh, where rice gum had a girlfriend. Uh, rice gum. Let me pull up rice gum. He is a streamer. He's been around for quite a while. Uh, this is. This is rice gum right here. And he's a streamer. He's been around for quite a long time. Well, the reason why I talked about rice gum is that he, at one point, was a famous streamer, and probably still is, and he had this girlfriend right here, this blonde girlfriend. This is not his current girlfriend. She's now an ex-girlfriend. Well, he had a very clever tactic as to prevent her from capitalizing on his fame via relationship. He said to her that if you want to be in a relationship with me, you got to give me half of all of or all of your money if you capitalize on our relationship okay so this is very very clever basically he's saying if you parlay my audience to make money on twitch only fans or whatever you're gonna do instagram you must give me that money that's my money that's my money You wouldn't be able to do this without being in a relationship with me. Now, no matter what is what you believe of him, that is a great move because a lot of guys will overlook that. So he then eliminated the potential to get used by saying, hey, and this is great. Hey, look, you're going to be in a relationship with me. I got the leverage and options. You're not going to get with me and say you love me. Then capitalize off my audience and my simps in my audience and then run off with the bag. All right, so that is smart. Gotta get my bag and run. (laughs) Yeah, flee with the lottery. Possibly they spotted me. And so he wanted to have a contract with her. Then he he probably broke up with her. I think she might have agreed to it, but I think she said, no, I don't, don't, yeah, I want to do that. But he said, you ain't about to get no free clout off of me. So that was fantastic. That's a fantastic maneuver. And that is what, that's how guys should be operating. Now, the guy probably is not the the symbol of masculinity, but that's a smart-ass move. That's a smart-ass move. He said, that's my money. You benefit from me. I'm the king. I'm the prize. Yeah, you might be cute and whatnot, but shit, I can get another one of you. We're going to talk about that in the next subject matter. So that was rice gum. Now, this is rice gum apparently in a situation where he goes to a party. Now, remember when I tell you guys, a lot of you guys don't know this, but in these situations here, what I tell you, man, in today's modern world, you're finding that a lot of women are doing this even in your social element. Now, apparently this is supposed to be live streamed and he's at a party. I don't know where it is. Maybe it's in Vegas. Rice gum is, I think he has the backpack on. He encounters a group of ladies, not on the street corner, but uh, he, he, he encounters them. What do you think is going to happen here? 
I don't think these women are are workers. These, but you guys know about sex work right here. Or sex work is real work. Listen to this exchange, and then you're gonna see what's happening in the spectrum. These are girls that ninjas would be cold approaching for dates. Let's play the video. What's like the pricing and stuff? What's like the pricing and stuff? What's like the pricing and stuff? I'm gonna get back. Yeah, I'm gonna come back. He's single. I'm not single. I'm sorry. She said 1500. 1500? Why are you so loud? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Seriously? Yeah. I have to come out. It was. It was 1500. All right. So what do you see here? This is not a brothel. This is a party. We talk about this on Locals, CoachGregAdamsLocals.com. We talk about this, that this is becoming Gen Z's norm. Are all women doing this? No, but I'm going to say 20 to 25% for certain. They found a way to monetize themselves in a way that, yes, they'll have little boyfriends. Yes, they'll go to parties. They're not at a nightclub. They're not at a strip club. And they'll find a way to monetize the Sims. They'll find a way to monetize sex selling themselves in ways that in our previous generation would be not in the open. This is the spectrum. Okay, this is the spectrum. And so what you're seeing is even at nightclubs, women are out here to monetize. You think they're free. They might be free to a select group of men. That's the argument. Well, these guys don't have to pay. It don't matter. That's only a select few. Yeah, she might have even a boyfriend. She might be a lesbian. I've known lesbians to still do this on the side. Okay, so everybody saw that. When I start selling pussy, I don't want to hear it. So a lot of guys will deny this happening. This is happening, <laughs> right? They'll deny it. And I'm telling you, this is Gen Z's new norm to where the majority of them have no problem doing this, right? Because they need, they're expensive, right? They need their things. They need their Botox. They need to be flied out. And when they fly out, they do this. A lot of guys are going to deny this. You saw this live and in action. Live and in action. All right, so there's no coping here at all. So this guy asked, he asked her directly what it is. And uh, these are girls all dressed up and glammed up. They got their booties out, cheeks. You think these are girls that are here to get male attention. They got male attention, bro. They got male attention on a gram, on social, uh, Snapchat, Instagram, OnlyFans. They got, they got plenty of male attention. In fact, let's go back. Just a reference, uh, reference these women here. Okay, they got it. There's, there's no problem. They got number one through seven and more and more, if you will. So they're going, yeah. Okay, this woman here, right here. Yeah, man. Don't, don't you know it's an honor? It's a privilege. Don't you know? You see what I mean? And so he went straight for the gusto here. He knew what was up. He read the room. He read the room. All right. Yep. These girls are mahi mahi. Mahi mahi. Now, in this situation here, unfortunately for a lot of guys, let's go back. These guys aren't getting humiliated. All right. These guys right here. If he, let's just say he took the deal. He don't have to deal with this. 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 He going straight in. All right, these guys paid 300, 400, 500. He also doesn't have to deal with this. See this? Now, people were like, that's way too much. In my opinion, I agree. All right, there ain't no way that I'm parting ways with 1,500 bucks. There's no way. But you part way with this money in one way or another anyway. And some women are realizing it. Uh, Rice gum went straight in. And by the way, look at the, look at the party here. Look at the party. Let's just say here. They're doing this out in the open, bro. Now, somebody's going to say it's illegal. Same guy smoking illegal marijuana. Put your moral compass down. Put your moral compass down. I'm not promoting this. I'm not suggesting you're doing this. What I'm telling you is you're doing it no matter what. Okay, you're doing it no matter what. All right, you can keep arguing that you ain't. But look, you're doing it no matter what. All right, scammed. You're doing it no matter what. Humiliation, arguing. You're doing it no matter what. Right here. Marriage. It's, 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 it's how you're going to do it. Now, you, could, you could do it 
however you want to do it. But look, this is a regular setting. We got people here. It looks like a party. This is not a brothel. And she has no shame. In fact, the only shame she experienced is the fact that he yelled it out too loud. Watch this. She got no shame, bro. Watch this. Here it is. And look at the guy right here. You know he had to pay. You know he paid the 1500 <laughs> This guy right here, he got no game. There ain't no way she going to fuck him for free. But because of sexual empowerment of women, she finds a way to fuck him. Now, not all women are doing this. But there are some women that go, I'll make it worth your while. She'll do it. She'll do it. Before, women wouldn't do it. They'd be like, nah. But today's Gen Z, they will do it. Not all of them. Not all of them. Yeah, but they will find a way. When I start selling pussy, I don't want to hear it. Right? Let me show you. The only shame that she felt was when she whispered. And by the way, this guy's, his social awareness is horrible. <laughs> and Ross, his social intelligence is disgraceful. This guy right here. And so dudes will be out here trying to shame the hoes. Guys, I'm, ain't no shame no more. There is no more shame. But she basically said, she said a price that's way too high to see if they would get it. And of course, she wouldn't negotiate because she got bills to pay. But this ninja right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the that that right there. That's the reality. That's the reality that ninjas is in right here. All right. And so he said, I'm not single. 1500 Yeah. He got caught. She like ninja. Why are you so loud? Look, why are you so loud? Why are you so loud? But here's the reality. She starts to look around, see who where the judgment is, and that's the only shame. And the reality is, all of these women over here, that's what they doing. Now, some of y'all need to apologize for me. <laughs> he said the student discount. All right. But some of y'all need to apologize. I'm showing you so many things here, not promoting it, not telling you what to do. But when I say the woman is monetized directly today, the woman is monetized. For kill all the noise, none of these people are ever going to be arrested. Kill all the noise about illegal. I I'm surprised at the amount of ninjas that want to scream illegal. Knowing full and damn well, none of them are going to get arrested. That's number one. Number two, you engage in so many illegal activities. I don't know what you're talking about. Y'all need to just be drunk and driving. But all of a sudden, you want to bring your sense of morality over here. Hey, I wish we could come back and kill the Jezebel and bring back a sense of morality. It's not coming anytime soon. This is what we got. But I've been telling you, there it is right there in the open. And no, it's not a skit. By the way, by the way, this is all the same. It's just, it doesn't mean directly to the, between the legs. This is the same thing. Morality's gone. You have people now acknowledging that men and women are engaging in this type of thievery and deception. You also have this type of humiliation where you refuse to pay and your way around it is to argue and expose. What about this? He needs to pay for the date. He broke. All right, what about this type of humiliation here? So we co-sign this as legal. You co-sign this as moral. You don't want to directly talk about it. We don't want to admit that he's paying. But now, this is how far it's gone. This is how far it's gone. This is where we are. <laughs> 25 minutes of women begging. Let's do two more. And then we'll get uh, three more. Goodness, I'm sorry. I apologize. It's more like 45 minutes of women, women begging. Uh, we got this skit right here. It's not a skit. This looks like a podcast interview. And it says, send money or leave me alone. Send money or leave me alone. Here we go. Any nigga who wants to fuck with me is paying in a sense. Like, I, I, you got two all dates. All right. You got two dates before I start asking for money. That's it. Two dates? Two dates. Day two, I'm like, all right. 
How much do you ask for? It, I don't I don't go crazy. It depends on the guy. Like if he's kind of ugly, oh. I'm gonna ask for a lot. Maybe, okay, so if I seem to get how much how much is that? <laughs> <laughs> he I'll be like, I have to go a little low with him. Like I'll be like, oh, like my tire is fucked up. Like I'm fucked up. Can I get five hundred dollars? And he'll be like, I'll be like, I'm coming to fix your tire, right? <laughs> No, I need a new tire. I need a new tire. The fuck? Well, Any nigga who wants there. to fuck with me is paying in a cent. She, again, you can say I would never mess with her. I would give her $50. Again, let's, t let's take that argument off the table, and let's just talk about the mindset. Let's talk about the mindset. Any guy, and she said the N-word, who messes with me is paying in a sense. And she's right. This proves money, energy, attention, or time. It also proves that in their mind, it's a privilege. Also, also, number one through seven. This all, I'm, I'm telling you, man. So you have also on the cold approach. Well, uh, this woman says right here, this woman says, hey, this guy can do it this way. This guy can do it that way. Also looking at rice gum. It's 1500 for you. It's 800 for you. It's 300 for you. It's free for you. But you're going to have to pay attention to me. In essence, this is what I'm trying to tell you. If you mess it with me in her mind, because she's in her mind attractive and cute, you're going to pay in a sense. CGA undefeated, right? I'm telling you, man. Money, energy, attention, time. You got, in a sense, you're all paying. It's going to be higher price for you. In a sense, uh, what she said, what we said here, it's a higher price before she wouldn't mess with you. Uh, there's no possible way you're getting this. Now today, they're going... Okay, we'll set a price menu. We'll set a price menu. Okay, there's a menu depending on who you are. <laughs> all right, here we go. Like, I, I, you got two okay, dates. You got okay. two dates before I start asking for money. That's now, this is an indirect way around it. She didn't ask for the direct money. She said, okay, I'll give you two dates, and then I'll start asking for money right here. Doesn't mean she's going to get it, though. Doesn't mean she's going to get it. But after the strategy is after two dates, guess what I'm going to start doing? Hey, I need lunch money. Hey, can you help me with that? Now, if you are ugly, she says, she says, you're useful. I see. Two dates? Two dates. Day two, I'm like, all right. How much do you ask for? It, I don't, I don't go crazy. It depends on the guy. Like if he's kind of ugly, oh. I'm going to ask for a lot. Going back. If he's ugly, I'm going to ask for a lot. If I don't like them, I'm going to ask for a lot. I'll still deal with them, though. I'll still deal with them. This is where our relationships are going with a lot. This is Gen Z, y'all. This is Gen Z. Remember, don't use Gen X in this equation. All right, Gen X and old millennials, they don't count here. We're talking about Gen Z. Maybe, okay, so if I seem to get how much, how much is that? <laughs> he, I'll be like, I have to go a little low with him. Like, I'll be like, oh, like, my tire is fucked up. Like, I'm fucked up. Can I get $500? And he'll be like, I'll be like, I'm coming to fix your tire. Right? <laughs> he said, I, well, the guy said, I'll come fix the tire. Again, that was his way around it. Okay, I'm not going to give, guys, man, are you making sense of this? Are you making sense of this? He said, I'll come fix the tire instead. Mm. As if it's free energy and attention and time to fix a tire. First of all, she don't need her tires fixed. She's just saying she need her tire fixed. That's a finesse. Okay. I'll come fix a tire. Instead of saying, no, I ain't going to deal with this type of person. He said, okay, I'll still deal with it. I won't pay you, but I'll come fix the tire. That's payment. She wins either way if she needs her tire fixed. She wins. Or she's a perceived win. She's like, I got that ninja to come fix my tire. All right. A couple more here. A couple more here. Um, and then it says right here, let me see. This is a, this is a street interview. Take it with a grain of salt. I stuck in the bathroom last year. Okay, okay. It was a Saudi Arabian from Saudi Arabia. Pay me $200. Stuck in the bathroom. I was up. So I did it. Last Mardi Gras. And it's on my Dolce and Gabbana jacket. Nobody knows this, but now everybody does. And we are live in the birthplace of jazz. I stuck in the bathroom last year. Okay, okay. It was a Saudi Arabian from Saudi Arabia. Pay me $200. Stuck 
in the bathroom. I was f***ed up, so I did it. Last Mardi Gras. And it gets on my Dolce and Gabbana jacket. Nobody knows this, but now everybody knows. I am a nasty woman. Now, guys, this is just one woman. It's not all of them. It's, not, it's only one. But we've been setting this up. <laughs> so this is a woman that says, hey, nobody knows this, but I'm drunk. I have loose lips. I'm having fun. I'm spontaneous. It's party time. I figure I'll let everybody know now. But you would see her and you would not anticipate that she would do such a behavior. I'm not like those other women. I don't sell mine. And she'll get you to marry her, get a relationship, and you pay with money, energy, attention, and time. Meanwhile, meanwhile, yes, it's somebody's daughter. <laughs> it's somebody's daughter. Meanwhile, this Millie Mouth Southern Belle is out here getting nutted on by Saudi Arabian women on their, I'm sorry, Arabian men on her Dolce & Gabbana jacket. I figure I'll let everybody know. This is also, coach, man, that's somebody's daughter, man. These young women are young and naive, and their frontal lobe isn't developing. You're a metaphile. Also, same woman. I think she said when she was 20. I might be wrong on that. Maybe it's because I think she looks like she was 20. All right? And, of course, guess who's in the background? Of course, the scrap sexuals, the catfish of the sea. Niggas always got to show they This ninja will think he got something here. Look, I got me a snow bunny-ass ninja. I got me a snow bunny. All right, but they do stuff like this, and I actually told you about white women and alcohol. They do some crazy stuff under the guise of I was drunk, <laughs> right? So it doesn't count. All right, uh, here we go right here, and Ninja will still be kissing this woman on the mouth. Yes, he will. I stuck in the bathroom last year. Okay, okay, it was a Saudi Arabian from Saudi Arabia. Pay me $200, stuck in the bathroom. I was f***ed up, so I did it. Last Mardi Gras. And it gets on my Dolce and Gabbana jacket. Nobody knows this, but now everybody does. Yeah, boy. Oh, boy, man. I tell you, man, it's hard. It's hard. 200 bucks. <laughs> 200 bucks, man. It's a cold, cold world. Last one. And then uh, last one is this young lady right here. Again, this is, the, this is kind of what we're living in here. Re remember, people are doing it differently because of the access to attention. But then you want to go outside and cold approach these women. Uh, she looks like a strag. But uh, let's talk about it. It says, y'all see this dude came in my DMs yesterday. All right, here we go. Y'all, so this dude came in my DM yesterday. He was like, you're pretty. I'm trying to get to know you. He literally sent me $1,000 just to get to know me. And y'all literally sit here and think I'm going to get to know y'all for free. When somebody just paid me one k for him to get to know me, be so for real. Y'all, so this dude came in my DM yesterday. He was like, you're pretty. I'm trying to get to know you. He literally sent me $1,000 just to get to know me. And y'all literally sit here and think I'm going to get to know y'all for free. When somebody just paid me one k for him to get to know me, be so for real. Again, it's getting harder and harder to tell who's who. It's getting harder and harder to tell who's who. Now, this is a story that she's going to go on, and I'm going to tell you. There's a guy that probably did this. There's a probably that guy. And she left out the part of what she had it to do uh, with her uh, one in the pink, one in the stink, or something being pink and then something being brown. He definitely got to uh, pack her fudge. Yeah, for sure. All right. So just understand the DMs are like this. And by the, by the way, this has further been confirmed by some of these behaviors that we're seeing out here. And yes, this is real. Yes, this is real. Inflation is real. All right. So they're like, hey, I'm I'm monetized right here. Okay. This this is kind of what we're doing today. It's a privilege. And I cost right here. Yeah. I mean, look, it's happening. And so then they get the begging. Then you show up and you don't pay for their Ross and Marshall. Now you got to choke her in the line to go to jail. Okay. And assault her. Then she'll start talking about what type of N word are you? What type of N-word are you that would you won't pay for my meal? Don't you know? What type of ninja are you? And then you get humiliated in all of these things, and you arguing with the woman about to lose your freedom to try to prove that's going on. Right here. This is not lies. This is what they're this is what some women 
have access to and are succumbing to. The temptation is too great. It's easy money. Where, what did this woman say? This young woman said, it's just easy. Where's that woman right here? Uh, she thinking about it. Oh, I can't find her. Uh, the begging woman right here. This woman right here. This one, this one. Just give me the money. OMG. But can I be honest, y'all? I don't want a job. I don't even want a job. OMG. Ugh, please, somebody. I don't want a job. I don't want to work. Just give me the money. Oh. Yeah. OMG. Just give me the money. Just give me the money. Guys, when this thing, when, when this line has been crossed, and some women will cross it once, some women will never cross it, some women will say, no, $1,000, some women will cross this line. It's going to be hard for them to get a regular job. It's going to be hard. As they age out, they'll, you'll be seeing them at 35 still trying to pull these tricks on 65-year-old men. Okay. But once they get access to that type of money that easy and they give up a little bit of whatever they have, time, attention, money, all right, drop in neck, a little puss, they'll never be able to come out of this fully. All right, but, you know, it is what it is. It's a sign of the times. And uh, people are trying to find a way. Uh, by the way, these are just the women talking about it. Just so you guys know. Uh, but these are the women just talking about it, admitting it. What did it take? Some drinks. All right, a little bit of attention, a little bit of ego. All right, what? You're going to think you're going to talk for me to, to me for free? Not when the simp gave me $1,000 to talk. Everybody now is on the price menu. All right, everybody else. Now, where this ends, we know how this ends. These are somebody's maybe future wife. These are women complaining about men that don't want to commit. These are, you know, pregnancy, STI, whatever it is, Straggleville. Some, some of these women will turn this into a marriage. Yes, a small percentage. Some men will marry her. And that's you. Trauma, therapy, and all of this will, you'll, you'll become, um, this is your future wives. You'll become in a relationship with this woman when she's 38. And she will tell you none of this behavior, none. Anyway, 25 minutes of women begging. Interesting segment there. I know a lot of guys will be mad at me. Hey, I'm going to tell you, man, do not be mad at me about this. All right, this doesn't even count the Twitch girls or the OnlyFans girls. And we already know, not even the sugar babies. Okay, This is something that's going on here, and I'm trying to reveal it to you by not promoting it. I'm not promoting it. I'm not telling you to do whatever. You keep doing what you're doing out here. All right, but there's no doubts about it. Money, energy, attention, and time. I actually seen some content creators recently getting into uh, you know uh, situations where they don't realize that they're validating the woman with money, I'm sorry, with energy or attention. Now, what will happen is, and these are guys that I respect, people think that they're debating them. Oh, I'm debating this person. But what you're doing is you're providing them with free energy and attention, possibly trying to backdoor your way into some pussy. And also, your audience has now been exposed to a woman that has monetized herself. And, guys, this is something that we have to acknowledge is happening in the red pill space. And these women know it, and they're never going to admit it. But this has been exposed by some people trying to expose this happening. These men that, that you're exposing women to in debates, in humiliation, in, in so-called attention with no payment, these women are monetizing it on the back end. I purely hope and wish, I pray, that these men have made a deal with them like rice gum made a deal. I'm hoping that you're not providing a platform for these women to now monetize the simps on the back end. I hope to God that you're doing this because that would be pimping. That would be the essence of pimping, which is illegal, but you're worried about ninjas getting soliciting over here. It would be illegal to pimp a woman, by the way. But a lot of these people are trying to say what's illegal and not. Pimping is illegal and pandering. But I'm going to tell you. You're, what, what you're doing is inviting one woman or many women to your platform. Exposing them to tens and thousands of men. Maybe trying to humiliate them for clips. Then what you'll do. I'm hoping this is happening. Then what you'll do when the show goes off and thousands of men have watched it, a percentage of those men 
will then go to those women's Instagram and OnlyFans. That's exactly what they're going to do. And some of these men are going to pay. Now, there's a podcast that's been uh, confirmed to maybe participating in this activity, meaning that they might get a cut of the women's money. I don't know if this is true. They might be getting a portion or maybe getting the girls to pay for their appearance. So that cut is going to go, hey, I'm providing this platform to you. So give me a cut. And then you can keep the rest. Okay, so this has been purported or suggested as a behavior that is happening in this sphere. But you're promoting them. You're not actually humiliating them. You're not debating them either. So in essence, again, you're actually either pimping them or simping on them. You're actually paying them or they're usury. They're engaging in usury. They're engaging in usury, knowing that all they have to do is show up, and it's a guaranteed that these men who are also in the comment section humiliating the woman are turning around and they're providing subscribe subscriptions to their Instagram and OnlyFans. All right. That exactly is that what happened in here. And let's just say 50 guys comes on and supports whatever subscription-based service that they're providing. And there also have been men that say they have um, flown out these models after appearing on the show. Now, again, I'm not trying to wreck what's happening here. What I'm saying is when we get down to brass tacks, this pay-for-play thing is in full effect. It's in full motion. If she gets 50 men to subscribe, that's $250. You multiply that. Over a 12-month period, that's $3,000 to appear on the show. That's $3,000 to appear on the show. In fact, is this really helping men? These, again, I'm not directing it at any particular podcast. This is advertisement. This is advertisement. So here, I'm just, I'm just saying right here, let's not fool ourselves. Some of these guys that are against sugar babies are also wanting to appear on these podcasts. And some of these men are paying to appear on these podcasts. Listen, I'm telling y'all too much. I'm telling y'all too much. So they're against this behavior, but they're engaging in it. They're against this behavior, but they're engaging in it. They're a part of it. They're allowing you guys to be exposed to it. They know what's going on. They might get a cut. She ends up winning. She ends up winning, even though people laugh at her. She ends up winning. <laughs> so let's call it out. Again, I, listen, I'm the king of kings with this, and I'm not trying to ruin people's thing here. But what I'm saying is I, I'm tired of the conversation of ninjas calling shit out but participating and engaging in it or promoting it. You don't see me promote that shit over here. I ain't promoting that shit. And then acting like it's something when it's something else on the back bike side. Mm. That's what's real. That's the real deal. That's the real deal. Anyway. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. It is what it is. Where we at? Because they know it's going to happen. A woman going to know. And if she get 500 people, let's just calculate it. Oh, yeah, that's 2,500 bucks for an appearance. Wait a minute. Did I say 500? Yeah, I did say 500. And it's possible uh, to get 500 people to go up over there. Oh, by the way, one more thing on this one. I've been very conscious of this because I noticed my audience doing this as well. Meaning that if I put a clip up of a woman, I noticed that certain people would go to their platform, right? Meaning that then later on, you'll be suggesting these videos. Oh, here's this woman that you showed. Here's this person. You'll come back to me and then tell me to watch more of their videos. Then I had to develop a rule for myself that I would not show the same person twice. Even on podcasts here where there's interview street interviews, I try to say, okay, I'm not going to promote these people for free. Because then you start doing it and then you start saying, hey, this was this gordita. And then you'll be saying, hey, she's sexy. And then you'll track her down. I noticed my audience starting to do that. 
And I was like, you know what? I'm providing free advertisement for these people. So I stopped showing them or I only will show two times and that's it. I even show the Instagram where I try to block out who the content creator is if it's a woman. Like, so for example, if it's a woman, I'll try to do this. I'll try to block out who she is so you can't look her up. All right. Because I know how men are. And I'm like, I'm not making these people famous. And eventually then I'll see what will happen is I'll show them and their subscriber base and following will be lower. And then I'll show them and then their numbers will swoop past me. <laughs> right. And I'm like, damn, a few months ago, these people didn't have the audience that I have. But then now I notice after five or 10 months, their audience goes past me. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? So I stop showing the same people twice. Or if I show them, I'll block their name. So you don't go running over there. Even content creators go running over there and they'll make a video and they'll see me make the video. All right. And then they'll go run over there and they'll just pull up their Instagram. And now they got a video. So um, I noticed that that was happening. And I said, okay, I have a new rule. I'm not going to free advertise people. I'm not going to give you the link to them. I'm not going to tell you what their name is. It's not the hate on them. It's not to give them their shine. It's just that I noticed I'm making a point about them and a portion of my audience was going over there, <laughs> right? I'm like, what the fuck? And then wanted me to show more and show that woman and show me that woman and show that skit. So I had to pull all that shit down. I had to have another mo way to do it because otherwise I'm just promoting their, their thing. And I noticed these same people don't promote me. So it's not hate. I'm like, they ain't promoting me. I'm just giving them free advertisement by replaying their clips. All right, no, that's okay. Anyway. Anyway, so I noticed that there's a game in this, a game by me just showing a person on a constant basis or keep showing their videos. Like there's a guy that I love his videos, um, but he never, he, never, he never talks about me. He never, um, he never supports me. And, but again, that's not because, but I noticed that his audience grew significantly, not because of me, but I'm not going to keep showing his interviews, not for free. Same thing as whatever podcast, any of these podcasts, I'm not just going to keep showing them and promoting them for free when them motherfuckers ain't brought me on their show. And that's no diss and disrespect, but I'm saying them niggas ain't never said CGA said them niggas ain't never said CGA needs to come to my show. Them niggas ain't never said, hey, uh, CGA, go get CGA's book. They never use their platform to promote me. So when I see their clips, I don't promote them. You see what I mean? I don't promote them. But um, yeah, people like Israel Padilla. There's another guy. I can't remember his name. But it's a black guy. He seems to have an African-based Nigerian accent. Good content. But yeah, they jacking my lingo, acting like I ain't said shit. I'm like, nah, man. I ain't promoting they shit for free. Fuck that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway. All right. They need to see me. They need to check in with the, in this space. You need to check in and fuck what your numbers say. It don't matter. It don't matter. All right. Anyway, I don't care what your numbers say. It means nothing to me because we know what it is out here. Uh, let's get in here. Just so you know that and why you see me doing certain things. Just so you know, I'm not giving people and podcasts free promotions. Uh, it is what it is. And then y'all run over there to the women too. And then want to show me the woman. Hey man, that, look, man, I found her Instagram page. I didn't ask you to find their Instagram page. I'm not showing it to show, so you can show my audience her Instagram page. <laughs> right? But ninjas will be posting her name in the chat. Oh, that's so-and-so. I don't care. Anyway, let's get back to the show here. Let's get to these super chats. We're almost to the main event. Main, well, that was kind of the main event. We do have another segment called, called uh, Are Women Replaceable? We have two women that are going to say women are replaceable in this. So this is our close to let you guys know that you are, in essence, the prize out here. You're the targets. Shout out to no government name. Says he's got $3.85 for the normie prevention. Thanks, coach, for the normie prevention. Shout out to you. <laughs> I'm broke, dead, flat, stony, broke. I've got $3.85 in my purse. Snap Tech Fix says a relationship without sex only fan equals only fans. A relationship without sex equals only fans. Uh, why would you live with a woman or be in a relationship with her if you're not gaining sex? I don't understand that. He says time chasing women. Uh, if she ain't spread it, spreading 
get the stepping. Stay focused, brother. Shout out to the coach game. We must stay focused. Lord, have mercy. We must stay focused, brothers. <laughs> we must stay focused. All right. Uh, it says right here, Chris Jericho, CGA, the only brother I know that can go on another podcast, get ambushed, and execute the perfect counter ambush. He said, should have given you, given your boy Adam 22 some pointers because he didn't make it. He says, they made that simp do the walk of shame. And shout out to our Marquette for doing that. And uh, that was a perfect. Marquette is a very, very crafty, smart, intelligent individual. And he did an ambush on Adam 22. But it shows you in that situation. And the one reason why I didn't show it is because it was on a podcast that I don't give free advertisement to. But you're still going to watch it anyway. All right. But um, until they acknowledge me, that's how it's going to be. All right, that's how it has to be. That's just how I have to hold the line. All right, but with this being said, because they ain't going to use me out here pipping me. But with, with that being said, Adam 22 is an example of what happens when you don't stay focused. When you don't stay focused, and Satan the center is the guy that I'm talking about. Satan the center was ready. In the art of war, he had a point to make. He had an audience to gain. He had, he had everything set up for him to execute what he did. Now, Adam 22 was, in his world, he's winning. He has money. He has a main audience. He has a wife. He has what he's doing. So, in that case, he came in ill-prepared. He had no philosophy. He was living on weakness. He's just trying to get it. And then the money, the money is his God. And so, and then he might have been under the influence, allegedly, of drugs or alcohol. And he thought he could stumble in there. And then he got hit. All right? So, that right there tells you at all times. Guys, somebody is always looking to check, to check your spot. Somebody is always looking to hit your corner. So uh, 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 if you eventually realize, reach to, to the position where you think you're on top and you relax, that's how you get exposed. This is warfare. This is competition. So he came in laxed. Marquette came in ready to go, guns blazing. And then he got got and he had to skedaddle. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> All right, so I love to see it, and I acknowledge that it happened. I just can't play it over here. I can't play it over here, but it is what it is. You always got to be prepared out here. Somebody always coming for your head. Great movie. Somebody, a uh, great movie. Ever ever seen this movie? Um, I always call it Chicago, but it's not called Chicago. It was, uh, Beyonce was in it. It's a music about the 1950 blues time. It happened in Chicago. But I always get the movie wrong. Again, free promotion for this movie. Anyway, um, in the movie, they talked about the blues era where um, they were talking about, um, I can't remember what they were talking about, but they were talking about hiring another, uh, what's the name of the movie? Not, not Dream Girls. Not Dream Girls. It was about the music executive in the 50s, a Jewish music executive, and he was coming after uh, the blues era. Capitol Records, is it? Capitol Records. I always call it Chicago. But Capitol Records is the movie. Great movie. And um, in the film, there was a point where um, somebody was trying to get a person to help another person or get him a job in a club where the person played the exact same instrument. In this movie, it was the instrument was, the I believe, the harmonica. All right. So you guys know the harmonica in the blues era was a popular instrument. And what happened was, I guess it was like, hey, man, help this brother out, get a job or a gig. But he played the same instrument in the movie. Thinking. Not being weak, he said, hey, if I hire. If I get this guy a gig, I'm cutting my own head off. Why would I hire a guy to cut my own head off? Anybody remember that part in the movie? He was like, I'm cutting my own head off if I let this guy come into my club or my band or my group and he plays the high mark. He could be better than me. He could be worse than me, but I'm still cutting my own head off. He's like, hell no. So that's kind of how you have to be out here, especially when you perceive a guy where you start winning and you start gaining. Why would I cut my own head off? All right, very, 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 Interesting take there, but that's where guys have to be. But I, I notice a lot of guys don't, they'll do the opposite, right? You, you guys will help people and they'll eventually cut your own head off, all right? That's what they'll do. He said, I ain't chopping my own head off. It was a guitar. It was a guitar. So I'm wrong on that one. It wasn't the harmonica, it was the guitar. 
But that's the reality of it. Yep. <laughs> it was the guitar. Anyway, she called he called him a headhunter. I ain't yeah, I ain't hiring no headhunter. <laughs> so yeah, man. He was like, yo, fuck that. All right, because otherwise then I can't do what? I can't make my own money. Anyway, it is what it is. He ain't coming for my head. Shout out to uh West A says they want the benefits of a man without the sex on their part. That is the ultimate scam. Guys, that is the ultimate scam. Engaging, and that is what tricking is, by the way. That is what tricking is. Uh, people do have these wrong definitions. Tricking is to be able to get as much as you can by acting like there's a relationship and not giving yourself, get, getting what you need to get back from her or an equal portion. Oh, it was Cadillac Records. I said Capital Records, right? It was Cadillac Records. Thank you for correcting me. Thank you for correcting me. Cadillac Records. All right, look it up. It's now I gave him free promotion. Cadillac Records. It's not Capital. Okay, but tricking is to be again a tricking indicates a trick or deceiver, deceiving, deceiving. So if I find a woman and she has a boyfriend on the side or a pimp, and she comes to me and says, "Daddy, you're my only one. Daddy, help me with my bills." Daddy helped me. And she, every time she calls him, it's daddy, I need my nails done. Daddy, I need some groceries. Daddy, I'm going to get evicted. That would be tricking because then every time you pay, she does this at a distance, right? Can you cash at me? Oh, uh, my car tires are flat. That would be tricking because in that case, you're not getting her to reciprocate. You're not getting a return. You're just thinking you're doing a good deed and these women need to support it and these women need 100%. And then you might think that's my girlfriend. That would, or, or you're the best person that gives her, that is tricking, okay? That is 100%. Or she comes in and she steals your watches, okay? Or she steals a watch here and there. She gets access to your bank account. You give her a credit card. Now that's 100%. <laughs> That is tricking because then she's leveraging something and then not giving, reciprocating after a period of time. You might have fucked her one or two, three times, but then after a while, you find out you're still paying the bill, but then she's seeing you less and less from a distance. Hey, man, can you cash at me? Oh, I'm, but I'll come over on Thursday. She don't come over on Thursday. There's a guy. There's a guy. Um, let me see something here. Let me show you this right quick. Y'all with me? I'll let you hear me. Let me see here. Let me see here. Twins. Ew, mother. All right, watch this. Let me, let me show you this one. Let me show you this. All right. Uh, this is an example of it right here. Let me see if I can find the guy. I found the story. I just need to find the gentleman. Mm, okay, let me see if I can find it here. Without getting a fair use. Without getting a fair use. Okay, where's the gentleman in the in the story here? I got to find the guy. All right, all right, all right. I did find the story here. I just got to find the gentleman. Okay, here we go right here. All right, so without giving away too much in this story here, see if I can pull it up. All right, so it, it, there was a case of um, this situation here. This identical twins right here, these light skin, these light skins, uh, end up killing their mother. Yeah, sad story, sad story. <laughs> All right, so there's the, there's the woman here. This woman became a victim of these two twins right here. Now, if you watch the entire story, what you're going to find out is that she had a man in her life that was paying her entire bills. In fact, they were in a relationship. Now, the daughters aren't from the man. The daughters were from another man. But let me go ahead and see if I can pull the story up of the guy. Let me see if I can find it right here. She's 36, 34 years old. She was stabbed to death by her twins who end up lying, saying they were, they were in school. The girls were 16. Um, they, were, they were in school. In fact, they pulled up surveillance video showing that they were not in school, that they showed up late. All right, so let me see if I can pull up the woman here. And not to drag the woman in the mud. Let me see if I can find the boyfriend. All right, but uh, damn, where's the boyfriend? All right, they're not showing him. Oh, shoot. Let me see here. But what happened was in the story, in the story, the boyfriend was an older male. The boyfriend was an older man. Now, this woman had been in these streets for a long ass time, long ass time. Damn it. They ain't showing the boyfriend. 
But he was um, having this young woman. She was 34. Uh, the twins are 16. So by my math, she been in these streets. All right. So there you go right here. Where's my in these streets? In these streets. All right. Uh, this is a woman that has had these children at a very relatively young age. All right. Where's the boyfriend at? I wish I could find it. Oh, here it is. Robert Head. I'm going to look him up. I'm going to Google him real quick. So she was living with an older man who was a truck driver. So he was allowing her to live in the house with her children. And he was paying all the bills and all of this stuff. But he also allowed her to have boyfriends on the side. That sh- now, that right there is tricking. Let me see here. Let's see. Okay, the guy should be here. Show his picture. He, he don't want to. They don't want to show his picture. All right. God dang. All right. Where is he at? All right, they kind of show in this picture here. But he was paying all her bills. He was living with her. He would occasionally, during his truck routes, get access to her body. But she was also dating other men. And, um, you know, I don't. I think he was older in his 50s or 60s. She's in her 30s. She lived with him. He had the daughters living with him. It was a mess. An absolute mess. Why won't they show any pictures of this ninja? All right, because he looked exactly what you would think it would look like. Now, that right there, that would be major league tricking, right? He's only getting a little bit of access. Oh, they ain't. They've cleared the internet of this guy. All right, you can see him here. Well, nope, he's not there. <sighs> anyway, now that's, that's tricking. <laughs> you, anybody say that story? All right, and it's like, wow. Like, y'all got to be kidding me, man. But there are guys that are doing that, that are covering all the expenses. And she was out there partying, shaking her ass, all of that. And he was covering the bills, and he had them badass girls, and them girls was hoes already. Them girls, them girls was 16 and hoeing, but there she is. Oh, I think she lost custody of the kids at one point and got them back because she might have been a, a skeezer. I can't remember. But the girls wanted to live with their dad. There's the girls right there. I don't know show to do, but they ended up deleting her because I think what happened was they wanted to live with the father or something like that and go out. I think she was trying to tell him to not be whores like she was when she was young. They not showing this ninja. He, oh, she had another boyfriend. She had another boyfriend who was a suspect. Again, again, the, the conversation around this is the, um, the conversation around this is that the spectrum is real. The spectrum is real. Uh, let me pause this stream. People are alerting me to something right here. Jonathan Majors, is he been found guilty? Let me see here. Oh, man. Jonathan Majors guilty? Oh, he found guilty of assault and harassment. Ninja. Wow. Breaking news. Breaking news, Jonathan Majors found guilty of assault and harassment. Now, this is going to go on his record. I believe this is misdemeanor charges. So he might get probation and all of this stuff, but this goes against his record. This also shows you where things are. All right, this shows you where things are going, guys. You guys got to really be, yeah, remember he's running from the white woman. I didn't put that clip out, but it was funny. Um, I don't think he's going to go to jail, but this is an example of, you know, he put up a great defense. He's paid a lot of money. He had Megan Good by his side. He did all the public relations. He broke up a alleged fight. He tried to be the good guy in this situation here. He was the victim in this situation, more or less, I believe. But his reputation has been tarnished. Yep, they Tory Lanez, the ninja. His reputation has been tarnished. He now has an asterisk. And he could, this could affect his career again. Ninjas don't want to pay. And they realize you're going to pay on the back end. You're going to you're going to pay somehow. Oh, somebody says CGA called it. By the way, I just want to let you know. I told you he was in trouble. Now, ninjas want to say you want to ruin a black man. I'm telling you guys, I knew he was in trouble. Shout out to you, Agent Machines, for acknowledging that. Because ninjas are always trying to tell me I was hating. I wasn't hating. I said he's in trouble. Right. This is not this is the kind of thing that black men and men in general don't recover from. I also said in this, don't depend on the justice system to defend you as a man, 
especially than a black man. Don't depend. I'm going to say it again. Don't depend on the justice system to see it your way. You're a man. Not only that, you're a larger male. And what did I say about white women? White women, they're the queens of this shit. They're the pretty, pretty, pretty princess. Whether you think they're, well, I don't like them. Nobody cares, guys. If a white woman talks in this world, they're going to get the benefit of the doubt. Typically, if women talk, but I'm going to tell you, worst thing you can have is a white woman in, in court pointing at you. It ain't going to work in your favor. The world has not changed this much. <laughs> he says, could affect, will affect. The world hasn't changed where you can lean on the justice system to get justice against white women. And I don't want to mean to be racist here. I'm just being honest. The world hasn't changed this much. We are not in this position. Not even a highly influential rich man or a man that has the net worth of of a future net worth for $250 million. It ain't happening. Not even Johnny Depp was able to beat this. And he had to pay $5 million to beat a woman who accused him of something that literally was a woman who took a shit on his bed. And she even said, nobody's going to believe you. I'm just a skinny little white woman. And I'm paraphrasing. You have to understand where we are. Um, let me read this article here and then we'll go on. The verdict was reached on Monday by a six person jury after over four hours of deliberation. And by the way, they needed extra time spread across three days. They needed three days to discover if he was a victim or if he was the one, the perpetrator. And they had all the evidence against her. They had the text messages, but what they did was um, they, um, people are going to talk about also, this is a humiliation ritual and shit like this. Um, his career is going to be very difficult. Uh, this is America, though. But what they did was they, they instituted, they played videos and showed audio and played audio of him being abusive towards her. Whether you believe it was abusive or not, he was being abusive to her in the term and definitions of being abusive. I know you're going to say that wasn't abusive, but he was talking over her. He was cutting her off. She was crying. She was trying to get a word in. He would cut her off. Guys, in, in today's term, this is abuse. In today's term, in today's term, in today's terms, women consider that abuse. We have to understand, acknowledge it to be able to support ourselves and protect ourselves. Okay? We have to. We can't just be like, well, I'll prove it in court. Not against no white woman, you not. The legal system hasn't caught up to the red pill. The legal, ha but that was the hope strategy. The legal system hasn't caught up to justifying and, and not vilifying men. Hasn't caught up yet. I acknowledge this. So I wasn't hating on the guy. I said, man, he in trouble. This is America. But that's considered abuse. If, I, if I'm talking to a woman, she's recording it. She's recording it for her protection. Now, it doesn't matter what she's did to lead up to that. I've already acknowledged that domestic violence is not one way. Both people per participate in it. But do you record women? Do you record when she's gaslighting you? Do you record when you're being victimized? No, you try to talk it out with her and argue it. You're a moron. That's not how it works. You're trying to put her in her place. And, to, and that's yesterday's hat. That's why these ninjas that be like, I'll be trying to pimp them and doing all that. I'm like, you're an idiot. That, that's not the way to deal with it. This is not 1996. You really have to be conscious. And they're very crafty now. They can record you. Uh, they can use your ring doorbell footage. They can use your neighbor's ring doorbell footage. All they need is a conversation of you abusing her. And they got you. Photos. She had a little a bruise on her finger. Got you. Got you. Got you, bitch. You know what I mean? So people will say I'm hating. Because I got that all of that. I was like, this guy is in trouble. I don't think you guys realize it. And this happened to Tory Lanez, whether he did it or not. Y'all niggas was like, what? And this is sucks. This happened to Johnny Depp in the first trial. What? 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 How many times more are you guys going to be surprised the justice system is not for men to fight out these scenarios and it only takes one little accusation okay okay it only takes one in the, uh, a little accusation all right come on man don't scream at me all right 
Don't scream at me. This ninja is screaming at me, and he's using a faulty way to decide. This guy's like, what if your daughter? Listen, that, we don't debate that way. I've already proven that wrong. I've already torched that. All right, so let's get back to the point here. One accusation is enough to get uh, the rest of the accusations to fall in place. One woman is enough to get all of these act. All of these things can work against you. And when when the when the when the smoke clears, when the dust settles, nobody's going to remember that you got sabotaged. Nobody's going to remember that you got. Um, manipulated in court. Nobody's going to remember that. They're just going to say, you've been found guilty of. You've been found guilty of. That's the reality. That's the reality, gentlemen. I'm sorry. I don't want to paint a rosy picture. I'm not doom and gloom, but again, CGA is right one more time. (laughs) Right? I'm right again. You want me to be wrong so bad. Let's just be honest about this. Yes, I'm doom and gloom. Now, I'm not doom and gloom about every subject matter. I'm very optimistic, but this is part of my show to try to sell to you so I can bring the conversation to the for- forefront. You want me to bring it back over here so bad. If you want the optimistic podcast, you're going to have to pay for it. I'm not the hope podcast. I'm not the, well, there's hope out here, gentlemen. I presented the Jonathan Major situation as he's fucked. Trust me, I've dealt with women in court. You don't want to deal with him. He's fucked. Now, of course, I don't think he's going to go to jail. I think he's going to get some probation. This probation will be an asterisk. He is forever going to be now considered guilty of assault. He's guilty of harassment. Similarly, um, even O.J. Simpson is guilty of the murder because the civil court held him liable, although the criminal court has said, that there was a reasonable doubt that he was not the suspect. But they still have pinned on him that he is the suspect since the civil court has said he was guilty. There's no asterisk. There's no, yeah, but he's an abuser. He's guilty of abuser. He's guilty of abuse. And he probably is going to pay in this situation. Let me read this. All right, a New, York ju- a New York jury found the Marvel actor Jonathan Majors guilty of reckless assault in the third degree and guilty of harassment. The verdict was reached on Monday, and it says right here, he was wearing a gray suit, black dress, shirt, and tie, sat with his attorneys and family members and his girlfriend, Megan Good, which I'm sure at this point, the sisterhood are going to tell him to run. Okay, the sisterhood are going to tell Megan Good to run. And he said behind him, as the verdict was read, he was found not guilty of intentional harassment in the third degree and not guilty of aggravated harassment in the second degree. Sentencing is set for February 6th. So he's going to be sentenced to something. This is a criminal case. This is a criminal case. He's going to be sentenced to something. Which could be suspended sentence. Probation. Community service. Jail time, suspended sentence, jail time. But these are both misdemeanors. These are, these are, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, these are not felonies. Felony, he probably would see some jail time. This is going to be misdemeanors for him. Low-level assault. Guys, reckless assault and harassment. Mm. Yeah, and then a settlement. So he's going to have to pay her off again. Again. The back end is really aggressive here. I'm telling you. Anger management classes, certainly. He's going to have to make commercials. He's going to definitely go to anger management class um, and these type of things. Okay, so Megan Good is going to break up with him. (laughs) I just know, man. Um, Yeah, he's not going to go to jail. These are are low-level charges, which to me is odd to be able to use this as a case to publicize them, but this is what happens when you're famous and has status. Um. By all accounts, he's smart. He has status. He definitely doesn't have looks. He's a funny looking creature. And, but also he is, you know, over six feet tall and muscular. All of that don't save you, man. All of that doesn't save you. Men, let's have this art. Let's have this conversation. Your justice will not be seen in court. There's no justice for you there. If you're praying 
And there were some men, brother, shout out to KT King. He was very hopeful here. It is difficult to find justice as a male in the court. It is difficult. You're going to have to, it's an uphill battle. It's difficult to find justice in the court of public opinion. This is why you have to be hyper vigilant and not reckless, which he's been accused of being reckless in your associations with women. That's all I preach. Meaning I always say, don't argue with them, <laughs> right? Always say cut bait. If they're gaslighting you, shaming you, disassociate. Because there's heavy payment. If you then try to use, I'm going to overcome that, there's heavy payment on it. What you're doing is considered abuse, even when you don't consider it abuse. This is confirmed. This is confirmed. I, am I tripping here? He, are, he, he talked to her in a very kind voice, as kind as you might think, and he's been guilty of harassment. He's been guilty of reckless assault for what it looked like taking his cell phone or her cell phone and running. Running from the scene from a white woman is not going to be good for you. So you're looking like you're running from the scene? Oh, man. It's tough. But these are tough lessons that a lot of men have to learn. I mean, I wish it was different. I wish it was different. But you guys are finding out. <laughs> he said, I said, get petty. You need to get petty from a far away distance. Always understand. Oh, by the way, what did I say also? They always have receipts. Did I not say this? I said women are always have receipts as a way. Let me, let me stop here. Because people don't believe me. This is what torpedoed his case. I said women keep receipts on you. Yes, your girlfriend. Yes, your wife who's listening to my podcast. Yes, your girlfriend. You got your headphones on. The girlfriend that's over there in her booty shorts that doesn't have a job. She has notes, receipts, photos that could torpedo you right now. They always keep receipts just as a safeguard to prevent bullshit. Even if you're guilty or innocent, they have receipts. They have screenshots of text messages. They have voice memos. Did I not say this? I've been telling you, they have, they, have things, they have things where you have admitted to doing something. You apologize to her in text. She screenshotted that, and the text doesn't provide content. Right, T context. It's out of context. You don't know what you're apologizing for. We've seen men get brutalized on this one. They got it. I don't care who they are or what. I've been telling you, telling you, telling you. They have times where you scream and berated her, either on phone call or in, in your house, they've recorded it. They have things that you admitted to. Say, for instance, uh, this brother here, Jonathan Majors, had admitted to doing something criminal, and he got away with it. Then he had his girlfriend, and he pillow talked. Let's just say when he was a teenager, he used to rob 7-Elevens. Nobody ever caught him. If he then tells... His girlfriend, the, the girl that now has uh, got him in this predicament, if he had told her something like that, you best believe that she would have told the entire world and submitted it in court records that he used to rob 7-Elevens. You can bet your bottom dollar that she would have put that shit in the court records. And when he was 17, he used to rob 7-Elevens. <laughs> right you guys think that it ain't gonna happen to you and it can happen just like that she would have put that shit in there with the evidence that she submitted that wasn't even on the same date as the alleged harassment she submitted evidence of an argument that didn't even happen on the same day it was completely out of context guilty 100% they don't care, bruh, after a while. Again, you're going to pay. You're going to pay. How much is he going to pay? Millions. That woman going to walk away with millions on a, on a fight for a cell phone. Let's think about it. He's going to pay that woman millions of dollars in the civil case. He's going to settle. He better settle. He already paid the attorney probably near a uh, million dollars. Then he hired Megan Good as a girlfriend. That could have cost him half a mil. 
Megan Good made some money, more money than she ever made acting, acting as his girlfriend. Then, this is alleged, by the way, then add on the fact that he's going to pay this woman a million or so. That's going to cost him. It's going to be an undisclosed amount. He's going to have to cut that check. Then add on the fact that he lost $250 million. Mm. Am I lying? I keep telling y'all, and it keeps coming true. I know y'all waiting for me to be false. You haven't found one piece of information that I've been false about. But it here, it is. <laughs> It's real out here in the field. High value target. High value target. You guys, it, it, look, at a certain instance, if you get high value, you got to give up love. You got to give up trust. You got to give that shit up. All right? And function as a business. I'm sorry. It's a business. And how much that costs? This is going to cost them in excess of $250 million loss. Very tough. But I was right yet again. I hate to be right. Y'all want me to be wrong. Show me. <laughs> Where we at? Kayla says, have, have sex with him or leave him alone. How about that? Well, she's already got other men. I mean, we're talking about something else. Uh, she's already got other men in her wheelhouse. So, uh, you know, that's where the power is. He says, he says, correct, gr correct, Greg Adams. Victory lap. Sad, sad that I'm, sad that I'm doing a victory lap on this brother. But, Hey, you just want to tear down a black man. Shout out to Kevin W says regarding Jonathan Majors. Not only did his ex saw him as a high value target, but the DA who could be prosecuting the hard, hardcore criminals in New York City, by the way, as well. Everyone views you as a target. Okay. Everyone views you as a target, meaning that when you're in court as a man, Everyone's in there getting paid off of you. So your attorney making money off of you with no, you don't hire attorneys to win. You hired them to represent you and her, his attorneys fought very hard, but she didn't win, but she still got paid. Sometimes the attorney on her, her end is going to get paid off of you. Meaning you might have to pay the attorney fees. The DA in this case, this is a criminal case. The DA gets a feather in his cap and he gets to run for a higher office or gets to get voted back in as the district attorney, and he wins. The court, the judge, everybody gets paid off of you. Everybody gets paid, but you're going to run up there and, not, and realize that, oh, you know, I'm going to make a name. I'm going to make a name for myself by defending these charges. Everybody gets a point, a, a cut. Divorce court, same thing. You're, you're there. You're the fat meat. You're the fat meat. You're the food. But you're like, I'm going to go in here and get justice. Not really. You're lucky when you do. It's an anomaly. You're lucky when you do. And even the justice you get is basically a fair treatment. You just got treated fairly. <laughs> you just got treated fairly. Which is rare. Meaning that, like, even in divorce court, your win is when you get 50-50 custody. You didn't even get 100%. You went in there and fought for something that you damn near have a, a, a parental right. I went in there and I won, coach. Okay, what did you win? I got 50-50 and just a little bit of child support. You won? You won? You look like you got fair treatment and you fought for it. That's kind of a win. The kids win, but you paid to get what she fought for you to get, which is your fair and equal treatment as a parent. That's a win? No, a win would be her ass gets no child support and no custody like she should get for making you fight for your kids. But again, we look at what a win is and what is not a win. Okay, but it is what it is. You pay to get what your rights were. You pay to not treat her like a common criminal. You trade to get you paid to get treated like a not like a common criminal. This shit is ridiculous. Mm. So it's ridiculous. You you pay Jonathan Majors had he been found not guilty, he paid for equal treatment under the law. Again, a win for him would be for him to be exonerated, his name cleared, and her ass go to jail. That would be winning. That's a win. Her ass go to jail because she was charged in this case, reluctantly by the DA, because she was being an abuser as well. So remember, she was charged, but not um, 
she was no, she was uh, arrested, but not charged. So she was arrested for abuse as an abuser, but she wasn't even charged, nor was she tried. Now, that's a win if her ass would have went to jail. But that ain't happened. Here, man, I'm just, look. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, I don't know who was going on here. Shout out to our brother, no government name, but we call him Dicky Fat Sacks. Pause. He says, just a little token for my donation. Cheers, CGA. He says, I wasn't sure if you saw my Venmo last Friday. And probably not. Let me see where it came from. Oh, he says, uh, a little token of appreciation. Cheers. I got it. Thank you, brother. Let me do a couple more super chats, I suppose. That will be enough for the day. I'll save the subject matter for later. But I'm going to do the rest of these super chats. I'll save the last subject for later. Thank you for letting me know about the Jonathan Major situation. Uh, let's see. Campster email says, Coach, some of these BWs need to fix their hair, especially uh, Jada Smith. Uh, but they evil and can't. Isaiah 3 verses 16 and 17 sums it up perfectly. Never seen ish women fulfill this one. Can I get a Kanye? I am not even know what the verse says right there. I'm not going to say what race, what people. We know I can't say that. All right. Shout out to Camster email. Shout out to Bob says, I saw a girl in the middle of the do. Her boyfriend came and watched it. It was a big do. He says he was holding her hand while he was clapping her. He was really getting off on that. And he says that. Trying. Wow. JC says, uh, Coach Greg Adams is the apex predator in this space. Everything else is just a placeholder in between your show. Shout out to the best audience of YouTube. Appreciate that, brother. Brown 310 says, nah, Coach, not my girl. My girl different. Agent Machine says, ghost or else. Majors convicted with video evidence that barely, barely exonerated. And he didn't get his money. Even after hearing her say, They'd believe her over him, ghost or else. You better have your guard up. Shout out to Jermaine. Shout out to Jermaine. He says, to my no job having ass ninjas, free agent lifestyle for life. Shout out to Jermaine. Where's my Jermaine? It is all Jermaine's fault. It's always Jermaine's fault. Steven Russ says, why these bees come on here to argue? (laughs) Yeah, I don't know what's happening here. And it's mostly men, by the way. I don't give a fuck what men. you think, bitch. But Cut that bitch off. Hey. Next caller. Men have to hold themselves accountable. All right, men have to hold each other accountable. But men be in here arguing. What if it's your daughter? That ninja? Are we arguing this right now? All right, I, I swear, man, that argument has been extinguished. But if it's your first time here, please understand, you're going to have to pay for the beef. If you have a question like that, please, please pay me. I ain't about to argue that for the hundred million time. Okay, what if it's your mama? Did you, is that what we arguing right now? <laughs> Jesus. Like, that's a low-level, low-grade conversation. All right, anyway, Sam Prince says, no free content, abundance mindset, and it's for life. For, 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 for life, for life. Shout out to JC, uh, sorry, Agent Machines 2023, the year. Rules of engagement with women have been rewritten. Wives, girlfriends, and sneaky links are too much of a liability. Juco or Poon no mo. He says your choice. Indeed. Indeed. All right. Anyway, and that question is is somewhat direct. It's trying to get you pigeonholed, right? It's trying to get, oh, well, you think about that. Well, that's how you tie. You called it still undefeated and still and still ninja. How y'all going to keep? What is it that thought? What is it that y'all don't like about me? I skipped somebody. JC says Kang the conquered, AKA Jonathan majors with that L. Yeah. My man says, I hate those questions. Yeah. It, it's meant to corner, right? It's meant to corner you and to use your emotional. Oh, well, everybody except my daughter is the is what they want me to say, which then puts me at risk with my theory. Okay, but I provide it. You know, if, if you have a, a, an offspring, you got to provide them with information. Everybody's somebody's daughter out here. All right, you don't want to put them in harm's way. In fact, the best information that I give to my daughters is never become a single mother. Simple. 
But Nick, I can't go out there and hold their hand. But the the question is framed to corner. It's not framed to see if I'm curious as to how she will be treated out there. It's not. It's a disingenuous argument, right? It's all the, oh, well, what would you say if? And I tell her, don't become a single mother. It's the worst decision you'll ever make, among others. (laughs) Right here. Mm. Among others. So, but uh, people then will fault me for that. You can't tell her that. Yes, I can. (laughs) <laughs> yes, I can. See, you ain't going to be happy because I give them instructions. I give them instructions. But you ain't going to be happy about that, you bitch ninja. Yep. I tell her the worst decision she'll ever make is she become a single mother. Now now you, now you going to fault me for that too, huh? You mad at that too, huh? I bet you your sorry ass is mad at that. <laughs> All right. So, hey, the instructions are given. But a human being is a human being. I can't stop anybody from doing shit. All right, anyway. It is what it is. Yeah, it's it's all what it is. They all try to use this stuff. It is what it is. <laughs> all right, look at this. Yeah, man. Yeah, there's there's some guys out here. They trying that. They trying that. All right, it is what it is. But do do it. Do what you guys need to do. Um, actually, I saw this uh being used against Diddy. In the Diddy case. So if you support it, if you, if, you, if you said, you know, Cassie's lying. You know, Cassie's lying. She was a participant. In fact, she was an enabler in the situation. And she came and went, came and went, came and went, left. Somebody's going to say, if I hold that opinion, they're going to say, well, what if you had a daughter in this situation? What does that have to do with me saying Cassie was in this situation. How did that jump in here? I, I think people said that. I think Boosie and a lot of other men that said, you know, Cassie's just as culpable in this situation. In fact, she might have been engaging in sex traffic and, and she might be headhunting for Diddy's pockets. Now you mad. Now you got to bring my family into it. My family ain't did that shit. Now you want to what if me when I call Cassie out on her bullshit. We talking about Cassie. We ain't talking about nobody else. We talking about Cassie. Don't bring me, don't bring me and mine in this bullshit. <laughs> why, why me and mine got to be in this conversation? Bitch, we talking about Cassie ho ass. <laughs> yeah, she was a goddamn facilitator. Ninja, she was putting on the parties. What my people got to do with this? <laughs> right. What my people got to do with this shit? Why you bringing my shit in there? Don't turn my shit in here. Yep, they trying to make the argument emotional, which they trapped you. Now they got you in this emotional shit where you got to be like, oh, this ain't emotional. She's the villain in the story too. And that ain't got shit to do with me or my mama. All right? (laughs) All right, anyway, that's your damn problem, you bitch ninja. All right, that ain't no argument. So you're trying to say we don't want to... So. So you're trying to say we don't want to cover the fact that Cassie could be part and partial of the problem. In fact, it has been reported that she was engaging in abuse herself, meaning that she people had witnessed her abusing Diddy physically, emotionally, and verbally. Oh, you don't want to talk about it? Oh, you want to bring me into this shit? All right, please. She was an abuser as much as the other ninja was an abuser. And she, she came and went three times, please. Mm. Now, what I got to do with that shit? Because I called out her bullshit. <laughs> did you want to bring my mama and my daughter into it and my ex that ain't got shit to do with it yo mama black hey man pl- bullshit ninja she was much as abuser as diddy and this is a fact take that shit to the bank you don't want to argue that part do you you want to bring my family into the bullshit <laughs> right y'all so stupid anyway mm. Quiet all them years getting fornicated on and then want me to be in here talking about, whoa, whoa. Well, let's change the argument to what if it was me? It ain't me. (laughs) All right. Anyway, these women out here be, look, these women out here be catching passes because simp ass ninjas don't want to hold them accountable. Can we hold the person accountable for real? And if you don't want to hold them accountable, ninja, let me, let me keep doing my show. You all right, anyway, where are we at? Shout out to Twin B. He says, uh, fighting over an effing phone will ruin your life. In fact, 
the one brother the one brother that did this as well was uh oh gosh i can't remember her name but remember she was supposed to have been beating her up when he was basically taking her phone and he about to lose custody over this shit shout out to twin b positivity brothers he says i'm set up for a comeback don't call it a comeback all right, anyway, Agent Bashi says, don't fall for that, except my daughter nonsense. He says, look at Jordan Peterson's daughter. She cucked her husband right in front of her dad, Reverend Exum. Facts, Jordan Peterson had the same thing. I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. Cut that bitch off. Next call. All right, shout out to you right there. For, for instance, shout out to the original. He says, my brother's ex-girlfriend tried to get my brother like that, too. The ex-girlfriend and her friends had put makeup on her to make it look like wounds, even though she was the abuser. She was mad all because he broke up with her. Guys, man, you know what? Maybe in today's later video, I'm going to demonstrate this, that there are women out here that fake abuse photos. They hammer themselves, and other women are watching them doing it. They're participating in it. And they won't call these women out. All right. Instead, you want to call me out over some shit that I've been revealing as a truth. And when you go to court, you're going to lose. You're not going to win. You're not going to win. That's how it works. The court of public opinion is undefeated. Enigma says, coach, what kind of assault still allows a 115 pound white woman to give chase for 15 blocks? Shaking my damn head. It's the world we live in. It's the world we live in. It's tough out here. It's hard out here for a pimp. For a pimp. We got a couple more, and then I think that's it, because I got to get on with the show. Shout out to, we'll call you Kermit G. He says, keep up the good work. All that they, he says, all that, that saying about most women started when they were young. I see it every day. Yes, it starts when they're young. This type of stuff goes on in their head when they're young. It's crazy. And last one, let me see if I can say your government name. Normally, I can't. It is, he says, Jabari was arrested and charged. The DA announced they didn't see prosecutorial, prosecutorial merit and declined to prosecute. They saw she committed a crime and decided they were okay with it. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. Shout out to JC says, you can learn a lot. From that stoic pookie at Walmart. Shout out to the coach game. Anyway. Anyway. Thank you for supporting today's show. Hit the like button on the way out. And hit the like button on the replay. And we out of here. Peace. Wait a minute. Age of Machines fun fact. It's against the law in Israel to prosecute false alligators. Watch your six. Also 70% of reciprocal DV is by women. Shout out to the coach gang. And we out of here. Peace.
barbecue in there. 